All righty then. Good afternoon and welcome to our hook along. It's been a long time since we have done a hook along from beginning to end. This is a long haul. For me, this is a long haul. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm going to be hooking for a few hours. Do I have my water? Do I have my glasses? Have I, have I gone to the bathroom? Is everything good? You know, it's like passports, money, crazy. But at the end of the day, right, I, I might have to stand up at some point. We just know that, right? Hum, human person. But I did my best to put all of my things about me that we are going to need for this hook along because the object of this afternoon is to hook a project, I would say from beginning to end. Um, but it really depends on how much we talk and how far we get. And I'm going to visit with everybody in just a minute, but I'm trying to sit in the light. I'm moving myself around because it's a very gloomy day here in Connecticut. So if I need more light, I will spring up and get some of those lights that point in. Um, but I know I'm going to be doing a lot of this and this today on my lap, right? Because I'm going to be showing you what I'm working, what I'm working, what parts of the pattern I'm working on. The pattern I'm doing is uh, an Easterish pattern, right? For coming up to Easter weekend this weekend, spring hop. And this is a small pattern that uh, a bunch of you have that came with a pipe frame, right? Now the pipe, well, let's talk, let's talk about all this in a second. I'm starting too fast. I'm already making myself tired. I already feel like the cushion on this seat is not good and I'm going to need a different cushion. Let's see. So first, let me say to hello to some of the buddies who are here. And why is my thing not showing up? There we go. Catherine, great to see you from sunny and beautiful Southern California. Cheryl, you are there. Rainy and dismal on the Cape, is it? Oh, no. <laughs> but it's good. It's a perfect day for a hook along. Oh, that sounds, that sounds perfect. You know, we're just going to be sitting here fooling around, chatting, working on stuff. Maybe I show you some stuff the way that I do it. You do it differently and you think, uh, my way's better, or you think, oh, I'm going to try that way, or you go into the thread and you say, well, I, I get what you're doing, but I do it this way. My, You might like my way better. I always like to learn new things. You know, I love to be wrong because if, if I'm wrong about something or if I'm wrong in the way that I'm doing something, it means that I have a chance to do it better or faster, you know. I always like to learn new stuff, always. Catherine N., hello in sunny Missouri. Great to see you, Nature Bound. Working remotely today, tea in hand, fireplace roaring. Oh, isn't that great to have that kind of freedom? Good for you. Hello to you too. And Ryan, hello. Happy, happy Thursday from sunny and beautiful North Texas. Just got home from frolicking in the spring flowers after work. Oh, that sounds so nice. Perfect timing for the show. Peace and love to you too. Gosh, that sounds really nice. I am still thinking about the Texas thing, you know? Been rolling that through my head. Uh, um, cause I'm right around that same time. I'm doing something in the finger lakes in, um, uh, New York. Um, there's so many things on the calendar that I'd like to do. And now that I started flying again, because like my fear of flying controlled me for a few years there, stopped, kept me in place for a few years there. Now that that's kind of, I broke the seal on that a few times. I feel like, yeah, maybe some traveling is on the cards. Every time I see you pop up, Ryan, I think, that biennial is coming up. Oh, for some of you who watch the Wednesday show, um, I, I realized looking at our Facebook page, right, which is Rug Cooking and Punch Needle Club, I do realize that people in Canada have a problem with ordering um, from Cynthia Norwood on behalf of the Atha Biennial. Um, this is like the fundraising product for the 2024 event. Um, I get that that's a problem. So I just want you to know I'm following all of those posts because I'm curious to see what the outcome will be. And obviously, if you really want that fantastic book that I was showing on Wednesday's show yesterday, um, we will figure it out. We will figure it out, right? Even if I have to order some and stock them and whatever, we'll figure it out because um, it is like a check si system, like sending a check in. And honest to God, I don't even have checks. I think I've told you this before. My ha my hassle-free account doesn't have checks, which is a huge hassle because every time I need a check, I need to either go to the bank and wait in line, no thanks, or go to the post office and wait in line, which I kind of have to do anyway. Um, so we'll figure all that out for Canadian friends. You should absolutely have the same stuff that we have going on here. And that book is stellar. 
So we will figure all that out. But don't but don't be shy about getting in touch with me or sending me an email at ribbancandyhooking at gmail.com. If you have a no joy situation, just, you know, give me the no joy story. And I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if I can delegate it to someone else to get back to you quicker, I'll do that. But I won't drop the ball on stuff like that because um, I know how great that book was because I was looking at it too. And it's great. Melissa, good to see you. Nice to be hooking together. It is. We need to do this more often um, just for funsies, right? Nature bound back at you, Ryan. Eileen, great to see you in northern Colorado. Eileen, did I visit with you while I was there? I don't think I did, did I? Oh, I wish I had. We'll have to do next time if not. Suzanne Alden, great to see you. What a great last name. One of those great Mayflower names. Hello. All, hello all from southeastern Massachusetts. Southeastern. Oh, that's the good part. Jane, great to see you. Jane, I can't thank you enough for alerting me about that exhibit at the Laysan Keene Gallery in Boston, the Mary Tuller Parker, Tuley Parker. Uh, that was so great. I was so super inspired by that um, that I almost emptied out my bank account com completely uh, to buy one of those pieces. And I might yet. Yeah, that was a really good exhibit. And um, I loved meeting Lay Laysan Keene. She was so sweet and gracious and classy and funny and just she was such a good warm person uh thank you so much for that and a million other things uh trisha great to see you please so come so we can uh, i'm really thinking about it i really am i'll keep you updated um i'll look at the fairs and everything i'll start looking at it in a more serious way linda be happy hooking everyone skies beginning to clear um that sounds great right and texas welcomes you <laughs> whenever the stars align Eileen oh good 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 I met so many people that day and I know I met at least one Eileen that had to be you and two Susans um, so I'm always having to check in with myself because first names I'm okay last names not so much but uh, by face everybody obviously it wasn't that long ago was it <laughs> at Rebecca's house of course and you did the video with me did, you came into the room and did the video with me right I hollered for you because I thought you wanted to and you had crept away because you didn't want to but I found you in the end. I hunted you down and you did a great job, right? Yeah. And it can't, are, are you happy that you did that now that you participated in that video or is it still like a nail biter thinking about it? Because I feel like you killed it when we did that segment. Pam, great to see you. Gosh, it's great that you're there. You've got all your stuff ready, right? You're ready to blow. So let's get, let's at least get started here and then we can kind of come back and forth and chat. And uh, I'm good. I'm glad, Eileen. I don't like to pressure people to do anything. Um, yeah, but you had something that was so different. You had the primitive and it was so different than everything else we were talking about. I thought it would be such a big benefit to everybody, you know, and it was, I know it was, I am ready. Uh, it came yesterday. That was good timing. That took a little longer than I thought actually. So for those of you that have, who have the kit, let's get, let's get started. And then we can talk about some more stuff and relax and chat and catch up, but let's at least get started. So for those of you who have the kit, this particular kit came with a medium hook, right? When I say medium hook, this is a moshimer medium hook. Hooks are not really standardized unless we're talking about moshimers, right? This is, rug hooks are not like crochet hooks, right? They don't, we don't uh, universally refer to them as like, this one is um, this number, you know, with a crochet hook, you'll say like a three, 3.5, 4.5. Crochet hooks don't work like that. Sometimes, from brand to brand, different brands try to say, this is what I'm calling this. Now, Joan Moshimer has kind of the standard of the hook. Some people will always use these hooks. I still use these hooks. They're small and compact. They're actually getting smaller. Have you noticed that? The older ones are a little bit bigger, but it's a Moshimer hook for sure. And it comes from um, Door, which comes from Cushing, right? Door gets them from Cushing, and then I do my wholesaling from Door. So we know that this is a medium because it's stamped on the back of it with an M. Now, in my mind, the, the actual medium, right, is a little on the small side because there is a, uh, there's a fine under this size. So this isn't the smallest size. This is indeed the medium size. And today we're dealing with number five strips if you have the kit. So this is gonna be a good match for that. I'm gonna preface the conversation by saying that hooks are a very personal thing, right? Um, I was going to say they're like brassieres, but we won't go too far down that. Everybody, it fits everybody differently, right? It fits in your hand differently than it fits in mine. It might be that this is the hook that you always use. It might be that you use it for five minutes and you say, 
I don't like it. Is it me or is it the hook? Let's start the whole conversation of learning to hook and working on a new project by saying, it's if, if hooking is difficult for you and you're a beginner and you're following me here to learn a little bit more about it and it's not working, the one thing that I know for sure is that it's not you because that makes no sense, does it? It might be, it might be your hook, it might be your backing, it might be this cut, it might be the combination of the hook and the cut for you, it might be that you're not good with the backing. I'm actually working on linen, um, but you all have monk's cloth, right? Linen, l linen is a little bit darker, and the only reason I took the linen is because, I think I showed you this yesterday, um, I put, it's such a small piece, it has a tiny border, and I would never send this to anybody uh, because the border is too small, and I always like to give a bigger border in case you at home would like to take a Sharpie and add to the border or do something else to the border. I like to be sure, and that it fits around your frame. If you haven't got a pipe frame and you have a comb frame, I'm gonna work on a comb frame because I think you'll just see me better. Um, I'm gonna talk about this frame in just a minute. But regarding the hook, it might be that the hook is not your absolute favorite, or it might be this is your eternal favorite. To be determined, right? Just know that there are hooks that have a smaller head, a bigger head, and sort of uh, lots in between different kinds of shafts, different sized hooks, uh, big knobby doorknob hooks, skinny little pencil hooks that are referred to as Irish hooks. There's lots of choices, right? And you could spend $80 or more on a hook. You could easily spend more on a hook. When, when I'm buying a hook that I think is uh, crazy money, like I think $80 is crazy money for a hook, I make sure not everybody has this, um, has, has the ability to do this, but I make sure that if I buy something that is a tool that costs that much, that I try it in a rug hooking store first. And I know not everybody has a rug hooking store near you, so that's not a thing. But if you do have a rug hooking store near you, they usually let you try with these. And I like to go to Donna at Whispering Hill. By the way, I'll be doing a video with her soon. She's so, so knowledgeable. But she's got every kind of hook in every kind of price range. So there's a couple hooks there that I'm looking at that are like $90, right? Um, and I want to try them first, so I'll probably try them on camera when I go next time. Sorry, that's my thing clunking the table. By the way, let me shut off my phone because uh, Jay told me the other day that there was a lot of, uh, there's a weird noise in the background for part of the video. So let me power off just in case it's because my phone's right here. I keep my phone there in case the school calls with an emergency, you know, I'm crazy like that. So we're going to we're going to start with the medium hook. Those of you who are at home who got the kit, you got this frame. This is an 11 inch pipe frame. Pipe frames you can make, right? My buddy Judy Taylor, who's my partner in working on Magpie Times, the magazine, she has all kinds of tutorials and things you can download um, with. You can buy patterns from her um, about making your own frame and you make it two size, different kinds of frames. She works on a pipe chetty camp kind of a frame like a like a floor frame uh, that you that you sit at right not a lap one but these frames work like this they come apart i'm not going to take it apart at the seams but i put it together right with these joins and you and then your frame comes with these bars so you're going to put your piece over the bar over the frame if you're starting from scratch and then you're going to clip it on right like this right where it goes and it's hard to clip on all right, wait a minute, I gotta give it some pressure. And the thing about it, now I gotta clip it off next, right? So you clip it on four sides and you want it to be taut, right? If you're a beginner, the thing about these frames that's great is number one, they're, un they're reusable, right? For something small like this, make it as taut as you can. They are more um, taut than for example, a hoop, like a quilting hoop, right? They're more taut than that. So the sides clip on like that, and the thing is, once you, this piece fits inside it, so you will not have to uh, change frames. If you're clipped onto your frame, right, then you won't need to change frames. You're here, the piece fits inside of it, you're all set, right? Then there's lots of videos I have on ribbon candy hooking about finishing it. Maybe we'll talk about some of those things during the course of this video, but you will not need to unclip from this frame. You can reuse this frame. In fact, I have some other patterns coming out. I was thinking of doing this one possibly next. I was fooling around with the little bird house and the two birds. You see the little bird's face inside, kind of a primitive. Thinking about that, that's exactly the same size as the one that we've got here. So it might be that I put out some other um, patterns for beginner classes that fit into this frame. 
Otherwise, if you want to use this frame, but you want to do pieces that are a little bit bigger, like you want to go more to the edges, once you start hooking this, it will become so thick that doing this is going to be a problem. I just put my fingernail polish on. That was stupid, right? This is going to become too tight. Luckily, at hardware stores, you have kind of infinite variety of sizes of pipes and these things that clip on, right? This is not a rug hooking accessory. This is like from a hardware store, right? You can also get them online. So just know that if your piece overgrows this size frame or you have a much larger frame, for example, you pulled up Judy's instructions or you have one of her books where the instructions are in the books and you have built your own frame. Let's say that that's the scenario and you get to the edges and you're like, ooh, my hooking is so high and thick that now my things don't clip on anymore. You can get different things, right, that are looser. So just know that that's a possibility too. You can reuse this guys, these guys and get different size pipes, right? So you can do a different size frame, right? So if you are, if you've got the kit and you're working in this frame and this is your first project, get your piece clipped onto the frame. Now, the reason I'm not working, in, the kit did come with this frame and there are some kits left. The reason I'm not working with this frame is that when you're working with this frame, you need to lean it up on something to have one hand underneath feeding strips while this hand pulls the strips up. Right. That's going to be a little bit hard for me to do on camera, the balancing act. So I am going to, I'll probably be, I'm going to push my stuff back a little bit. Uh, let me just rejig a little bit. I'm going to be working on this dirty old thing from above so you can see me here. And then I have a little bit for what I'm doing here. I have a little bit more freedom. You can see me, both of my hands are a bit more active. The thing about this style frame, it's inexpensive. It's something that you can customize, right? That's all good stuff. Um, you can reuse it, that's all good stuff. But this, like the comb window panes that I sell, they are the kinds of frames that they, because they don't have a lap component, meaning the bottom part, right, that goes on your lap, because there is not a lap component, you have to lean them up on something. So the side of the table, the side of the couch, whatever. Now, if you're a puncher, this can be great, right? Because you don't really need to have the second hand under here. But with rug hooking, you're always gonna need, and this is beginner talk that you would expect at the beginning of a hook along, right? With the rug hooking, you're always gonna have one hand under here. Let me just grab a noodle with a strand and the other hand on top of your backing fabric pulling up loops, right? So you need to balance with this, but this is better than a hoop. Right? This is a better start than a hoop. And it might be that as a beginner rug hooker, right, you start using this and you love the pipe frames and you never go to a comb frame and you never go to a loop and you stay with this style frame. Judy Taylor does, right? This is her favorite frame and she does tons of hooking and writing about hooking. I'll come back to you again for just a second. So um, we talked a little bit so far, and uh, I'm going to check the thread again. We talked a little bit about, and I have to clip my hair back too, because that's going to drive me nuts. I just got out of the shower. There we go. Um, these hook-alongs work differently than shows, right? Because we're in it to win it right here. So we talked a little bit about hooks. We're going to talk more about hooks. We talked a little bit about the frame. I'm using a frame that my both my hands are kind of free, so I can talk and demonstrate. Um, Ryan says... It's uh, blue. Oh, Ryan, it's blue bonnet season in Texas. Apparently, they make a lime green dye color. Ooh, but it's illegal to pick them. May have to make a small dye garden next year. Oh. Shh. That, well, yeah, you, I mean, if they're your own blue bonnets, that's so interesting. Gosh, it's illegal to pick them. Danny, I owe you an email. I am so sorry. You like my shirt over the garden, over the garden wall, right? This, my, my kids and I watched this TV show. It was like one of our favorite shows of all time. And it's a cartoon. It is so gentle and sweet and pretty. Thank you. Um, so we talked a little bit about the frame. We talked a little bit about the hooks. Let's talk a little bit about this kit. I'm going to move you further back here just a little bit. And I'm going to bring some of this stuff over here. Now, if you have the kit, it looks something like this, right? <clears throat> Supply wise. So I have some extra stuff in here in case I ran out while I was on camera. Um, and I think you have a darker green and I don't have that darker green, but we might have slightly different colors, but for the most part, the palette is very, very bright right under the window here. Um, 
for the most part, this is pretty, pretty much exactly what you got. So I've got a few different kinds of greens and a little bit of brown, right? So um, I'm going to be thinking about color choices as I go. I'm going to be making decisions as I hook spring hop. I'm going to be making decisions that suit my taste. I'm going to remind you as we go along, you can make different decisions than me. This, as you can see, I went out of my way, even though we are on the eve of Easter, right? I went out of my way to choose a color palette that did not scream Easter pastel. Um, and the reason I did that was because I would like for this, if you like the way this comes out, to be something you can have up all the time. So the kit came with um, this bright purple, and this purple is actually straight purple pop from Dharma, but it's a light uh, value of it. I love that. A little bit of pink because my idea is just to use that on the nose and possibly the inside of the ears. A light blue that's a Wedgwood blue and then more of like um, a turquoisey blue but without the green like no green at all. Oh and then I have this dusty rose pink um, which has a lot of brown in it and I've got this green which has a lot of brown in it. So I think I'm already going to put my stuff in this order. You don't have to order it uh, at all. I'm just thinking of it because I haven't done my color planning yet. I'm going to do that on camera. Um, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Then I've got this little bushel of kind of mixed colors. And the reason they're mixed is because I plan to use them in the grass as hit or miss. And then I've got, oh, I think my green screen is on. I do not know how to turn my green screen off. Isn't that crazy? Hold on just a second. Let me see what I've got showing. Hold on one second. I wonder if that did it. Does that look weird? Tell me if that looks weird on your camera. Um, I think that looks, I think that looked weird. Let me get rid of it. Let me get rid of this. Let me hide that. Sorry, I'm just fooling with my stuff. Let me know if that looks good or if it looks like the greens are doing something a little bit crazy. Ryan says, illegal to pick them because it's our state flower. Are you serious? What is this, like Queen Elizabeth and the Swans? I'm sure it would be fine, but I don't want to, yeah, I think you would have to be, you would never be a dunce, Ryan, but I think you'd have to be a quiet dunce, right? That seems very, that seems like a very silly reason to me. That's a weird way to be patriotic about your state, isn't it? To not be able to pick a flower. Oh, well, uh, flower garden time, right? So I'm going to do a mix of the hit or misses, and I'm waiting for you to tell me what you think about that green, if the green is doing something weird on your screen, because it's hard to tell on my screen. My picture is very small. And then I've got a sage green that is a true kind of country green, more like a 1980s green, very heavy gray. Pam says, just like California, you can't pick the golden poppies. Is that like a general thing? You can't pick the state flower? Gosh, looks okay on your screen. Okay, good. Maybe I shut it off then. It's always nice. Tell me if I do something bad, right? You're always also nice, but sometimes I screw stuff up and I don't know. So um, these are my colors. I really like the choices that I've got here because they are not super pastel -y. I love pastel colors and I love 1980 colors and I like all those really sort of high impact brights. Um, I've also got two very light neutrals. One has a brown tint, one has a gray tint. This is actually a straight color called April Showers, Showers also Dharma but there's hardly, there's like three grains in this whole little skein. And then I've got a little bit of white. I don't plan to do a lot with white, but the um, character here has an eyeball and a fluffy tail. So I might do those in white. I'm gonna put the little skeins and stuff aside for the moment. I'm gonna focus here for a second while I think about color. Now, let's do this and let's think. Now. The thing is, I'm gonna make the I'm gonna make the grass green, right? I'm gonna make the grass green. Um, I'm gonna make the sky blue. I think I'm gonna make the sky blue. So let's talk about the different components of this that we have. And one of the things that's gonna dictate where you can do your color placement is quantity, right? So for example, this is how much pink you've got. Obviously, you're not gonna do the the hillside in pink, right? There's not gonna be enough. Oh, I really want to do the hillside in pink. Well, hey, if you really want to do the hillside in pink, put this, put me on pause or pick me up later and go cut up a pink t-shirt because that'll do it, right? That'll add to your pink and then you'll have enough pink to do a pink t-shirt. But this kit was made with the idea, I mean, this is, this is enough to do um, 
20, 30 noses and sets of ears, right? So there's a little bit of extra here, but there's not enough to do a vast fill. So I've got the pinks, I've got a little bit of purple. These, these two are kind of outliers. Let's put them over here for a second. And I'm gonna think on, I'm gonna think on that. So the other elements I have are the sky, right? This is the sky here, this is part of the sky here, and this is part of the sky here. We've got a curving hillside, and I plan to make the hillside mixed greens. The rabbit, I'm just not sure yet. I think he's gonna be the brown, or I might do him in, oh, I just had an idea. With this kit, I meant, my, just so you know, my idea was to make him the brown, right? That's why you've got a big chunk of brown. Now I'm looking at my colors because I want mine to be the way that I want it because I want to keep it. So if you want to do traditional, this kind of um, herby brown color was meant for the rabbit and is meant for the rabbit. You could also do the rabbit in the white, right? There should be enough of the white to do the rabbit. You could also go nuts, like I'm thinking of going, and do the rabbit in a completely different color. That's probably not enough. But I'm looking at these colors and going, do I want a purple rabbit? I don't know. Let's decide later. Let's decide later. Sometimes I don't like to do things in the literal color because I just think it makes it more cartoony and fun. Let's, let's think. Well, I'm still thinking out loud. Um, I've got this dusty rose color too, which I really, really like. And that is a similar value to this one. There's probably not enough of this to do the whole body. But if I mixed it with, ooh, if I mixed it with that, this is me color planning right now. That would work. I might just do it um, in the expected way too. But let me think it through. And I'm doing this on camera because this is part of the process. And this is, you are at liberty to think this through as well. Hillside is a given. So it might be that I start with just working on the hillside and doing them in this mix of colors. The thing is, when I start the hillside, I, I'm probably going to want to start by outlining the rabbit. And I don't know if I want to outline the rabbit in a light value or a dark value because I'm not quite decided on what color I want to do the rabbit. And that's why I'm hesitating right now and having a little think. You know what I'm thinking? If I, for example, outline the bunny in white and his tail was white, that could work. That could work because that could give me some stalling time. The, the one part about outlining the bunny in white just had another idea. Ooh, I just had another idea. Ooh, okay. I think, I think for myself, so this is what I'm thinking. The one problem about outlining the bunny in white is that here's some of the outlines. Follow my finger to the outlines, right? Be very graphic the way I'm outlining him. I'm not planning on doing him realistically. I'm outlining him like this, and here comes the problem. I'm outlining here and here and here and his eye is white and I'm outlining in white and that's not going to work. So if I do decide to outline in white, I would have to make sure that I outlined at least the eye, if not the eye and the nose line in a darker color because I still plan, I don't plan on giving him a red eye like laboratory rat eye. I plan on, I know some bunnies do have pretty little pink eyes, but I'm going to do white eye. Um, so I wouldn't want to outline in white, right? That goes without being said, but let's say it anyway, just to be thorough. So I'm thinking this through and I'm thinking what I might want to do. I like the idea of outlining. I like the idea of greens on the hillside. I like the idea of outlining in white, but then I am thinking about filling the little tail and then that would be tricky if he's already outlined in white. And I'm thinking about filling the eye, again, tricky slash impossible if I'm outlining in white. So I think I'm going to give up the idea of outlining in white. And I'm thinking about what other color I might outline in. And that brings me to the color that he was meant to be in the first place. Or I could, oh, I could go out on a limb. I could really go out on a limb. And for example, outline in that purple color. I don't know if that's enough to outline him. That's the thing. Because I wasn't planning on outlining him in that color. 
you know what might be a safe move because you should have quite a bit of this country green color it might be a safe move for us to outline him in that color the one thing I'm worried about with outlining him in green is that he's going to fall into the background with the other greens. These are completely different greens. This mix, I know it's hard to tell on camera, but this mix has like avocado, like a dark, a dark uh, olive green uh, and like a pistachio green. But these are all, uh, with the exception of pistachio, these are all warm greens and this is a very cool green. So those are quite different. Let's finish talking this through. The hillside is going to be green. The bunny, the jury is still out. I've got these tree motifs here too. One, two, three, four trees. This is a cloud. And in my mind, I was planning on doing the cloud in either purple or pink with a traditional blue sky. Blue skies. So I still like that idea. And the more I think about it, now you be thought if you're doing the same pattern, be thinking that think think along with me, right? To make a good decision for you. Of course, you can always pull it out later, but let's make a good decision for ourselves because they don't have to be identical. So, I do like the idea of the blue sky. I think that is expected. So I'm going to keep the blue sky. I'm thinking about blue sky repeats of the green trees, right? I probably don't want to repeat the same colors as I have in here, if this is gonna be a background, a busy background fill behind the rabbit, um, because then it'll almost look like growths rather than trees, right? I want these to be very distinct. So I'll probably move to different colors to fill the trees, but maybe we'll get there a little bit later. I wanna think on that, I kinda of forgot about these. I put them aside immediately and forgot about them. You know what I think I ought to do is outline the bunny with one of these. I think that makes the most sense. I might want to outline the whole thing with these. That makes the most sense. I think I'm going to do that because then these are very different than the white. So for example, even if I am using one of these to outline the bunny, I still don't have to decide what color I'm going to fill the bunny for now. You could actually fill the bunny with, with these, right? You could blend these together and fill him and you could pull, maybe I should do that. You could pull them quite high, right, to make to make him look a little bit woollier than the rest of it. And the reason I put the white here is so that you could see the white is very different, right? These are these are very light values, but the white is glaring white. So his little tail is still going to stand out, and his little eye is still going to stand out if I do him in these colors. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I've made a decision here. Um, Let's, let's stick with that for now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fill the bunny with these colors. So he's got a little bit of texture too. And I think I might even alternate because these, are, as I say, are very light value gray and a light brown. And I think he'd be nice kind of filled like that. I am so, it is super me to want to make him purple or make his tail purple. But I think we better go for the bunny for these colors. And you're set up to do that at home too if you have this kit. Let's stick to the script, right? I'm always trying to bust that fourth wall uh, out, but let's stick with the script. And then we've got plenty of other colors to put in other places, not to mention the fact you have a larger border than me. So you could actually do some stuff with your extra material in the border and be crazy. All right, let's stick with that. Let's stick with that. That makes the most sense. So um, I'm just recapping in my head. I'm looking at this dark green I've got still, and I'm thinking, I want to outline the bunny first. I don't necessarily want to fill, do a fill with him first, but I want to outline him first. And now that I've decided that I'm going to do his body with these colors, I'm thinking maybe I want just the outer outline for this moment to be in my darkest values because he's going to be light, right? So we've established we're just focused on the bunny and the background hill. He's going to be light, right? Boom. Decision made. Painful as it was. He's going to be like, so I want around him immediately to be as dark as possible. So I'm going to hook the outline of him and then I'm going to hook the darkest colors immediately behind him. Right. And if you're confused about what you're doing or you think you might change your mind or forget your vision, grab a Sharpie and I'm going to do dark. I'm just going to write dark on it. 
right? Just in case I forget. I'm not going to forget. We're sitting right here. But you know what I mean. I'm making the point. You can take your Sharpie out and do some doodly doos like that. I'm going to outline him dark. And I'm going to use this country green color that you have quite a bit of. And I'm going to take out uh, my stash of mixies. And I'm going to pull out the darkest ones. So that, and then you've got this little lump of grassy greens. For myself, I'm not touching those yet. I'm just pulling out the darkest values from my mix pot here of the greens. And you can do this or not do this. It's up to you. I don't need to pull all of them because this is obviously this is more than enough to outline. But I just want to have a, ch a choice. So I'm going to I'm going to hold with these for right now. Oh, my computer is getting all. Oh, hi, Helene. Good to see you. Um, all right. Let's start. I could drive myself crazy and drive you crazy, too. Right. As I make decisions like this. So let's come up here straighten this out and yep I can work right in here with you setting myself up a little bit there we go I can come up even higher there we go oh I am gonna need another cushion so I'm stretching onto my frame good to see you too happy afternoon happy Thursday I, you know I was really happy to take a break this Thursday because uh, it's for us it's right before Easter whether you're celebrating Easter or not right it's a nice happy springtime weekend it marks time of the year that I think we all want to be in at this point I've got my piece stretched taut on my frame this is one of my small frames you might have it in your pipe frame if you do good going get your clamps on there good right you can kind of turn your pipe frame like this you can kind of turn these clip things to make it even tighter that's something you can't do on a hoop, right? Incidentally, if you are using a hoop like a quilter's hoop and you are having trouble getting your background this taut, what you can do is go to your medicine cabinet or your first aid box and pull out the self-adhesive gauze, right? That's the gauze that sticks to itself. It's like a flesh color tape, right? They also sell it in colors on Amazon if you prefer that. But just wrap that tape around one of your hoops, right? Bottom one makes the most sense so it doesn't get all roughed up. Wrap self-adhesive tape around one of your hoops. If you are working in a quilter's hoop and you cannot get it taut, it will make it infinitely tighter. Do not wrap around both top and bottom hoop or you will never shut the hoops together anymore. They will never fit each other because it's that effective. That's one way to get around um, if you're a hoop, if you're a hoop user, or you're just a beginner or whatever, and you're like, I have a hoop, I'm going to use a hoop that makes the most sense, definitely makes the most sense, but you can make even your hoop tighter. I'm here because you can see my hands. I want to work with you here. One hand is going to be underneath, right? This is my finger underneath. My dominant hand wants to hold the hook. I'm right-handed, right? If you're left-handed, then you're going to grab it with your left hand. It might be that you're right-handed and you grab it with your left hand or vice versa. Our dominant hand doesn't always instinct, uh, instinctively go for the hook. I incredibly with this craft, right, rather unlucky, the right hand, which is my dominant hand, uh, and for most people I think your dominant hand does this part of it because this is like a, this is a utensil, like a pen, and it's familiar and you, hold, you want to hold it in your hand the way you would with a pen and you tend to grab it with your dominant hand. But with this craft, this is the hand that does the easy work. This hand is just going to be going like this, like a little robot, right? Pulling up loops. It's this hand underneath that you can't see that does the hard part. This hand underneath is going to be, I'm going to grab one of my dark colors. This is one of the strips in the kit. This is one of the dark greens. I'm going to be handing, this is for beginners, underneath the frame, my hand is holding the strip like this. Some people hold it like this with just a little tab sticking up. Some people hold it like this, right? So some people hold it close to the backing fabric, right underneath touching. Some people hold it way down low. Doesn't matter. What you're going to be doing in principle is this. Here's my strip. It's better to hold it close to the top if you can, because otherwise you're losing everything that you don't hook, right? So I try to hold it somewhat close to the top. 
what I'm going to be doing, this hand is going to be underneath in just a second. My other hand is coming from the top, going through my backing fabric, pop right through. My hook is going to be searching for the material. There it is. My hook feels the material. Now, if I'm a beginner, I might be holding the hook the wrong way around. Oh, it's not catching. It's not catching. Give yourself a hot minute. Turn it, right, until you feel the crook grab your piece, and then you're going to be pulling it up to the surface. And we start by pulling up a tail, not a loop, just the tail. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Let's look at the hook one more time, right? This is the head of the hook. This indent here is the crook of the hook right here where my fingernail is. That's the crook of the hook. That's where you want to catch your strip, right? You don't want to catch it so hard that you yank it and you rip it in half. But even a smaller hook like this, and this is a medium hook, you can still see the head of the hook when my five is in there, right? So that's a good sign. You see that shiny bit of it, right? That's a good sign. You shouldn't rip a hole through your strip. If you're a beginner, you might rip a hole through your strip. You might, right? Are you going to cry yourself to sleep? I hope not, right? Not over this. So you're going to be holding a strip in your hand like this underneath. I'm going to be popping through the surface, boom, right through. And then my hook is going to be, I can't see it because my backing fabric is going to be in the way, right? That's the disadvantage. That's why I'm saying your dominant hand goes like this. And it's your non-dominant hand, typically, that has to do the hard work. Look what it's doing. It's like, it's like one breath away from doing a cat's cradle right here, right? It's holding this thing in this way, right? My fingers remember, because I've been hooking, my fingers remember that this is what I'm supposed to do. And even when it's covered up with my piece, I still know that my hand is doing the right thing. This is something you need to learn, right? This is something you need to remember. This is not something that's hardwired just because you like the craft and you're learning it and you hope you get it sooner rather than later. You probably will get it sooner rather than later. But this part, the holding the piece, the sticking the hook down, the catching the piece, and the pulling it up, that's something that needs practice. We all hope that it comes instantly to you, and it might, but your first loops might not be perfect, and it might be that it takes a little while for things to, to become perfect. I'm going to start this piece. I want to give myself a good long run, right? Um, so I'm going to start here. You don't have to. Stay with me if you don't want to, but I'm going to start here, which immediately means I'm going to move this just a little bit. Just a hair. Get it? Just a hair. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't worry. I won't do too many of those. Uh, that one, I mean, that was like the low-hanging fruit right there for my low, for my low comedy. All right. There we go. So I'm tight again. Now here it goes. My hand is holding my strip. Let me come to you a little bit closer on this one. And I'm going to put it under here. Now here I, here's my hand under here. I'm going to catch him right at the toe. Oh, sorry, right at this toe. Because my plan is to do... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Sorry, I'm just trying to get you perfect over me here. My plan is to do this run like as far as it'll go, right? This, this strip won't go that far. This strip is going to go about a quarter of its length, right? That's on average, a quarter to a fifth of its length, depending on how high you pull the loops up. That's our next conversation. I want a straight shot. If I'm a beginner, I don't want to start here, right? Look what I'm doing. I don't want to start here. And I don't want to start here. Oh, sorry, wrong way, right? That doesn't make any sense. And I don't want to start up in the ears or anything like that. I want to do something that makes sense. So this is a good straight shot. I'm putting my needle in at the toe. Oh, wait a minute. You're doing the toe. You're starting with the toe. Should I start on the line? That's actually in the line. This would be on the line, right? Should I start on the line, in the line, or outside of the line? Answer is always... It really doesn't matter, but pick one and stick to it. Because if sometimes you're inside the line and sometimes you're outside the line, you're going to have massive distortion with your lines, right? It's like, oh, it's just a line. Well, it's not just a line. If we're talking about the inside line that's invisible, the actual line and the outside line that's invisible, we're actually talking about three lines. That's a big space. 
So make a decision. I start on the line. Boom. I'm going right into that little toe at the tip. Here's my finger underneath, right? This is going to feed the tail to the hook. I can feel it with my hook. Spin your hook a little bit if you feel like I don't got the strip, right? Just spin your hook a little bit. See if you can grab it and then pull it up. We want to leave the tail, right? Just a little bit of the tail like this because you don't, you don't want to waste. I leave a little bit of the tail on the surface. Why do I want my tails on the surface? Is it because it's a rule? No. If anything, that would make me not want to do it. But I leave the tails on the surface because with this craft, it's very easy with the invisible hand underneath doing things. Did you see how I just pulled it out? It's very easy to pull it out by accident, right? So I'm going to rehook that one little tail and I leave my tails on the surface so that I don't accidentally pull tons out. And then I move to the next space, reach down again, and pull up another loop. How high should I pull my loops up? See my loop right here? How high should I pull my loops up? Well, the standard is, and I can adjust, by pulling further, I can adjust that first loop a little bit, so they're about the same. The standard is, try to pull, this is abstract, try to pull your loop up as high as it is wide. Shall I run and get a ruler? No, please don't. It's not that kind of a craft, right? Just about as high as the piece is wide, as the strip is wide. Some people are low hookers. Some people will always hook very low. Others will always hook very high. Some people try to change and hook in a different way. Hardly ever works, right? We are who we are. We hook the way we hook. I'm putting a few more loops in. Are they all equidistant apart? No, we'll talk about that in a second. Are they all exactly the same height? I'm sure they're not, but I'm, I'm not going to get a ruler out, but I'm sure they're not. Now, how am I deciding how far apart to hook my loops? Well, it's, it's a figure it out thing, isn't it, right? I want to, I'm already having second thoughts, you know. I'm already having second thoughts. I am having second thoughts. You know what I'm going to do? This is the great thing about that craft, this craft. I feel like when I'm working on the line, I feel like there's not, there's not enough of his actual foot that's going to show. So I'm going to change my mind and I'm going to hook outside the line, at least for the outlining, right? Just for the outlining of the bunny, I'm going to work outside the line. Can I reuse the piece I just hooked? Is it a little roughed up? Yeah, it's a little bit roughed up. Is it unusable? No way. It's perfect. It's great. I'm going to use it again. Hey, it's a thrift craft. So here I am under here, pulling my tail up again. I have videos on all of this, right? On, on my YouTube channel, Ribbon Candy Hooking, where you are now, I have videos on all of this, right? On all of these sort of beginner things, conversations, abstract conversations, real conversations, imaginary conversations, crazy conversations. They're all there, right? To answer all the kinds of questions you might have. Back to how do I figure out where to put my next loop? Do I put it into the next hole? No. I only put it into the next hole if that makes sense. I can't possibly put, I'm working in linen, you've got monk's cloth, uh, maybe you downloaded this pattern or maybe you ordered this pattern on linen, maybe you're also working on linen. Whatever you're working on, right, I can't give you a mathematical formula for how many holes you should go into in a row, particularly when we're working on a diagonal, right? All I can say is if you put one loop into every one of these tiny holes that you see, your piece is going to be so dense and buckly that it's not going to sit well and it's not going to look nice. So when we do that as rug hookers, you have too many loops in, in too small of an area, and it's all dense and puckery. When we do that as rug hookers, that's called packing. You packed. You put your loops too close together, right? How do I know if I'm packing? At this point, I'm not packed. There's not enough loops to be packing, right? If you put your loops in too far apart, over the course of a background fill, you might be able to see some of the backing showing because your loops are too far apart. Those little bits that are showing are called holidays. And we don't want holidays either, right? If you end up being a loose hooker, we'll leave that one alone, but if you end up being a loose hooker and you end up having a lot of holidays, you can fill them later. If you end up being too tight of a hooker, 
and you end up packing your loops together, you can always pull some out later if it's a huge problem. You can also try to catch yourself and say, I think I'm overdoing it. I think I'm packing too much. How can, just tell me, how should I do every other loop? Should I do uh, two holes in a row and then skip a loop? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you. There isn't a formula for it. It really depends on the way that you are hooking and the way that it is looking, right? That's what it depends on. Me saying, um, do two loops and then skip one is really not helpful because it might still result in you packing or having holidays. You gotta figure it out. Uh, and it's something that you have to do. You look at your loops as you pull them up and I'm kind of running this line outside of uh, Bunny's bottom leg, right? I'm getting up to like his little, his little gut. And I'm, I can feel that I'm at the end of my strip. So I pull the tail up on that, right? And I leave the tail up there too because I don't want this naughty hand under here to accidentally pull my work out. I got a nice little run going and I'd like to keep it. So you're going to have to figure out um, on your own, sadly, even if I was standing over your shoulder, I would be looking and the best thing I could say to you is too early to tell, right? For absolutely too early to tell. But the best thing I could say to you is looks like you might be packing or looking good, right? Yours is probably looking good or um, maybe too loose, right? And too long of a run. You can always pull stuff out. You've seen me pull stuff out twice, right? So try to get going on your line to outline here. If you are a beginner and you're just starting, you might be on your first or second loop still. That's absolutely normal. You're looking at your row of loops so far. Oh, I can't tell if they're all even. Oh, they're not that even. They don't look like your loops. Who cares, right? Who cares? This You're doing grass. Maybe if your loops are all uneven and crazy, maybe that'll look even cooler than what I've got going here. Mine are kind of flat. I don't usually... Um, I don't usually strive for that, right? But I'm trying to be a bit tidy because I'm live, right? That's all, because I'm live. Now, I'm starting my second strip. Am I going into the hole with that with the tail that came up? Because that's not a full loop. So in theory, right, if you're a technical person, you might be starting a lot of sentences in your mind with, in theory, should I go into the same? You can if you want. You can go into the same hole. I, I think I'm in the next hole. I'm not that bothered by whether I'm in the same hole or there's a complete loop in each hole. I'm not that bothered by that. For this pattern, I'm not that bothered by which dark I just chose either. I chose a different dark just there, right? My hand grabbed a different one. The background, this is more of the brownie. This is the greeny brown, right? This is like the herby brown. My hand uh, grabs from that pile of the mixed colors I gave you because it's a hit or miss backing. When it's a hit or miss backing, that literally means that I, I'm not giving it thought. I'm going to pick a color and the overall look of it as I get going, as I you know finish, is going to be a hit or it's going to be a miss. I'm going to choose colors at random, but I already know they're going to be darks, right? They're going to be my darks. They're not, I'm not just, you know, oh, oops, I grabbed a hot pink. No, they're all from my dark pile, but um, they are at random. And that's the, that's the nature and that's the plan for the background of this rabbit is that the background is hit or miss. Now for now, I'm just, I might have to grab a different cushion for this chair because it's super uncomfortable or I could work on my lap. I might need to do that. You're going to see me fuss a lot, right? Because when I'm sitting down for this long, I fuss. Yeah, let's move over here. I'm going to bring you over here. And hang on for a second. You're going to come for a ride. Sorry, everybody. It's coming for a ride time. And you're going to come right down here. Sorry. Yep, there we go. Ah, that's better. All right, that's better. And I can bring it in a little bit further. And we'll, we'll talk our way through as we work on this. Let me see. Let me bring the computer back over. Make sure we're in focus. We're not quite in focus, are we? Come on, you stinker. There we go, looks like it was trying to focus. Now, I'm on a real small frame here because I don't want too much of it to be off camera and it's not a huge piece, right? I normally work on a bigger frame, but I normally work on bigger pieces. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be moving my piece a lot, in other words. I feel that I'm at the end of the, the strip again, so I'm pulling that last tail up, right? So, so far, this is what I got. 
and you see it changes color in the middle. I wonder if you can see that. Changes color in the middle. I wasn't real careful about the color change and I didn't mean to be. Uh, I wanted it to be kind of mixed because my goal is to have a dark background around the bunny. Now, one thing I'm noticing right here, and I'm not real persnickety, but do you see right here in the stomach, you see I'm a little bit off my line. And if I pull back on it a little bit, it could be that his stomach looks a little bit boxy there and I might not like it. It might be that it doesn't drive me crazy at all and it's fine. Um, I'm gonna leave it for now. I could pull out just this segment and hook it a little bit closer in, but these kinds of things, because I'm not a super technical hooker, these kinds of things, like if it's a hair, literally a hair off here, I'll probably just hook this side of the grass real tight into it, right? So that it kind of pushes up on it like that. Very easy problem solving with this craft, truly. Once you get going, and if you're still over here putting your first stitches in going, will you slow down already? You're, you know, I can't even get the first stitches in. Give yourself that hot minute, right? We always hope it happens sooner rather than later, but sometimes it's later. So now let's look at the way my loops are looking here. Let me see if I can show you, show you some loopies, right? So this is the way my loops look from this side. <laughs> Good one, Catherine. See how addictive it is? The hair jokes. I, I just feel that there's a lot of them right there on the surface. Plenty of hair jokes. Let's see if the camera's going to come back into focus. I've been struggling with this camera. Oh, sorry. That was my thumb. A lot lately. I don't know why. This is like, it's a good one. Let's see. I might bring you over a little bit more. I want to get this right. Oh, there we go. That was in focus, wasn't it? All right. Now, I think what I'm going to do now, right, because I'm over to the edge here. And did you notice that when I showed you the side view, you see how my tails are a little bit taller? Some people leave their tails um, really high. Like if they've got much, if they, if they start with much taller tails, start and end with much taller tails, they leave them really high. For me, I can't stand seeing high tails. It just makes me feel extra chaotic and I've already got enough chaos in my life. So I like to trim my tails as I go. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to. I think I'm gonna come over here now and run up the side of his little foot. So let's do that together. Now make sure, now I'm gonna come over here to the side, right? And I have already decided that I don't wanna go on the line, I'm going just outside the line because his feet are such tiny little parts, right? They're such tiny little bits of him. I'm afraid if I cut too much into the foot with the outlining line, that his foot isn't gonna be pronounced enough and it's gonna uh, make distortion and he's just not gonna look that great. Now I'm coming up to, if you can see here, this intersection and I have a choice. I often make these kinds of choices. Uh, we all make different, different choices as we go along with everything, right? Now I could turn direction. By turn, I mean this hand under here can take the next loop and twist it, right? So my hand is under here. It would look like this, right? I twist it like this underneath and feed it to the hook so it starts going in a different direction, I could do that. Or let's say for now, instead of twisting to change direction, I'm gonna pull up the loop and cut it short because I don't wanna overshoot onto this line, right? Because I wanna keep that intact, but maybe I'm not ready to change direction yet. So instead of changing direction, I'm gonna do that uh, do that option. Just cut as opposed to turning. And I'm going to bring you up here with me. I know you're a little far away right now. Let me just, I'm going to focus for a minute because I want to make some progress too. And I'm going to check in a second to see if I have some comments that I should answer. Make sure you're putting your questions on there if you have questions. Just give me a minute to do some, um, get some groundwork done because I want to get the edge on this done so we can move on to the next thing. And again, if you're a beginner and you're, you're, at, you're at the beginning and you're struggling with the loops or you've got a few pulled up and they're not that even, you're not that happy with the way it looks, remember, remember that, oops, sorry, 
um, sorry about that. Remember that um, you can pull stuff out and remember that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I'm at the end of the tail again. And you don't know if this line is good yet because you don't have enough in here. You just don't have enough in here to know. So pull another one. Let me pull a few of these little guys there. Go to this one next. Actually, this one's darker. You just don't know, right? You might be looking at it going, ah, oh, like I did with the belly here, a little needless agonizing over the belly. You don't have enough information yet to know whether you have screwed anything up, right? So let's assume you have not and just keep going, right? Or if you feel like if you're a more technical person, you might be feeling like I'm not happy with keeping going right now. I need another second to think, right? I need to stop and think. I see what you're doing with the pulling up the loops. I get it, um, but I'm not happy with mine. So I just need to stop and think. That might be the case, right? Because this video is recorded. If you need to stop and think, then make sure you stop and think. Sometimes it's like, you know, when you are, for example, getting on an escalator and you've got like three heavy suitcases with you and you're afraid you're going to step on the wrong step and have a massive like fatal wipeout. Well, don't do that, right? Just wait. Just wait until it's the right jumping in point. It might not be, uh, it might not be while I'm on live. You might just sit back and watch and say, all right, I'm taking it in. Um, I need more time to think if I'm going to be working on, working on it too. I need more time. That's fine too. This is recorded. So you see, I stopped to make my turn again instead of twisting under. Probably next time I'll twist under. Here I am at the bunny's tail. I'm going to bring you even closer over me here. And the bunny's tail has a real zigzag quality to it, doesn't it? Because it's like, here comes Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity hippity. And he's got all these little bumps and ridges and ruffles to that little cottontail. Oops, speaking of which, I dropped that guy. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go in and out with this little cottontail. And... I'm gonna, you know, I want that piece, I want the little cottontail piece of this to be a bit wild, a bit wild and wooly, and I'm not going to ag agonize about the line there. It's supposed to be wild and fluffy, and um, I'm not going to agonize. Just listen, listening to the sounds of the house, hearing some weird noises, wondering what they are, because I know my husband walked out to pick the kids up from school, and uh, they can't possibly be home yet. I'm sure we'll know when they're home too. So I'm doing kind of some random filling uh, around the tail. So is that exactly the shape of the tail? Is that exactly what I drew? Well, I'm sure it's not, but it's going to be all filled in all crazy. And it might even be that I want to come in and put some more dark bits in later. I'm going to think about that later. Just outlining him in dark for now. Object for now, outlining him in darks, right? That's all I want to do because I want to work on the hillside. Now, instead of cutting and turning, instead of cutting here, right, like, you know, let me do one more cut just to reinforce what we're doing. I'm bringing this up here. I want to suddenly turn it up, like at a 45 degree angle. I don't trust my hand to turn underneath, so I'm just going to cut. And now I can turn my frame the way I want, your pipe frame or your comb frame or your hoop or whatever. And now I can hold the way I was holding before put my hook in the way I was doing before, and uh, I can go in the direction I mean to go in. Twisting and turning under the surface is something that you will absolutely get used to doing, right? Your hands get used to doing the most incredible fine motor movements. Isn't that, isn't that true? Now, with this last stitch I did, right, this last loop, I can feel that the tail is right there under my hand, but it's not big enough to pull up. And it made a good loop all on its own. So I have the choice between, do I want to leave that little tail down there or do I want to pull it up uh, and have a tail but lose the last loop? This is a very small conversation. This is a, this is a first world you know, problem kind of a conversation. But I'm going to leave it as a loop because why not, right? Why squander, why squander that great loop? And I'm just going to keep going. And I am not a super technical hooker. 
I'm second guessing that now. That doesn't look right. Pulled it up in the end. But now it's going to drive me crazy because it's long. So let me trim that right away. Um, I'm not a super technical hooker. I enjoy hooking kind of fast. And um, I like making decisions as I go. I like changing my mind part way. Um, I don't like overthinking stuff. I don't like feeling like there's a mathematical formula that I have to keep in the back of my head. That's why I don't enjoy knitting and stuff like that as much as um, I wish I did. Um, because I'm not a technical person. I don't like to think technically. I want this to just be relaxing. I just want to pull up loops, right? Now, you can see I'm squarely at the nose right here. So I could cut and run again, but this time I'm going to do a twisty underneath. Now, let's see if I can show this. My hand underneath has a strip that looks like, wait a minute, this. My hand's holding it like this underneath, right? And I'm going to need to turn it like this. Do you see what I mean? It's like this, right? That mimics this last one I did, right? Like this. But I'm going to need to turn it like this to catch it because now I want to come up this way. Do you see what I mean? So my finger underneath has to do that. Your dummy hand, it's not your dominant hand. It's your dummy hand under here that's not used to any responsibilities. This is the hand that needs to twist, right? I'm twisting it so that when I catch it near the nose, I want to be careful about placement again, I pull it up and it is now coming in a different direction. Do you see what I mean? Let me hold it up to the camera. You see what I mean now? It's going top to bottom, and the one below was going sideways. Does it take a little while for your hands to get used to doing that? Yeah, it absolutely does. Maybe you're somebody who already does quilting, or you're a sewer, or you've always done something with textiles, or needlepoint, or cross stitch, or whatever. Um, and you're used to doing little little fine motor movements like that with your hand. Maybe you're a pastry chef or something like that. That's going to come really easy to you, right? If that's the case, it might be that you're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm used to doing stuff like that. That's not a thing. Great. One less thing, right? It might be that you don't usually do little motions like that and you're a beginner here and you're thinking, all right, well, I, that didn't go well. You know, maybe I'm not cut out for this. That, that doesn't follow. Right. There's lots of things that you have to learn. The good news with this craft is that, and I do like to think of it as a craft. I really do. Uh, the good news with this craft is that it's a, it's a one, it's a one hit wonder. All you're doing is pulling up loops, right? There's, when is she going to get to the next part? When's the next stitch? Well, there is no next stitch. We're just pulling up loops, right? There's my tail. There is no next stitch. This is it. So you are, if you're already doing it, if you got any further past this, right, you're full-fledged full hooker and you're doing it. So you just keep going, right? You just keep going. You make good decisions as you go. Now, here I am in the thick of it over here. I'm at the tips of his ears and I'm making decisions as I go. I don't want to distort the ears. So I'm being careful about where I'm pulling up the loops because I want the ears to look good and straight and a little bit tapered at the top. So I'm trying to make some good decisions about the shape. Might be that I, I pull out little bits and pieces, you know, a centimeter here or there. Um, keep turning my frame so that it's comfortable. My hand underneath is twisting again to change direction. Hey, Dawn. Good to see you. It's fun to meet in the afternoon, isn't it? I'm just going to concentrate for a second as I run down the ear. I want it to be a semi-tidy line because I want to fill the ear in and have it be similar to the shape that I drew. It might be that you want your rabbit to have fluffier ears, fuller ears, or even thinner ears. Um, up to you, right? Now I'm coming to another one of those crossroad things here and I have, oh hey Michelle! And I have been uh, just changing direction, so I'm going to do that again. But remember, when you get to those places and you're like, I really want to keep going. Sorry, I'm trying to keep you with me here as, as I, as I uh, hook. Um, if you get to those places and you're like, I can't do the dang twisty thing, just cut it and then start again, right? 
and it'll you'll figure it out another time but if you're trying to keep up um there's no reason to number one there's no reason to keep up because this is recorded right so make sure that what you're doing is practicing try to stay in a peaceful mindset right try to stay a little bit zen and um and peaceful right and calm if the if the first project is difficult well that's to be expected isn't it i mean that's absolutely to be expected so try to stay in a good zone try to be in a good mindset right don't freak yourself out don't ramp yourself up no reason to no reason at all to so i'm grabbing at some I'm, i want to change color now because i have been changing color so i'm kind of reaching for some different colors as i go just try to keep yourself calm if you know if i get a little bit ahead of you um you can always come back later right so it's not a big deal i'm just going to fill in here but try to listen for things that you can relate to if you're having little struggles again this is a number five cut and i'm at the point in the ears you saw me just do this because i'm trying to see if when i hook the ears if that's going to match up nice right and it is going to match up nice so i'm just kind of filling it in here sometimes I need to concentrate just a little bit and then I'm a little bit quieter just for a minute and you see me regularly pulling out loops as I go because I can immediately see sometimes that sometime that I don't like the direction the lines going in you know I can see immediately that uh, I'm deviating too much from my drawing and I don't like that so I just pull it out right away and I don't think about it I, I I'm not the kind of um, I'm not the kind of hooker who as I'm going along um, I stand back a lot and have these long conversations with myself about whether I like how it's going and should I leave it and should I not leave it I'm I'm a much more impulsive worker than that so if I see something I don't like I tend to and I don't mean a whole section I'm, I'm very reluctant to take out a whole section but one loop is very easy for me to be at peace with saying nope that's not close enough to the line you're coming right back out uh, almost like nobody saw that right i almost it's that kind of five second rule thing hey hey you all back oh uh, yeah oh hey ted teddy's back from school happy easter break sweetheart want to come say hi on camera yeah here come stand over my shoulder just come back oh we're really close here here yeah. you want to let me see sorry there he is there he is <laughs> being weird yeah. happy easter break sweetheart uh thank you um i just got back home it's kind of kind of tired i had to walk a while i know i'm sorry mm -hmm. i forgot i planned the hook in when i was supposed it's to go cool. pick you up at school oh i got a sweet kiss mm -hmm. all right love you mom i love you too sweetie getting lots of sweet kisses he's mm -hmm. such a, he's such a good boy all right uh, love oh okay excellent joss is riding with the next door neighbor so that's good Okay, love you too, Ted. He's such a good boy. <laughs> you got somebody saying hi to you, Ted. He li he likes feeling like he's got uh, friends out there, you know. Oh, listen to this one. Wait a minute. Teddy, your kilt came. I put it on your bed. Yeah, did I tell you Teddy wanted a kilt? Um, and I said, maybe let's not wear it to school because I want him to be exactly whoever he wants to be, but he's 12. I don't, I don't think we know who we want to be. I still don't know who I want to be, but, um, but he wants to wear it, um, you know, not at school. And it's been a, it's been a continued conversation. So I ordered a kilt and, um, yeah, we are not Scottish. So I thought, yeah, if, you know, if he, if he wants to wear it, that's great. I just don't want him to have any extra trouble at school. Um, cause his policy is usually to fly under the radar and, it, you know, less under the radar when you're wearing essentially um, in this case a skirt but we'll see what happens well I'm um, get, send some good thoughts to us about that because this is huh, it's a little bit of a thing you know all right we'll see what happens he's a kilt wearing viking dude he kind of is he kind of is um, oh Rita you're so good I love the spin you put on everything um, you know it actually I, I was talking to his teacher about it at the parent teacher the other day and he said well you know all the kids who do field hockey and everything boys and girls they wear kilts and I thought yeah you know he's he always wears his Hawaiian shirts he never ever wears a t-shirt um, he has a real specific look 
whatever. doesn't matter to me. I just don't want him to be any more bullied than he is already. That's the only thing that matters to me. Because I don't want to have to go kill someone, right? And then spend the rest of my life in prison. So here I am at the little front paws here. And you can see he's coming along, I think, pretty well. Got a weird angle going now. Sorry. I wedged myself into the corner a little bit. He's coming along pretty well. I wanted to outline him, and he's outlined. So let's finish up the little, the little feet here. And... Then I might move the table, do some aggressive furniture moving in here because I feel a bit claustrophobic. I'm a bit hemmed in. I'm happy with this progress, though. I, I looked at the clock a while back, and I thought it was almost 3, and I hadn't even started. But now in just a few minutes, we've gotten quite a bit done. Constantly fooling with the um, camera. I'm sorry. I think I will get it. There we go. That's better. And then I can leave it alone for a while. So... Yeah, so let's get these little feet done. Ask me questions in the thread if, you, um, if you're having any struggles. If you're having struggles, right, we can figure it out. If you're having struggles, it's because you are beginning and you're practicing pulling up loops, right? It's not instinctive. It's not instinctive at all. But once you get going, you get some good traction going, you're going to discover that if you are a very technical person, and you probably know if you are, and you probably know if you're not, if you are a very technical person, it's going to matter to you a lot as you look back at your piece. Um, how do I, this is one of those, what was the name of that comedian who was like, you know you're a redneck if, you know you're a technical person if, every two loops you, you look back at it for 15 minutes and scrutinize um, how good or how bad it is. Maybe not. Maybe try not to do that. Uh, you know you're a technical person if you're constantly lifting it up sideways and looking to see if your loops are even, right? So, um, <laughs> Ella. <laughs> oh, I'm just catching up on the comments. Hold on one second. Um, let me see. So Don said, yay, my 23-year-old son just got a kilt. Oh, you're kidding. He and his girlfriend are going um, to a Viking celebration. Um, every summer they go out to a Vikings. Well, that must be like us going to the Renaissance fair. That's so cool. And Rita says, I understand my, my uh, Tyler still flies under the radar at 35 and he loves Hawaiian shirts too. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? That is, there is like real parallels, right? Cause everything about Teddy, um, he has invented himself. Like he has created himself. He's very thoughtful. He's not a selfish person. He's not self-motivated. He's not like, um, He's not selfish in any way. He doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about himself. But somehow he has figured out that the look that he wants and the way he wants to present himself to other people um, is definitely a little bit different um, than what I see other kids doing. And I think that's great. But at the same time, uh, yeah, there's a lot of bu bullies in that stupid school. And that, that worries me a little bit. Thank you for your good feedback on this subject, by the way. I don't think they allow... Hooking in prison. No, I better not go there. I better not. No, hoax, no shanks. Oh, God, that's so true. Jeff Boxworthy. That's who I was thinking of, Michelle. We could probably do a whole list of these for hookers, too, right? John says, I think it took me an hour to do my first 10 loops. Uh, and your, your, uh, oh, the heart is covering. Are you saying you're too, you're too technical or you're not technical? The next comment will make the heart go away, and then I can uh, see the whole comment. That always drives me nuts. You know, when you're a technical person and you feel like you have to constantly stop and make sure that things are even, make sure things are on the line, make sure that things are evenly spaced, that's, a, that's being a technical person and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you are a technical person and you think you're going to hook in a technical way, you need to honor that, right? Just like if you are not a technical person and you're like, oh, I can see I made 20 mistakes, but guess what? Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm going to keep going. You have to honor that too, right? And we have to respect both ways of working, right? Both extremes of working. We all have to respect both. So um, if you're a technical person, just give yourself extra time to make judgment calls to assess. You can't take my word for it that it's all going to be okay. You can't take my word for it that... Um, you can't tell yet if it's perfect because you, if, if you're technical and you're looking at yours, you're thinking, nope, I know it's not perfect already. 
right? You you are more technical person than I am. If that's the kind of the, the sort of filtering that you're doing, and if you are, then that's who you are. That's how you work. That's how you're happy working. People who are very technical people are not happy working in the fly by the seat of your pants style, right? We ha you have to honor that about yourself. Same thing with creative people. Creative people are not happy working if they have to constantly think about the technical aspects of it, right? So we all work in our separate ways. We, we take different roads, right? We're at the uh, two roads to birds to the yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. And we both take different roads, but you know what? We end up in the same exact place. So whether you are very, very technical or you're not very technical does not matter and does not matter. It isn't a benefit to be one or the other in this craft. <laughs> Rita, I have a loop lifter technical. I never thought so. I thought OCD, but I like the word technical better. Loop lifters are like little chopsticks, right? Where you can pull them up and measure them. Those tools go back to the Victorian period, right? So people could make things exactly the right height. And the reason was, you know, at least in those days, we were trying to make things that looked manufactured and more expensive, right? Like imported carpets. But if you, you it could be OCD, absolutely, or it could be technical, right? You, you, pick, you do Mad Libs with that one. You fill in those blanks. But those things exist for a reason. And the reason is people who work more technically or have OCD and need to honor that, right? You have to get it right. In your mind, you have to be happy with the way the project is evolving or this is garbage and you might as well put it in the trash. You have to work in the style that you want. But if you're a beginner and you could just do leap of faith for your first like couple of projects while you, um, yep, this is available as a kit. What is a good um, beginner first time project? This is a great beginner first time project. There's very little happening here. The link to this is still in um, this video. I think I put it in the body of this video. This is a great simple one to do also because I'm showing it piece by piece. And normally um, that wouldn't happen. You just kind of look at it and try to recreate it. Um, so this one is a good beginner one and it's still there. It might look tricky, but we're going to do all the hard parts together. And I have some other beginner ones too. Um, and other people do too, not just me, but um, I have quite a few at Ribbon Candy Hooking, but only a few that I've done is hook-alongs. We need to do more hook-alongs, I know. So I have outlined Bunny, and I've outlined him in the dark colors because I know I want him to be a lighter color. So I'm going to leave him alone for a minute, and I'm going to go toward the background hill, and I'm going to put all my dark greens back together with the other greens, right, like all of the other greens, and I'm going to start doing a true hit or miss where I've got this hornet's nest over here. And I'm going to fill some of the background around Bunny. And I'm going to do my next move, right? And you don't have to hook in the same order as me because there's no right order. This is not needlepoint. There's not going to be any kind of twist. Nothing's going to happen if you hook in a different order, right? I hook in this order because this makes the most sense to me. Maureen says, I find the loop twists on one side when I pull it up. So instead of one motion, I have the loop pull and then I have to untwist it a second time. How do I avoid the twist? So Maureen, Maureen, that is something that always happens when you're a beginner. Always. There's no way to avoid it. You're not doing anything wrong. Um, you're not like you're a subpar beginner. There's nothing that you can do about that but practice. That happens to everybody. And sometimes you get that twist and you have to untwist it again a ton. Some people who are not beginners still have that happening. They're getting the twist as they're going along. If you are a more technical person, you kind of want to untwist and fix it. If you are not a technical person, you probably leave it. And when you look at a finished piece where there's lots of twisting and there's not a lot of directional flow, there's lots of pieces sprouting up somewhat organically and looks wild and crazy. I like to say bohemian. We call that style of hooking higgledy-piggledy, and it's not an insult. There's nothing wrong with higgledy-piggledy hooking. I love higgledy-piggledy. It's my favorite kind of hooking, but hooking directionally is also a good sort of feather to have in your cap. It's something else in your bag of tricks, but just know that those twists, having to twist and pulling up a twist is something that happens to everybody. And you do with practice, stop doing that. There's going to be a day when you suddenly are pulling up loops and you realize there's no more twisting. And sometimes it's hard to remember when that happened, but that that's just the way that it works. You'll realize that you're not 
that you're not twisting all of the sudden. Um, so uh, that will happen, I promise. Um, so just give yourself a little bit of uh, leeway for now because it's bound to happen without a doubt. Now, I remembered I have my country green too. I've got like, um, I've got my browns, my greens. I've got all of my green shades together. The only things I don't have with me are my pinks and my blues. I'm putting them all together. And the next thing I'm going to do that makes sense to me is the outline, right? Because I am one of the great puzzle makers of the world. In fact, my sister and I are going to finish our Christmas puzzle over the weekend. Once I have the outline of the bunny, right, this is firmed up in my head. This was the first obvious thing to do. Again, if you think of it in a different order, you can do it in a different order. But for me, now that this has a shape, literally, I want to fill in behind him. And I want to, I want to square out the shape of the hillside. So I'm going to trace this line with my hooking, right? That's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do a good straight run. Let's start here. I'm going to do a good straight run straight down right on the line. And I think I'm still for the moment going to stick with the darker colors, right? Just because it's the outline. It might be that at the end of this, I want to do a, a hook a different frame, like a little black liner or something. Or maybe I want to take some silk sari ribbon or cut up a t-shirt that's a bright color, right? My, my daughter has this bright, bright electric purple t-shirt. Maybe I want to cut that up and just do one line as a frame around it. We'll see. It might be I want to put this into a standard size frame so I have a frame in mind and pop that glass out. No glass over textiles. But if you have a standard size frame, once you get it closer and you put the frame over it and you go, oh, I only need a little bit on these sides for it to fit perfectly in the frame, then you might want to just hook a little bit on the edges. So what I'm saying is we don't know if um, this is going to be our final border, right? But I'm still going to hook it a little bit darker just because I, I like to have a little bit of a darker border. It's not a must. It's not necessary at all. I'm right on the line. Remember how I hooked outside the line for him? Right now, I'm right on the line. Now, your patterns, if you got this from me as a kit, your pattern is squared. I am maniacal about um, drawing the frame first before I transfer the pattern. All of my stuff is hand-drawn, right? So, because um, I haven't figured out how to print it uh, inexpensively enough yet. But nonetheless, it's hand-drawn. That sounds fancy. But the fact of it being hand drawn means I know it's perfectly squared. So my hook, as I as I hook a straight line as opposed to the squiggles around the bunny, I can see where the if not the next hole, I can see where my solid line is, right? There's no um there's no confusion. If I take my hook and I press down a little bit, not so much that I rip a hole through the backing, right? But if I press down, I can see where my line is, right? And I just follow that line. Mine is actually not squared, and I'm not surprised because this is not one that I sent out, and I pulled it because it wasn't perfect. So mine is not squared, but I'm going to, as I hook it, it's very easy to see where the next hole would be. And for that reason, it's faster to hook straight lines. This is one of the reasons why with really early, like 19th century quilts, we see a lot of geometrics, partly because design-wise they were easier to execute, but also partly because just choosing my colors here, partly because um, they're fast and easy to do, right? There's no thought about directional hooking. When you're just doing straight lines, it goes fast. And if, if time is a thing for you, then things that help you go fast um, are, are welcome, right? If time is not a thing from you, for you and you can kind of, uh, you know, wander along and, and take your time with each piece and um, take breaks and spend time making decisions at leisure, then, then that's also great. For me, time is always a thing. So I'm always looking uh, with every piece that I'm doing, not just during a live hook along, I'm always looking for ways that I could speed up finishing the piece. Partly because, you know, I have a business and I want to work on my next piece. And partly because um, I'm already thinking about my next project, right? I am loving Spring Hop. I love this bunny. He is going to be great. And I'm going to enjoy having him out every spring and maybe all year round. But I can't help but, it, not quite yet, right? Because this is still like, this is still a really golden time. I'm going to end by cutting here so I have a nice sharp turn. You don't have to. You could twist underneath if you want. I'm going to enjoy having Bunny out always. But when I get to be about three quarters done this project, my brain is already going to be thinking about th what the next project is. Because that's just the way I am. I, I live on that bridge. I'm always between, for example, Thursday and Easter 
or springtime and summer, I'm always on the bridge looking at the next thing. You might be a more at peace person and you might be just devouring the time you are working on this project right now. But um, if you're not, you tend to be thinking forward and you love working on the project, but when you're whatever, 60, 70, 80% of the way done, you're impatient to finish. And it's good to have some little hacks, uh, little tricks in the back of your mind that you can speed the process up so you can get some good ground going and finish your piece, actually finish your piece before you start the next piece. I just wildly changed colors there and I am at peace with that. You can see that it is a lot quicker hooking in a straight line. If you just keep your eyes focused on it and don't be glancing up at the TV or at me on the screen, if you're just focused on getting that straight line, your hand gets in the rhythm of feeding that loop and just got lost for a second there. It's like as soon as you look up or have another thought, you kind of break the spell and lose speed. But when you lock yourself in, and I bet everybody out there is more zen than I am, when you lock yourself in, you can cover a lot of ground fast. I'm going to move over here a little bit because I need to get over here to this corner. So, yep, I'm just making sure I can still get there. And let me catch up a little bit. Um, uh, Custer Camp, I have my great-grandmother's rug. Uh, Custer, Custer 2 Camp, I have my great-grandmother's rug that needs repair, so can't wait to practice so I can repair it. Oh, yeah, you know what? Stay in touch on that. Um, we'd love to see repair work happening. You are going to do a great job, and you are the perfect person to finish that rug, right? So it has to be you. But if you have any problems, let us know. And remember, Judy Taylor has that Facebook page. Uh, what's it called, everyone? Like um, restoring, repairing, uh, hook drugs. And that is like all help. Judy Taylor also has the book Save That Rug, which is all about um, repairing and finishing and restoring old rugs. So that can be a great periodical. And all of Judy's stuff now, she's not just Magpie Times, but all of Judy's stuff, she's putting on um, the electric thing, that flip smack thing. So you can always download her books if you want to figure out how to build the pipe frame or, or if you have a specific question about finishing a rug, like, um, like this is the unique situation I'm having, this is what's going on, this is the kind of fix I need to do or the kind of finish I need to do. Um, you could always download her books instead of ordering hard copies if that's easier or faster for you, you know, with where you are. Turns out that this one, the tail is going to end right on the line. I love it when that happens. So you can see I'm kind of cruising through changing color as I go, getting the line in there. Now I'm going to come shooting up here. It's going to go a little bit slower, right? Because I want to get this curve in here. I might just do, let's see what time it is. It's already four. Um, yeah, sure thing. Always reach out for help with all your questions, right? About any part of the process. And if the first thing you want to do is finish that rug, then you should uh, point toward that, right? Like all of the learning and the practicing you do should point you toward finishing that style of rug because it's going to feel great to get that project done. I bet that's the kind of thing that it's like, I don't want to say looming over, right? Because it's not like, it's not like a dark cloud. It's like something happy, um, you know, to honor, to honor your, your gram and all of that. But it is also the kind of thing, right? That you, you're like, it'll be good when I get going on it and it'd be good to make some progress on it. It can be one of those things too. So yeah, always reach out for help, no matter what kind of thing you're doing with your rug making. Reach out for help here or um, in our Facebook group, right? That was Judy's Facebook group, but our main Facebook group for us here is, uh, is my group, um, well, our group, which is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. And there are about 18,500 people on there right now. So that's a lot of people who have a lot of different expertise and See how much trickier it is to hook the curve? I'm pulling out as many as I'm putting in because I'm looking as I go. I'm still I'm still equally focused on that line and I'm locked on that line. But once in a while a loop comes up and I just don't like um, I don't like where it is. Now it's worth saying that with with doing this piece, for example, if you wanted to mix in, oops, sorry, where'd it go? There it is. If you wanted to mix in some other kinds of materials, like some crazy yarn, right? Some 
like eyelash yarn or whatever, you could absolutely do that. You could hook that in in between your loops, right? Sneak them in. You could hook the whole thing in yarn, make it wild and woolly. You could hook it in yarn and pull the yarn up really high and cut it, clip it like tall grass, right? You could hook in some uh, multicolored yarn or eyelash or mohair or lamb's curls or whatever. And you could leave them high like, like wildflowers, right? You could absolutely do whatever you want in the background. You can add anything you want to this kit. It doesn't have to be uh, exactly the way that I'm doing it. You might be sitting at your craft table while we're sitting here and looking at your wall of shame and thinking, oh, I see something that would go really nice in that background. Well, you should just hook it in there too. Even if you already have the loops in, if it's something that's a bit like lightweight, just, um, you know, you could sneak it in between the other loops. I do a lot of, I do a lot of sneakies. And uh, sometimes I see like some sock yarn or some mohair and I think, oh man, I wish I, I wish I had the foresight. And because I, I didn't have the foresight, just, I just put it in later. You know, I just sneak it in, do a little bit of uh, centralized packing, right? Even if it's already full, a little more packing. So, oh, uh, Zyro, Zyro's VR Madison from Mississippi, Madison from Mississippi here. Great to see you, Madison. I had to step away from my hooking to get in the dreaded carpool line. Oh man, love that I'm able to watch though. So, oh, I'm, I'm happy that you're there too. Get through that carpool line, right? Ah, oh, all the dreaded things in a day, right? I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come up to this hoop here. So I'm ha having a dreaded thing too. I'm gonna tell you about it because I haven't talked about this yet, um, and I'm not freaked out. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm freaked out. But I mentioned the other day um, that I had to go to the dermatologist just because that was on my list of stuff to do, and they did kind of an impromptu biopsy on a freckle of which. I have lots, but this one looked different to them. It didn't look that different to me. And it was, it's like on my, the top of my arm, so I can't really see it. Um, it's not there anymore, but it didn't look different to me. But the biopsy came back bad, abnormal. So now I have to go see an oncologist on Wednesday. They're not saying that it is cancer, but they're not saying that it is not. So you have to give me a little bit of leeway in the near future because I am properly freaked out. I still have two little kids. I don't want to have problems. Uh, hopefully it's nothing. And um, I have to see the uh, oncolo this surgeon oncologist uh, because they're going to they're gonna take, not to be disgusting, but they're going to take more of my arm away. And, um, and then we'll figure out recovery-wise what that looks like. I mean, I'm still going to be able to do shows and hook and everything. But, you know, I won't be lifting up tables and moving equipment um, for a few weeks after that. So we'll see how that goes. I have an appointment to meet with the oncology surgeon on Wednesday. So hopefully all is well and they caught it in a good time. I am freaked out because the thing is that mark I know has been on my arm forever. And I haven't been to the dermatologist. My hands start shaking when I'm thinking about it. Haven't been. Hey, Joss. Haven't been. Better wrap this conversation up because she doesn't, she doesn't know this part. Um, I hadn't been for like two years because there was no reason to. And I feel like they missed it two years ago. So that's scary. Hey, welcome back. You want to say hi? I just came here for my glue. I need to fix the slime. Oh, you're going to fix some slime? Okay. Happy happy last day before Easter. Do not do sli do not do slime next to my computer. Take the glue somewhere else. Oh, boy. Um, uh, Non-dominant side. Uh, so this is my left arm. Um, so hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's all good. Uh, I am, you know, the ironic thing, and I guess it's not ironic because this can happen to anyone, but um, I do not, I'm not a sun person. Like I do not enjoy the sun. We go on our summer vacation, you know, at the end of May and early June. I don't go in the sun. I don't like the sun. I've never been a sun person. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't like the sun at all. So it's not like I've had a lot of sun in my life. I've had like none. Um, so yeah, but you know, but I have a lot of freckles and I'm very fair. So we'll see what happens. It's a big to be continued. Um, life is full of twists and turns, isn't it? So we'll see what happens. Uh, Sharon, I'm reading yours. My shoulder blade area, it was stage zero. I have a nice two inch score. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. 
Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't care what they do as long as they do it. You know what I mean? So we will see. We will see. I hate stuff like that. Joss, how was your last day of school before the Easter break? Boring. Boring. She always says school is boring and she's so smart. What's going on over there? Maybe they're not challenging challenging you enough. If they're challenging me, I'm getting like five you, mental health days. You can't take five mental health days a week. There's only five days in a school week. Exactly. Right. Right. Oh, thanks, Olivia. Um, yeah, so that's next Wednesday. So I probably will run coffee time on Wednesday. My plan to, I, I plan to because I don't go until, I go in the morning, so I should be back for noon. Um, but I might send, I might put a message up if it's taking a long time kind of thing. Uh, I think that department is pretty on time. It's not like other departments where they keep you waiting forever. Hereditary and fair skin is susceptible. Yeah. Well, you know, I wish I knew that because I would have gone every year. It's funny the things that they don't tell you that are super important. Thanks, everybody. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, this is annoying. And I'm not a technical person, but can you see right here? There's like that... that one strip could not make one more dang loop, could it? So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start another piece right there. I'm not a technical person, but that's going to drive me crazy. I'm not going to pull it up as a tail. I'm going to pull it up as a loop. That's going to drive me crazy. There we go. Filled that gap. Now, you know what I'm going to do just for the sake of... Wow, Joss, what are you doing, honey bear? She's, uh, she's going to make some... You can't make this kind of noise. Okay. Yeah, because I'm doing a live thing here. She's um, she's inspired to make slime. As to, like she literally just came through the door and she's already, um, inspired. I'm more blaming um the doctor, right? Because it's like, um, tell me what I'm just tell me what I'm supposed to go for. Tell me what I'm supposed to go for, and I will be there. You know, I'm not like an ostrich with stuff. I I don't put stuff off. I go. It's like, just tell me. It's the same with this stupid hormone patch that I needed to get in the end. You know, after five, six doctors for depression, different people, different meds, just just tell me I might need the hormone patch. Tell me where to go. Tell me who to call and make an appointment with. Just tell me. That's what I, it just, this medical system just drives me crazy. I suppose it always has. I suppose it's their job. But yeah, just tell me before something bad happens or my, my head starts hanging on by a thread, you know? So, all right. Hopefully it's nothing serious though, right? I mean, lots of people have this problem, right? All right. I'm pulling up that. If you notice, I'm not pulling up a ton of tails because I can feel I only, it only has some of my loops as I pull them up. There's only, there's only the loop and there's no room for an extra tail. So in those decisions, I leave a tiny tail on the back and I just pull the loop up, right? And that works great. Now I have to make a decision about the way that I'm going to do my fill. Now, we were talking a little bit about straight lines, how great those are. If you like straight lines, you might want to just do straight, 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 back and forth like a typewriter. Ding, ding, right? And just do cutting, cutting, and uh, return, typewriter return, and just do straight across directional hooking. People will look at it and go, oh, look at that nice directional background there, right? So that, that could work great. I like that, but for myself, I'm not going to do that. I prefer to do uh, the echo fill, which is going to be something more like this. You see what I mean? I prefer that kind of fill, partic particularly with hit or miss stuff. Either way, it's going to be great. You could do it like this if you're more comfortable with that. I'm going to start doing it like that because I'm more comfortable with that. We have to do what we're most comfortable with. I'm going to fill this little area. Jocelyn! I'm sorry, honey. I love you, but she is rootling through the slime box like there's not someone sitting here doing a live show. What's up, honey bear? What's up? I'm trying to find something. All right. I you might have to find it after I'm done. All right. So now I really doing am. A live show? I'm doing a live thing. I'm sitting here live, and you're like a like a like a no, little piggy in a stall. You're doing a, class or just like a, coffee a little bit of both. It's a hook along. All right, just just tow your slime box out and rootle, rootle in the other room, okay? Yeah. All right. Whew, that threw me. All right, let me do like this. I'm going to turn here, and I'm going to fill 
um, try to decide what area I want to fill. I'm going to fill this area for now. And so I'm going to kind of echo the ears. By echo, I mean I'm doing a line that's right around the ears, right? I'm filling in the last line that I did. And you do your fill however you want. Doing fills is just, see, I'm right to the, let me get you a little bit closer. Sorry, I didn't realize you were so far away. So far away. There we go. You can see I'm right in uh, the hornet's nest here. And if I cut that, that makes the perfect little fill between those ears. Um, you have to do the fill the way that you are feeling it, right? If you like that geometric fill and you want to do the straight lines, you do it that way. If you want to do all higgledy piggledies and you just, you're like, uh, yeah, I'm just starting in the middle and I'm just blasting it, do it. If you want to do an echo fill like I'm doing, which is basically echoing the line that's already there, do it. You do your fill however you want. I don't think we talk enough about fills. And um, we should. We should talk more because this is part of, you know, and, and you could be like, you know, I'm an echo fill person. There's no doubt about it. I'm an echo fill. And you might be like, nah, I'm a geometric fill. And yeah, you might feel like that about yourself. And at the same time, it might be that you like a different fill from project to project. So it could be that today you're an echo fill, but tomorrow you are a geometric fill. Um, or a just or marble cake fill or random fill, right? So there's so many ways that you can fill in. You're basically paint by numbering at this point. If you have hooked the outline of the bunny with me, then the next question is, well, how do I fill in around the bunny, right? And that part's up to you. What if I pick the wrong thing? Guess what? You know what I'm going to say. There is no wrong thing. You do it the way that you do it. You do it the way that your eye likes it, right? And then it's going to be the right thing. What if I change my way, my, my mind partway through? Well, you might. And if that happens, then you might end up pulling some out or you might end up having a situation where you've got more than one background fill technique in the same piece. And that probably is going to look great. Probably be really interesting. Those are the kinds of things we always remark upon when we're doing our shows and stuff. We always talk about how there are different um, background fills and look at how it looks like marble cake here and look at how it doesn't here. That variety is what makes this craft interesting. I get to choose where I come up, where I want to be. Because I'm handling the background as a hit or miss with lots of different colors of green, some cool, some warm, I can pop up like a whack-a-mole wherever I want. Now, over here, right, I already have a lot of that value of green in here. So I decided to pop up whack-a-mole over here where these like spearmint greens are just because they're different. And because it's a hit or miss, I want there to be a lot of different colors um, in every, every space. So I decided to pop up over here. I'm going to pull the pistachio. I haven't done anything with pistachio yet. This is a real, this is my super light value. So I can start him anywhere. When I'm doing hit or miss stuff like this, sorry, adjustment. Um, I don't like to start right like at the, see how this is the line where, I'll just do a little bit of this. See how this is the line where this green starts, like the dark ends and starts right here in the middle. I don't want to start right here too because it'll emphasize that join. You know what I mean? So I'm going to start like, I'll start up here. You can start in the middle of anywhere. You can stop and start as you like. I don't like it when hit or miss stuff um, meets up in the same place because then I feel like it looks too intentional and it becomes so geometric that your eyes look, it has expectations. Whereas you just, if you keep it, it, it sounds like a contradiction of terms, but if you keep your randomness or your hit or miss colors um, as forcibly random as they can be, the better the effect I think will be, right? The more variety. When your whole thing has kind of an equal uh, randomness to it in the background, it reads as all hit or miss. You see what I mean? It reads as um, all the same. Whereas if you've got little patches where all of the ones in this patch are very light and all of the ones in this patch are very dark, and we've got a few pronounced lines over here, but none over here. That can really fragment um, your background. And it might look extra cool or it might look distracting. I don't know. 
this value is so much lighter, this pistachio, that it has potential to be distracting. I don't know, but I like it enough and I feel like it fits enough with this family of greens that at least for this moment, I'm gonna leave it in there. Since I've made the decision to use these the, the fluffy duffies, the yarns for the center, I'm okay with having the greens be lots in many in the background. If you're like, no, I just wanna to try to do more of the dark ones, then just take out your pistachios and all of the lighter ones. You do it however it seems right to you, right? You don't have to do it exactly like me. It is a hit or miss project. Oh, I see a little gap here. You know what, I gotta get in there. I wanna get in there with a different color though. I'm gonna come back with a pistachio. Bring it back over me a little bit like that. So, um, so you know what else I decided? I think I'm going to run gallery night. This has nothing to do with the oncologist, but um, I think I'm going to run gallery night next Friday. And the only reason is because I'm trying to work out with the kids what our movements are because they, you know, they just had school and now they're out and they're uh, off for the, they're off for Good Friday. They're off until Monday. So it's a long weekend for us. So I thought, well, let's go to Gami's house maybe tomorrow night. And if we go to Gami's house tomorrow night, it's always stressful to run a show there. Um, so I thought, let's run gallery night next week, particularly because I'm on for quite a few hours today. Um, I'm going to be a lazy bum and take tomorrow. I won't take tomorrow off. I'll be working, but I won't be live, and I won't have to spend hours putting a live show together. So I will run gallery night next Friday night, I promise. And, uh, yeah, that gives me another night to do some Easter stuff with the kids. Joss, can you hear me? So I don't think she can hear me, but I bought um, I bought an Easter bunny outfit to torment the kids um, because, you know, they don't believe in anything anymore. So I found one off Facebook Marketplace and I went and picked it up the other day. Somebody local and it, it is like, you know, it's for an adult and it's like a it's like a giant white bunny wearing a vest. Um, so I thought, you know, he might appear. He might appear. Um, I think I told you that already, but I picked it up and we're all good. Um, the kids don't know, and I can't wait. I cannot wait. I mean, they're not going to believe in him, but it's going to be, um, it's going to be a very funny moment where, when they see him appear on Easter morning and it'll be a once, it'll be a once a year joke, you know, until they're really sick of the joke. But, um, yeah, I thought it would be a bit fun and fantasy on, uh, on Easter morning when they're going on their little hunt at my mom's house, um, at a new dimension of fun. I hope not of horror. It is a pretty scary looking thing, I have to say. He really, it's its really something. I'll take some pictures, but it is a freaky looking, freaky looking uh, bunny. Should be a lot of fun. Family first. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, we don't really have um, a plan. The plan is to just survive, you know, with the cooking and uh, Easter egg hunt. We do two different Easter egg hunts. And if you're a beginner and you're going, why is she running her mouth? It's just because I'm still working on my fill, right? So you work on, if you're still doing your outlining, keep going. If you're working on a random fill like I am, keep going. If you're working on the typewriter fill, keep going, right? We're just going to fill for a few minutes. Um, we have two different traditions. and One of them is to, well, now now it's going to be a third, but one of them is to do the do the Easter egg hunt. And, um, and that's just, they wake up and it's like, oh, Jesus. The, the bunny came. Does, does everybody see those eggs out there? And the kids are like, ah, oh, mom. But they do go outside and they collect all the eggs because you can see all the colors popping out of the bushes. And, you know, it's like it, it's like the running of the bulls, these two in the backyard trying to collect all the eggs. And um, and there's some quarters and some dollar bills and the eggs and candies and everything. So that's one of one of the moments. But then the other moment is um, a tradition that my dad used to do for me and my sister growing up. And he had a bunch of little poems on little post-it notes that would be like little rhyming couplets of um, if you think you see uh, a dress blah 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 the rest or whatever um, and and it would send you like to a picture on the wall or the couch cushion or the dryer you know washer dryer or whatever and there's many of them and um, it's supposed to be nauseating and impossible and then when you get to the end of it, um, in some big place like the trunk of the car or the shower or something, are two huge Easter baskets with like the big stuff in it, like plush toy or whatever, you know, the main stuff. So there's two distinct parts of, um, 
of the Easter hunts. And I tried last year to cut one of them and to just do one, one event. But um, yeah, they, they weren't having it. They weren't having it. So I had to come up with some poetry really fast. And um, they don't like it when things change. And I love that about them. I don't like it when things change either. So trying to make things nice, try to keep things nice and exciting. Hey, Joss, how's it going with the slime? Oh, I don't know if any of you have any uh, expertise with fixing slime, but Joss is rather a master. She makes cloud slime, and what kinds of slime do you make, Joss? Slime. Glossy slime. Glossy Jiggly slime. Jiggly, 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 Jiggly slime. slime. What was the last slime? Water slime. Water slime. slime. What was the last one? Water, Water slime and what? Butter, Butter slime. slime. Okay. And, um, icy slime. Icy slime. Um, Others. Yeah, she does a lot of different styles of slime. Bingsu. What? Bingsu. Bingsu? Yeah, whatever the heck that is. Um, yeah, I guess the thing about the slime is that there's like different components or different ratios of the same. It's like a recipe, isn't it? And you get different kind of finish and viscosity and all that stuff. But she loves it. And she's so good at it that some of the kids at yeah. school, um, yeah, you are good at it. Um, bring in their slime for her to fix it because they put like for example too much water or too much whatever junk in there and then she uh, figures out like why it isn't the way it's supposed she to be like a whole thing of bacon, so bacon. oh so she was too heavy on the the next door neighbor Charlotte gave Jocelyn can you not bump the table because I'm running a live show yeah. Have you seen the, paint? the paint the yeah. purple paint like the one that I used yesterday uh, I, I saw the purple one I feel like it's in the, oh, we used it in the kitchen. I feel like it's on the uh, dining room table. I, I know I saw it in the wrong spot. And I thought, good one, Joss. But then I can't remember where I put it. To find it. She funny. She funny. Funny little girl. She's really torn between her slime making and her button making now that she's got the button machine. It's fun making those pin bags, you know. She's been hot on that for a while. So it's good that she stays busy. Sometimes she's on a uh, video game thing, and I usually let her alone. I don't really do much with screen time, not because I'm lazy, but because I remember my parents didn't mess with me when I was playing Atari, right? That would have been deadly. So they didn't mess with me, and I still did great at school. So I feel the same about these kids. Sometimes they feel like playing video games for a few weeks straight, and there's not, there's, they don't even want to come up for air. But then sometimes she'll work on the pin machine or slime for the next six months. And, yeah. Seasons and cycles for everything, right? Uh, Catherine said, I just ordered Judy's book, Save That Rug. Yeah, that is a really good book. Traditions Holding Strong. Yeah, absolutely, right? Olivia said, and Olivia, you're in Ireland. Uh, that should be fun. I'm doing an Easter hunt for the grandchildren. My 19-year-old 19 19-year-old 19 says, where's my egg? Yeah, you don't want those things to change. I mean, that's your childhood, isn't it? I try to keep things so much, so much the same. Because traditions are everything. Doodle, doodle, doo, doo. But they really are. And try to make some new traditions, too. I'm still cruising along on this background, Phil. Are y'all cruising here with this? It's coming along really nice. I, I do like a good hit or miss background. Um, yeah, I'm, try, I'm trying to create new traditions too, you know? And like this weekend we went to Boston because I wanted to take that video at the gallery. And, um, and that was a lot of fun. But you know what? I'm just going to pause to say I'm feeling like as I get to the center of my echo... Um, I want to go for even lighter colors. So I'm going to be pulling for my lightest colors as I get to the center. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull for the lighter ones. I'm going to go to my more country greens and my uh, pistachio and my sage green, if you've got the kit. Yeah, when we went to Boston, um, you know, I did the video. We went to Quincy Market and Fennel Hall, and um, we did all the usual Boston. We didn't do the Freedom Trail or anything. It was it was a big day. We went to a video game store and we went to a board game store as well. And we went to the giant antique center. I'll show you on uh, when gallery night happens next week. I got a beautiful rug and some other really, really good stuff. But, you know, Teddy pointed out to me that we do go to a lot of cities. We're not city people. 
but we definitely do a lot of cities. And I thought maybe that's one of our traditions to to go to a lot of cities. You know, we go, we didn't stay over with Boston because we were at my mom's and it was an easy ride from there. But, um, you know, we often stay over in like New York City and stuff. We could have stayed over around Boston. Boston is even, I think, more expensive than New York City, but whatever. So, um, yeah, we tend to do a lot of cities. We do Providence often because of the pinball museum there and because that was my city growing up. But, you know, I said to the kids the other day, maybe it's like one of our things, like one of our traditions to just visit lots of cities. Because that's where, you know, that's where like the hornet's nest of stuff is. Like that's where the game stores are. That's where we have lots of choices of restaurants and, you know, things that they like to do too. We can put a bunch of things on the hit list, like the vintage gaming stores or the retro stores or whatever. Yeah, I have stuff to do, not like the hit list of, you know, people to, to whack. Um, as I come into this area here, let me see if I can bring you right down. If you're a beginner, you might want to look up, which is focused first. Make sure I'm in focus. Not in focus, hang on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't look, I'm going to make you seasick. There we go, I'm in focus. Where was I? Ah, oh, I lost where I was, right here. No, I'm not, I'm not there. Hang on. All right, see where my needle is right here? You probably can't tell, right? But there's a tiny holiday, tiny. This is like, I'm doing some dental work right here. There's a tiny holiday and I'm almost done with my um, strand. So I'm gonna be pulling up here really carefully. I wanna just fill this little holiday in one go and this last little piece, there's a tiny holiday. Uh, you, you can't see it because it's not really there. This is my OCD. I'm gonna pull the tail through here and that's gonna complete that area. Hey, babe. There we go. That's actually perfect. Ah, I like it when it's perfect bordering on packed, right? That's the way I work. Perfect packed, right? So that whole little area is done. Uh oh, wait a minute. I see on camera. Where's that? Oh, there might be one more little space, right? Yeah, there's one more little space right there. Let me let me show you right here. See, if you're not a, I'm not technical, but if you're like at all, like Rita was saying, OCD. Um, you got to fill these areas like that. I got to put one or two. It's a tiny space, but that's going to drive me nuts. So let me grab a color. Let me just put one or two little loops right nestled in there, just so I know. And I'm not going to do tails. You know, you, you decide for you. But sometimes when I'm making little fills in little tight areas like this, where I'm just finishing the deal in this area, sometimes I don't pull up a tail or leave a tail up because I'm going to put a tail on this side because sometimes when I have lots of stops and starts in the same place I feel like it starts to look ratty and I don't like it when things look ratty so sometimes I choose to not leave my tail on top right that can happen too Josh should write a recipe article for magpie that's a good idea you know she's been writing that little comic about um hazel hooky right Joss Ah, uh, the next one is so cute. Uh, Hazel Hookie finds her purpose. It's like a, it's like a rug hook. Um, she's been writing that comic all on her own. She's got the next one all set for the next issue. So I'm keeping it a secret. But yeah, she should do a little recipe like that. Her big passion, um, sadly, right? It's not rug making yet, but her big passion is like baking and stuff. She likes things with recipes, and I think that's why she likes slime. She she'll drop whatever she's doing if someone's like cooking or particularly baking. So it might be that she's my baker girl and it might be that we end up, you know, opening a shop together at some point that's like yeah. part, yeah, part bakery, part rug cooking studio. That would be, that would be a fun thing that we could do together. Try to create situations where uh, my children are bound to me forever so they never leave me, right? It's psychotic enough. There we go. All right, let's see. Coming back down on a different angle here. I do feel like a dental hygienist sometime. Um, oh, thanks, Olivia. She is so talented. She really is. I forgot to tell you. Oh, I didn't read the rest of it. I forgot to tell you how I love Hazel the Hook. <laughs> she is so funny. She is so good. She makes those on her phone. And yeah, I, I love that. Um, I love that I'm able to put that little um, cartoon, that little comic strip into Magpie because it makes her really happy. Makes me happy, too. It's really sweet. All right, I'm going to do, you know, the thing about doing these echoes, I'm going to need to get another light in here soon, um, is there are some straight shots. 
and that makes for some good speed. I think I hooked those two lines a little bit too far apart. You see how there's a gap right here? It's just a little, my finger's pushing on it now. That's going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to pull that right back out. That's the kind of thing that for me is a no-brainer. I can see right away that's going to cause me grief and aggravation. And got enough of that already. So I'm going to pull that out right away. And I didn't realize that I had two pistachios right next to each other. So with those light values, that might bother me. Let's see. Nope, it's okay. I was going to see if they ended in the same place and I was going to say, nope, no thanks, Satan, not doing that. Because then it's too matchy-matchy and it's too distracting. But it didn't. I overshot that line and I'm still going strong. I might make it, no, nope, I won't. Maybe. I was going to say, I might make it right down here to the paw. I am going to. Can you believe it? Whew. Hope my luck holds. Let's hope it holds next Wednesday. I'm coming right down here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I even have one more. Yep, and one more. I can tell the tail is, is like tapering. There we go. I think that did it. It's so, if you are an, ex not, I don't want to say experienced, if you've done a little bit of rug cooking, you probably know that feeling of getting, oh, I don't want to use that one though because that kills my idea of doing some lighter ones in there. I feel like using this though. Let's use this right here for now. Um, if you've done some hooking, you know that feeling of when the strand lasts exactly to where you want it to last. And it's like, thank you, universe. It's so nice when things dovetail like that, you know. I just, sometimes you just feel like using a specific color. And for me right now, it was this green color. I think my green screen is still on because it's coming out darker than it is. Sometimes you just, you're looking at your choices there and you just feel like using one and it's powerful and sometimes you just have to stop what you're doing or stop working on the fill that you're working on like for example if i was working on the bunny or the ear or the tree or the cloud or whatever and you just want to use the other color you just die to use the blue or something sometimes you just have to right you just have to this is about uh, pleasure and enjoyment and um, if you're not enjoying what you're doing as you're doing it there's absolutely no point if, if you don't if this isn't a business for you right it's a business for me and I enjoy every minute of it even the frenetic crazy panicked busyness I enjoy that too um, but if you're not enjoying it and you're you're hooking for a hobby and and it's not a joy then um, you got to rethink the way that you're working right don't rethink the craft think the way that you're working because it should be buckets of fun buckets of fun I'm trying to come in on a new angle here. Springs popping left and right. All right, so let's come back to this little corner. Yeah, let's do this. Let's complete this little bit here. Oh, Olivia says, your granddaughter, who's four, already loves baking cupcakes tomorrow. Oh, it is a super mess, isn't it? But it is so much fun. I think I would enjoy hooking with yarn better. Um, I have to give it a try. Yeah, Dawn, you know, the thing about the hooking with the yarn, and if you're there as a beginner t right now or later watching the recorded version, um, you know, if you are having having that struggle with the, with the twisting happening, like Maureen was saying earlier, um, with yarn, that's not a thing. So this kit is partly yarn, right? So you have the experience of trying both, but... With yarn, they're, you know, wool strips. These are number five, so they're fairly thin strips. They're kind of right in the middle. But um, the wider your strip, if you're working with like a primitive strip, which would be an eight or above, it's like a giant ribbon, isn't it? And even with the number five, like we've got here today, they it's like they're little ribbons, aren't they? And since that is the case, there's a right side and a wrong side, and there's the possibility of it twisting. Well, a yarn is just like the cylindrical, never-ending little snake. And there isn't a right side and a wrong side. And, you know, you eliminate when you're hooking with yarn that whole problem of I can't stop twisting. Um, and so in a way, that's good. That's one of the many reasons that people like hooking with yarn. Um, it, it's good to do both, right? It's good to try both. People who like hooking with yarn, like it's, you know, Canadians are distinctly yarn heavy. Um, and some Americans, obviously, too, and, and Brits love just hooking with yarn. You know, you have to figure out what you like hooking with the best. And it can change from project to project. 
but if hooking is not fun because of the twisting and it and it continues to not be fun because of the twisting it's good to think about yarn instead right because why not you, you want to have fun you want to enjoy doing it and it's very hard to tell uh, with projects unless you're look if you know unless you're right on top of them whether a person is hooked with yarn or wool so and by wool I mean fabric right and again let's get away from the word wool because it might be that your favorite thing to hook with is uh, cut up t-shirts and it might be that your favorite thing to hook with is plastic bags and it might be that your favorite thing to hook with is um, hold on wait a minute let me just concentrate coming in I'm coming into this little corner and finishing this so pull one tail up and that should do it that gives me a small strip in the background in the uh, uh, underneath but I can work with that uh, we're going to continue that conversation about materials in just a second. You can see where I'm at right here. I don't want to do any more. I don't think I want to do any more pistachio. Do I want to do? No, I want to mix it up because I want to keep it hit or miss. So I'm going to go to one of my other light colors. And let me pull up here. Yeah, let me pull up here because I still I want it to remain stripy. You know, um, it could be that your favorite thing to hook with is not. Um, is not wool or fabric. Maybe it's quilt fabric, right? Maybe it's sari ribbon. Maybe, uh, for me, it's pantyhose. I still love hooking with pantyhose. I get a lot of um, emails, a lot, saying, do you have any hooks, uh, do you have any kits left with that are all pantyhose kits? And for the moment, I have to keep saying no to that, and it breaks my heart, because I was one of those hooking brands that was, uh, in, I was partnering with Hanes, for the last few years because they were doing uh, big bulk quantities of imperfect hose at an affordable price because pantyhose are super expensive. Nobody wears them anymore and because of that they cost a fortune. So hold on a second while I think this through. I'm feeling with my hook to see if I have, there's a little holiday right here. You know, I think I'm going to Jumping is not good. Jumping means that you go from one place to the next, like this, right? That's not advisable, but sometimes I jump because it makes common sense, even if it's breaking a rule. The reason that we don't jump is because it's hard. If you start jumping all over the place, it's hard to hook further around those jumps because you've got these long runs of a flat or whatever, whatever you're hooking with yarn or whatever. You've got a long run in the back like a like an embroidery stitch and then it's hard to continue hooking but since this piece is completely finished this area i'm okay with doing one little jump because it solved the problem of um finishing that section so yeah the thing with that hanes situation was that the program stopped um they closed that particular plant and the woman who was doing it like she doesn't even work there anymore so um, I finally got in touch with the powers that be there. And yeah, they're, they discontinued that program. So um, I'm not able to get pantyhose for the time being. Let me come back over here. Uh, and that's a bummer. So yeah, but as soon as I figure out, and if anybody finds out where I can get pantyhose, even if I need to buy like, you know, uh, like a million at once, maybe not a million, but many thousands, um, I would, just so I can start stocking them again and stocking kits with pantyhose again. I love hooking with pantyhose because it is so forgiving. Speaking of which, all right, let's talk about this. But let's go close up now to where I'm at in here. I'm going to actually bring you even closer. And let's come here. Okay, so beginners, heads up. This is where I'm at. Can you see this little strip right here? I'm um, quickly running out of space to make my loops. Now, my loops are going to not fit anymore because it's getting really tight. I'm going to pull up the next one and it's naturally going to go sideways because there's literally nowhere for that loop to go. It's that tight. It wants to go sideways. I'll pull another. That one lands sideways too. I'll pull another. And that one's just too tight. It's distorting the loops around it. So I cut, right? I cut. That's the only thing that makes sense. I can't fit another one here. So I'm going to come to the next place where I can fit another one because I still have this little bit to do, right? This little bit in here, but I can't fit any more in there. So I had to stop. You have to do what makes sense. 
right? If there's not enough room for a strip, there's not enough room for a strip. Sometimes these are number fives, right? So not so much with this cup, but for example, if we were all hooking with number eights or even like number sevens or something like that, you could in those moments take your strip, cut it in half the long way with a pair of scissors. And then you've got a smaller strip. You can finish hooking these really tight sections like where I am right now, it's tight, right? These are the last loops that are gonna fit into this section. Uh, sometimes it's nice to cut your strip in half so that you still got the right color going, but, oops, I cut the wrong part of the loop. Uh, there we go. You got the right color going, um, but it's small enough to fit where you need to be. So I got this whole corner done in this hit or miss style. I think I might stand up for a second and get a light because it's getting real dark in here and I'm going to uh, pee really quick. I will be right back, okay? So let me come out here for a second and come back here and say, hey, and I'm going to leave you, wait a minute, you can't imagine what I got going on here. Yeah, see how dark it's gotten in here? <laughs> All right, let me get some lights blasting. I'm gonna leave you with this for a second. I'll put this camera actually down on the piece. Da -da 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 -da. And let's think about um, where we wanna go next. I did this corner. I, I want my all my background to look like this. For me, that's what I'm doing. Let's go somewhere else with the hook in. Um, Arjen, can you bring the light in? Like the big table light that's like the uh, x-ray you? Yeah, also, but let me have a light on my on my junk. And some water. Uh, and some water. I need to, no, I have water. I need to pee. You can't do that for me. Um, so I have this fill in. I'm not going to do all of this on camera. I want to work on some other bits and pieces. Let's make a decision when I come back about the bushes, the four bushes. Let's make a decision on what we want to do there. Because um, I still want them to, oh, I think I made a decision. All right, let's talk about it as soon as I get back. Yeah, see if you can just plug me in right there. We're still live. Mm -hmm. Hot mic time. I'm going to pee upstairs. Okay, there's a gallon container of glue perched on the corner of the sink in the bathroom. We can just say it. Drive me nuts. God, this child. Oh, this child. All right. Now, here we go. Welcome back, everybody. There we go. All right. Let me just get my sweater on. It's getting it's getting um, chilly as well. Yeah, there's a giant container of glue. Uh, without the cap on it, literally waiting to fall, uh, spill into the toilet or the sink, right? In the kids' playroom, bathroom over here. Oh, all right. So let's think about let's think about those trees. And the trees function kind of as big bushes. Oh, let me catch up on some of the hair. Let's visit with each other for a second. Um, Olivia says, that sounds interesting, Dawn. I have a load of flam. Oh, wait a minute. I missed something. Um... Oh, gosh, I missed a lot. Let me catch up with comments here for a minute. Um, okay, let me see. Try hooking with yarn. Okay, and then Olivia said, I'm going to actually start my Nancy Thomas pattern this weekend that I got from you. Uh, only had it for three years. Fantastic. I can't remember which one it was. Um, is it one of the animals or is it one of the food ones? Uh, you know, I discontinued those patterns just because I had so much in the shop. Um, they were selling, but they weren't selling super well. And I really, really, it sounds awful, but 
I was promoting them like crazy. And when I'm promoting other brands, I kind of expect them to promote me like once, um, I, you know, according to like the contracts that we make. And if that's not happening, I just, I, I'm getting to the point in my life where I just feel like when I feel used, I just pull the plug. I just can't. I, I'm just too busy to have any negative uh, feelings. So I pull the plug on those. But um, if anybody is looking for ones or wish that you had gotten them, um, I can still, I still have the right to produce them. I just, I haven't been putting them in the store and it just makes for so many patterns in the store right now too. And I will be introducing a few new lines of patterns in the very near future. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I'm actually going to start. Okay. That will be, oh, you telling me which one I got it from, uh, life gets in the way the February one with the two kids at the front red door. I know exactly what you mean. It's one of the calendar ones. I love that one. She did um, um, series of like um, the calendar series quite a few times with different themes. Um, and I remember that that was like the children's calendar because there was a whole year of patterns that all featured kids in them. Um, absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love that run. Magby, great to see you in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Great to see you. And Don says, I just ordered a used copy of uh, rug hooking magazine from 1983 and there's an article about hooking with flannel oh you're kidding well i'll have to pull that one out um i'd love to read that art i have all of them but i haven't looked at them you know lately i'd love to read the article about flannel too um and olivia says that sounds interesting dawn i have a load of flannel sheets that i bought when my kids were younger and actually kept them the harder uh the harder i am used uh, for dust sheets when um, oh, um, use them for like dust sheets when you're painting, but yeah, you can use, definitely use them for hooking too. Uh, flannel is great to hook with. I, I'm going to have to dig up that article corridor. Me too. You're in good company. I bought two from you, Santa in February. Oh, right, right. Uh, gosh, I can't remember what Santa it was. I love her patterns too. I really do. I might need to rethink that. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, I have to tidy up my shop. That's the thing. And I can't do it. Somebody has to help me with that because I'm. it's just not a good use of time. And everything moving so quickly, too, and all these weird curveballs now. Um, we'll have to see how it goes. But, yeah. Um, oh, my other ball. Oh, hey, Buttons. Buttons, the dog came to say hi. I'm going to hold on the rabbit for now. Let's come back over here and let's talk about our next, our next move. Let's make some smart moves here, right? Okay, there we go. So trees. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can I say no to this? How can I say no to? Oh, sorry. Did I catch you in it? Oh, how do I say no to this? Can you say, can you look up here? Here he is. Oh, you probably can't see him. He is so cool. He, he is so cool. He a good boy. He a little Yorkie and he a good boy. He a good boy. He going to go to Gami's for Easter, right? He can, he going to help celebrate. Man, I wonder how he's going to react when he sees the E B. You know what I mean? Might not be good. He's going he gonna to want to kill somebody when he sees the EB. All right, down he goes. Let me grab that piece of yarn that fell at the same time. Oop, there he goes. Oh, both pieces, both balls of yarn fell. Had to, right? All right, let's see. There we go. Oh, he is so cute. He is a good boy. Santa with the angels. Oh, I totally remember. Yep, that is so pretty. Her Santas, like are my favorite, are my favorite thing that she does is the Santas. So good. I forgot what my idea was. Come on. The sky is going to be blue. So I want to do, let's think, wait a minute. Let me regroup for a sec. Now, okay. Let's think. I'm not much of a, I'm not a technical person and I do my thinking while I'm working. So this is the way that I work, right? You might not want to work this way. You might want to work with colored pencils and figure it out in advance. You might want to, um, you know, do it as a watercolor, watercolor the actual piece so you know about your color placement. This is how I work. I, I look, I agonize, I think, I check out my colors, I look some more, I check out my colors. Um, so let's see. I'm looking at what I got here. Um, I'm thinking the bunny is going to be lighter colors and I'm thinking I might want to do, I do, I do, I do. I want to do some outlining around the trees cause I still want the trees to be green. I'm going to outline them in the white. 
because remember how I didn't want to outline him in the white, but he's going to have white? Well, I want some white to be up here too, and I don't want a white cloud. I don't want a predictable white cloud. So I'm actually going to outline everything above ground in white. Let's start that right now. Um, that's not what I was thinking I would do, but that is a good, I think that's a good firm decision. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm real happy with that. You know, sometimes you just get this great instinct um, and you're like, you just know. It's like with everything in life, you just know it's right, right? That's the one. Um, yeah, and I'm going to, let me start over here. I'm going to go right on the line, okay? So remember at the beginning we talked about, am I on the line? Am I outside the line? Am I inside the line? I'm going right on the line. Do you have to go right on the line? Absolutely not. Oh, crap, I did one tree on the line, and then I started doing the next one outside of the line. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Keep saying to yourself your mantra, right? This is a thrift craft. This is a poverty craft. This is a rag rug, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to add that sort of addendum. If you are a technical person, it might feel like it does have to be perfect. And again, if that's the case, you have to honor that, or you will not be happy with your piece. You will not enjoy working on your piece and you will not be happy with your piece if it's not the way that you think you want it, right? But what I do not want you to do, right? What I'm really firm that I do not want you to do, I don't want you to judge your piece based on the way my piece looks, right? Not that it looks like incredible, but don't judge your piece based on what my piece looks like or what anyone else's piece looks like. You can only judge your stuff against you, right? Judge your stuff according to your taste your progress, if you want to make progress, right? If you want to expand your bag of trick, tricks in your, in your hooking repertoire, then um, great, great. But don't ever compare yourself to someone else, right? That, it's, that doesn't lead to anything good, does it? That one strip got me all the way around that edge of the um, tree there. And you see, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's going to be fine when I hook on both sides. If it's going to be great. And yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. I'm going to do, and this might dictate how I do the bunny too. I don't know. Let's see. What are you looking for? We don't have any uh, beers, do we? Not if they're, I don't want you to squander them by giving them to me. I do love alcohol-free beer. I have to say it tastes better than soda. Thank you trying to do less drinking in this house for so many reasons uh, and I you know I've always been a big fan of St. Pauli girl non-alcoholic to me it's better than any soda I've ever had it's just tasty I also like alcohol but we're trying to drink less so and when I say we I don't really mean we but trying to be a good sport so I will enjoy that so Another thing I want to talk to you about as we hook along, you working on your outlining with me? If you are a beginner, right? If this is if you have this as a kit and you're working on it, things going pretty well, figuring things out as you go along, right? It's not it's not paint by number, right? You can mix things up. Maybe you're saying to yourself, I kind of liked the idea of having, thank you so much. Um, can you open it? I'm not being squandered by giving it to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is Bush, non-alcoholic. Let's see. Hmm. Cheers, my dears. Oh, that is good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. I remember you liking it when you were pregnant with Ted and Bill. Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of um, drinking non-alcoholic beers when I was pregnant. I also did a lot of drinking when I was pregnant. Partly because I didn't know and, yeah, uh, it took a while to figure it out. But, yeah, when I think of the way, for example, when I, my mom was pregnant with me, uh, it wasn't even a thing to stop drinking, right? And nothing happened. Just kidding. I am uh, crazy, but I don't think it's because of that. I don't think it's, I think that's all me. So, yeah, that's going to be fine, right? Just do do one of these and just see if you if you can envision the line falling into place. It's got a bit of a dent right there. I think we're going to be fine. Yep, we're good. I can make that work. Um, what were you just talking about? Um, yeah, so, you know, it's not paint by number. 
if you if you if you're still sitting there uh, working on this right that's absolutely okay it might be that you need this part to be perfect to keep going that's absolutely what you should do right that's absolutely what you should do it might be that you like the idea of having the purple, purple rabbit and that you've been sitting there ever since thinking well how can i rearrange the colors to make the perf perfect perfect to make the purple rabbit happen um honestly i'm not it sounds silly and sarcastic but that's not a bad use of time either right it's better to think about if you know um you thought of a oh i want my rabbit to be blue and you've been sitting there ever since trying to work out looking at your quantities if it's going to work having your rabbit be blue or a different color than the kit it, you know i don't want to say intends because what's intended is that you do exactly what you want but you know it's not um, the kit is not unlimited supply right so it gives you a lot of some colors and less of others so you got to think about that part but um it might be that you are doing completely different color choices and that's great that's great and if you run out of if you run out of colors for the kit absolutely absolutely uh, send me an email if you did a different color choice or maybe you're doing a little packing uh, or something happened and you pulled stuff out 10 times and it got all ratted up please tell me and i will send you i i, I will not charge you i will send you more of whatever colors are a problem all right um, if you're changing the color of something, that's a little bit different. I think that's a great call. I'm debating if I should outline the cloud. I'm thinking I might want to outline the cloud in the pink and then fill it in the purple. So I'm going to leave the cloud for the time being. But if you are just doing your regular fills and stuff and you're like, well, I only wanted lights and I ran out of lights, I'll send you some more. It's not a thing. Honestly, it's not a thing. I'm happy to send you some more. If this is your first project and you're learning how to do this and and colors worked out differently for you than they are for me and you feel like you don't have enough or you wanted more of a certain thing, just tell me. I'll just put it in an envelope and send it to you. And it's it's not a thing. Uh, it's real important, you know, that you you if this is one of your early projects, it's really important that you enjoy it and that you that you feel like you're successful, that what you made, something that you love, that's what really matters. You know, I'm still not, as I do this, I do like the white outlining, and we're going to do a little bit of filling the trees and um, the sky in a minute, um, possibly the cloud too, but I'm still not sure that I don't want to do more with the outlining of the rabbit. I'm still not sure. For me, you know, because I always do my own patterns, right, um, I'm constantly thinking about, I'm constantly rethinking about whether I want it like that or I want something completely different. And that's part of the fun of this craft. It might be that I want a yellow rabbit or an orange rabbit, and then I'm gonna have to go cut up a t-shirt or uh, a plastic bag or, or go into my stash of wool or leftover noodles or whatever. It might be that I want a color that just is not present in the kit. And then you gotta go find the color. And that is the craft. This is the thrift craft, right? We're making rag rugs here. And you see, I'm making twists and turns as I go. I'm doing a lot of that technique that we talked about where you can't see it, but my hand is underneath making turns because I want to stop and start in strategic places. I don't want to be a ding dong. I don't want to have weird um, extra loops and things overlapping. I want to, if I want to stop right here, right, which I did so that this line is good and strong, then I better stop right there and cut right there, right? I don't want to twist and then have it go one way or the other. I want this whole line to be one good clean sweep, right? So that's practice too. And it's also personal style. The next person might say, screw it. I don't care. I don't care if they're, if it's if my line is interrupted. Do you think I'm worried about that? Hey, if you're not worried about it, you don't have to stop, right? Just keep going, right? Maybe you work a bit more in a more bohemian style than I do. Maybe I'm right in the middle. Maybe I'm more technical than I think I am, or maybe I'm more OCD than I think I am. It doesn't matter, right? What matters is that so far I like the way this looks and I, I don't want to pull anything out. I like it. I like it. I feel good about it and I want to keep going. Make sure that you feel good about yours and that you want to keep going. That's the only thing that matters. It might be that we see like a rash of spring hops, you know, in the next days. 
um, or the next weeks um, in our Facebook page and people hooking them in different ways. And, and maybe some of them it's like, oh, I like yours better, uh, you know, to whoever. And um, yeah, sometimes that can happen. But that happens to me all the time, particularly with my own patterns. If I see someone like Barbara Cornish hooking one of my patterns and, I, and I'm hooking it already myself, I think, ah, oh, come on, how can that be that good? How can that be that? That's my own pattern and I can't hook it that good, right? We always have, we just have this, I think to different degrees, but I know I'm always someone who, I think there's a better table. I think there's a better parking spot. I, th I like what she's wearing better than what I've got. Where'd you get that? I like that better. You know, I, I'm always, it's not like I am covetous, but I always think other people just have nice things and do better work. And I just, that's just, that's just built into me, right? It doesn't slow me down or stop me from having fun, but we can't compare the stuff that we're doing to the stuff that other people are doing. Let's, let's pause for one second here, right? You see how that last loop brought me right to the tree line? Well, now I have the choice. Do I want to cut it, that last loop? Do I want to bring up the loop and cut the tail? Or do I want to cut it underneath, right? Because I don't want to cut the loop. I feel like it'll fall a little bit short. I'm going to bring up, okay, I brought up the loop and then I cut one there and I think that was a, a good solution. Sorry, it's that, sorry, where am I? Ho, ho. There we go. It's this this loop right here. And it made a little extra dollop, right? And that might drive me crazy. I might pull out that one little tail later. We'll see. We'll see if it drives me crazy or not. I got my ghostly tree shapes in there. I like that. Oh, I like that very much. All right, hang on. I like that very much. Now I'm thinking about that cloud and I want the cloud to be this color. And remember how I have the extra pink for um, the nose and the ear? There's more pink than I can use. I think I'm going to outline that cloud in pink. Might be that I blow through all my pink. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. I think I'll still have enough for the nose and ears because I want that purple cloud. But because my theme up here is kind of lighter outline, um, lighter outline, darker uh, center, then I want the light, lighter outline also on the cloud with the darker center. So I'm just starting wherever on the cloud because the cloud is a really lumpy shape, right? That was a reference to Adventure Time, uh, that the, the TV show, right? Danny probably knows that one. Um, you start anywhere on the cloud because it is lumpy. Don't start on a curve. Start in one of the dips, but you pick. It doesn't make any difference because it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster going around the edge of the cloud. Uh, directional hooking really isn't a thing with a cloud. You just try to keep your loops facing in a way that makes sense. It doesn't look overly sloppy and confusing, but sometimes we see landscapes, particularly Canadian landscapes, specifically Dion Fitzpatrick landscapes with crazy clouds in the sky, right? And they look awesome. So how, however persnickety you find yourself hooking your clouds, just remember, and I'm doing a turn here. I'm turning underneath because I'm at it kind of a junction. Let me come a little bit closer. Sorry, I didn't realize you're so far away again. Um, I'm going to need to make a turn because I'm changing direction here. Oh boy, Joss is screaming at the top of her lungs. Hope she's not screaming at Teddy. Sometimes Teddy is a bit of a jerk, you know, younger sister and all that with Joss, but um, sometimes she super overreacts. I guess that's being a female. Can't imagine where she learned that. I don't know if you can hear that. She's going out of her mind. It's not uh, It's not out of the ordinary, though. I think it's also the age, you know. We are hitting, we are hitting that puberty time. Hmm. Debating if I should get involved. Uh, their dad is right there. He's, uh, you know, he's also autistic, so um, he's usually very, very calm. And sometimes with Joss, um, we don't need another, we don't need a calm person around. We need a person who's a bit uh, e equal, equal to getting into the fray. But let's see what happens. I can't imagine what happened. I heard it's dropped all over the floor. I'm hoping it's not something that's broken. Oh dear. Yeah, sometimes Teddy says the wrong thing or is a jerk on purpose, but he doesn't expect to get the really huge reaction. 
that's kind of a Mars, Venus, man, woman thing sometimes, I think, with a lot of relationships. Um, I don't know if, if anybody can relate to this, but I know I, historically, and also for me in this relationship, sometimes I overreact in such a big way that the other person is kind of deer in the headlights because it makes no sense. There's no, like, there's no grounding in reality the way that I respond sometimes. And uh, yeah, definitely the hormone patch helps with that, but that is also kind of built, kind of built in. And um, Teddy's a little bit like that. He's a little bit deer in the headlight sometimes when Joss uh, flips or flipper because he's it's so um, it's so illogical and irrational that being an autistic kid himself, um, he just doesn't he doesn't understand why that could happen. It doesn't seem like the expected outcome. And um, yeah. That's Joss, man, and that's also just being, I think, a female, right? We get a little leeway, particularly when you're that age. And I think I'm good, right? I think I've got one more strip in me here, so I think I'm going to meet my goal of getting the cloud done. Yeah, there we go. And still getting the edge of this finished. I'll be curious to hear what y'all are doing for the Easter weekend. And... Um, I know a lot of us are, are regular friends on Facebook, not just in the Facebook group, but uh, regular friends on Facebook. And um, I always like to see people's pictures, even if I don't always have time to comment. Sometimes I'm just in bed late at night and I go through the Facebook and I look at people's pictures and I try to uh, give things the love because I am always happy to see other people's stuff. Sometimes I don't have time to comment, but I just love, I love seeing what everybody's up to, you know all connected. Now I'm coming up to a loop. I don't know if you can tell in the middle here that is, it's not going to fit, but when I cut it, perfect, perfect puffy cloud. There we go. I like that a lot. Oh, I like that a lot. I'm going to, this is how much of the pinks I have left after I did the cloud. So that's definitely enough. I don't think I'm going to put pinks in the center of the ear because the ears are just too skinny. If I was going to, I'd probably cut them in half, even this number five into like an, a piece of angel hair pasta right? So I will do a little pink nose and there's, there's definitely enough to do one loop for the pink nose. I've got, um, even after do, doing the cloud, I have got two and a half full pieces left over. So I'm happy with that. You know what I think I feel like doing now is filling in the cloud. And this is where we get to that conversation about, um, one of the benefits of this craft is that whatever color you're feeling, and man, I'm always feeling this purple pop color from Dharma. Um, whatever color you're feeling, it's just nice to do it. Isn't that the thing? For me, that's the thing about knitting that that makes me not knit. Is like, y there's so many miles between the casting on and the getting started with a project, even if it's a scarf, to get to the color change or the part that you're really looking forward to. It seems like, you know, it's midnight, it's 1230, it's one o'clock, and you're like still not at the color. And you're thinking, come on, I just want to see the color happening. It'll be so satisfying when the color changes. And sometimes it just takes so long. Um, that's not the case with this craft, because you can do, you can fill in whatever you want, work whatever part you want, at whatever time you want, there's no consequence to the chronology of filling in your piece. That's one of the benefits of it. So if you keep looking at that purple, you might as well just use it, right? You might as well just go for it right now. Oh, are you knitting, Olivia? See, I'm always jealous of knitters because I haven't put it, I never put the time in. I put some time in and I figured out how to make some infinity cows, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I never put enough time in to be able to be the kind of knitter that I have always been, that kind of a sewer, like I always sewed my own patterns and then I you know I went to school for um, theater costuming and stuff and I've always been the kind of sewer that if I'm sewing something and I think yeah I need a little bit more flair in the skirt or I want to take it in a little bit more um, you know at the waist I can just do that on a dime and I am confident I know just what I'm doing but I never got to that place with knitting where I could be like all right well I, I want to do a color change here here comes a snowflake or let's do let's do a little fair aisle shake up or whatever I never got that good and I know it would, would have just been more time just needing the more time but um I guess like it's like um it's like a it's like a weird kind of a race when things like that happen when you're learning something new it's like will I figure out how to learn it to the extent where I love it enough that I'll keep doing it 
before my patience runs out. You know what I mean? Um, and that's the same for this craft too. That's why I try to do so much with online videos and I try to be there online and I try to, you know, emphasize the community part that we can all do many hands and, uh, you know, be the village that, that births the new hookers because, um, yeah, I hate thinking that people will run out of stamina, sense of humor, patience with this craft before they get to a place where they feel confident enough to say, yeah, no, I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing it this way. And that's good enough. And that looks great. And let's keep going. Um, cause it is, it's a weird, there's a weird, weird trial when you start anything new, isn't there? And, uh, yeah, I mean, for some people, everything captivates you. And I'm definitely one of those people. If I, if I didn't have uh, ribbon candy hooking and I was, you know, if I didn't have this as a business, I probably would be doing a lot more knitting and I would have spent a lot more time figuring it out. But business keeps me busy, thank God, and thank you. Um, and so I don't. And I do love this so much. I just love this so much. You know, I found um, I found this girl last night. Um, I was I was searching for stuff and I found this little pair of embroidered earrings. And God, I just loved them so much. I ordered them and I'll wear them. Uh, as soon as they come, I'll show you and I'll put a link to her um, Etsy store. But I got talking to her and she just, she does the cutest stuff. She does tiny scale embroidery stuff and a bunch of other really whimsical stuff. And I told her about Magpie Times because, you know, I don't do a lot of embroidery, right? I, do, I still am st strong, heavy into the rug making and I do a little bit of quilting and other stuff, but I'm always thinking about the brand because it's my job. And I'm always looking at other people who do other things textile and fiber crafts because I I know how to do them and I love them um it's just you know I, there's not time for everything so I'm always peeking around and I got into a conversation with her about how she got into it just a little bit we were going I like to do recorded uh voicemail if you're friends with me on Facebook and you send me a message I like I usually send a voice message back because if I do sausage fingers and try to type back to and make 20 mistakes I'm liable to break the phone so I like to do the voicemail so we sent each other a few messages and it was just great learning about someone else and hearing about her projects and um yeah she's gonna send me an idea for something for a future magpie that has to do with the kind of embroidery that she does and i thought excellent excellent let's learn something new you know it's just all of it crosses over and um i just feel like the more stuff that gets put in front of you the more the more things right it's a numbers game uh the more th the more chance that you'll find more things that you like that are kin to rug making techniques that you might be able to incorporate into your hook drugs. If like me, you can't stop and you're just going to always rug hook, but you're thinking, well, I could rug hook with a little bit of embroidery in there, or I could rug hook with a little bit of needle felting in there or whatever, you know? So I'm just filling in my cloud now and I am really enjoying, let me bring a little bit closer to where I am here. So, while we're going strong with this, I'm just doing a fill and there's nothing new to say other than keep going, keep going, keep going, right? No matter where you are in it, I'm pulling up loops and they're still twisting. That's okay. I, I got a lot of twisty loops right here too, because I'm, I'm not doing echo and I'm not doing marble cake and I'm not doing a straight shot. I'm just doing a fill. And this, if you can see the way my loops are coming up for uh, the cloud, this is higgledy piggledy style. They're coming up every which way. And when you do accidental um, twisting, it comes up the same way. I'm not actually twisting, but I am pulling them up in all different directions. And yeah, it, it's a bit of a chaotic fill, but that's what I want to do here. And I do a little bit of packing when I get involved in this kind of thing too, because I work myself into corners and I realize just one more loop needs to fit somewhere and it's, it, uh, you know, I was going to say an expression I don't want to say with the oncologist coming up, but I'm danged if I'm not going to get that last loop in there. And I just did just a little bit more of a fill in here. Right. So I made another decision um, because we're together for a long time today. We're working on this project. Um, I made another decision about our Facebook group, and I hope that you all understand um, this one. So I decided to pull the plug on Madcap Monday. And I have a few reasons uh, for making that decision. And I think they're all very strong. Jocelyn is still off on a bender. Um, 
I think they're all good reasons. The main, okay, the main reason I'm going to be honest is because I trigger, it triggers me a lot. Um, it's very hard for me to police Mad Cat Monday, in case you don't know, in our Facebook group, every Monday so far since I've had the group, I have allowed anybody to advertise their own business, their own brand, their sales, their blogs, their videos, everything. And that's been every Monday. I don't mean one, one Monday a month. I mean every Monday. So I get triggered because once in a while I feel like it's too much. Like it's too much of other brands. Like other brands are able to use the page that I built, right? Two breakdowns in, a lot of insanity, craziness, lost time with my family, expense, everything, right? The horrors of building a business. Love the business, but it wasn't easy. I feel like sometimes other people are using the page that I built more than I'm using it. And I feel that feeling of being used sometimes that um, I always want to advertise other brands. I always want to celebrate other brands. I always want to see you hooking lots of other brands. I always want to say who those brands are and attribute things properly. But I don't want anybody using the page that I built that's for ribbon, that this ribbon candy hookings page as a vehicle to build your own brand, right? That's a little bit different. That's a little bit different because when I built that page, right, I, I wasn't able to post on other pages. In fact, I was shut out from just about every other group because I overstepped it too many times. What's going on up there? Oh, my sister's just refusing to clean her room. Okay. <clears throat> because she doesn't know how to clean her room anyways. Okay, you know I'm live, right? So yeah, be careful. Yeah, I, I do. Okay. So another guest appearance. Another guest appearance. Okay, here he comes. Here he comes. Okay, give us the scoop. What's good? That's the face. Mm -hmm. So she's up there and what Papa asked her to clean her room? Yeah, and then now she's refusing to because apparently he's being quote unquote mean. Okay. What she's just what she's just trying to get her to clean her room and she's refusing. <clears throat> yeah. So you know. I guess maybe we should just wait till there's like some rats or cockroaches walking around in there. Yeah, hold up. Oh, you've got your kilt on. Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Well, are there your underpants on? Because you're like kind of, of course, on camera. Of okay. Course. Okay, so hang on. Oh wow, 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 wow. Teddy, it actually looks amazing. Oh, no, thank you. Oh my God, Teddy. Can you lift up your shirt a little bit? No, not not your belly. Like, sh you can cover your belly. Let me see. What's this? What's happening on this side? Actually, looks quite good. Um. What's that? Come here. Let me see what that is. Come, uh, come here. It's kind of. Is it too tight in the waist? No, it's not. It's good. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah, it's kind of uh like dad's jeans where it's, it's kind of like complicated like uh, dad's, or like. Yeah, uh, come over uh, here. Let me see what that buckle is. Come yeah, here. Yeah, like a dad's. It's kind of like a dad's jeans mixed with. I see. I see. Yeah, mixed with a skirt. So. It, it feels a little bit tight in the waist. Oh, I see. It does Velcro, so it could be looser if you wanted it to be looser. Yeah, it's just... I when, see. When I this have, stays like this. Yeah, when I have it looser, it just falls off a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what's it? What's going on over here? Oh, I see. I see. Some of this... Okay, I see. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, Teddy, it looks very good. I want to be right, sure thanks. it's the right size, because we could get a different size. Oh, it's the right size. Uh, They don't have sizes. You could just adjust it. Well, they do have sizes. Oh, they do? Yeah. Hmm. I could get it one size up. Yeah, it, it's cool. It's okay. Here, stand over there. Let me see if I can all get right. it. Stand over there. Sorry. Yeah. We're, we're kind of moving, so we have all our stuff here. Yeah, we can manage it right here. It's a kilt. It's a solid kilt, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks quite nice on you, Ted. It does. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can see brown. That's yeah. Pretty good. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Oh, we'll all see right. how it goes. Well, we have my mom. Okay. Bye, sweetie. All right, we'll see how that goes. Whew, all right. Um, if I may post what I've just finished, challenged myself with intarsia, I'm seriously thinking it could turn into a rug pattern. Ooh, oh, Olivia, please post, please post. Absolutely, we are super interested in that. Deja vu reminds you of your son and daughter. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it looks okay. We'll let it, we're going to let it go for a minute. We're going to see how it goes. We're not going to wear it to school, that's for sure, because we don't need to be bullied any more than we are. But we will see how it goes. I get that a lot of guys are, um, you, know, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, we'll let that be. I'm sure we all have different feelings. 
you know, I'm not a huge feminist. Um, I'm also, I'm not a huge like rock the boat person either. I'm pretty traditional, but um, I, I'm liberal, liberal in a lot of ways. And certainly the way that he dresses is his business. The best I can do is steer him away from situations where he might get bullied more than he needs to at this point in his life because that could change the trajectory of his life and how he feels about himself. And that's all I'm thinking of. I don't care. Um, I don't care about his fashion choices. I just care that uh, we're not asking for trouble, you know. We'll see how it goes. So um, what were you talking about? Okay, Madcap Monday. So... Um, <laughs> Oh, thanks, Dave. I'll tell him you said that. It, it it does it does look surprisingly good. And there was a nice selection of ones to choose from. I, I shopped on Amazon because it's just it's easier than exiting the house. And if they're bringing stuff anyway, they might as well bring that too, right? Save the gas and all that. So thanks, Dave. Um, Dave, I have to check with you, by the way. We'll have to figure it out because I, I have firm dates that I'm going to be up your way when I come to uh, Niagara on the lake and all that. Um, so yeah, we got to figure that out. Cause I got to have that walking tour that you've always promised me. I hope that's still on offer. Want to see that graffiti and all that stuff. So Madcap Monday, I decided to pull the plug cause I just felt like, um, it was really triggering me to see more people selling stuff on my page than me. Um, and I don't think of it as my page, but you know what I mean? It was a bit, it was a bit triggering. Um, I love to talk about other brands. I love, and, and I want people to always say, if they're working on a pattern, I don't care if it's my pattern or not. You have to say whose pattern you're working on. I'm curious too. I love buying other people's patterns, but it's just the whole advertising thing was starting to get on my nerves a lot. I'll probably end up doing, you know, I still talk about every other brand on cocktail time, coffee time, through the week. You know, I, I still will continually promote other brands. Um, but I just felt like there was a little bit of abuse to Mad Cat Monday and I was playing a weird game of whack-a-mole a little bit and I just don't have the time or the patience. Um, and again, just like feeling negative about it was not working. So that was part of the motivation in deciding to do, let's do like a once a month, like full blast bizarre day where there's just an extra show and all I talk about are other brands and some great patterns and sales and special products and new products that other brands are doing. Let's centralize it to one day because the thing about Madcap Monday was that as soon as Monday's over, I'm still seeing the same posts Tuesday, Wednesday, as other people find them, it brings them to the top again. So although we're only supposed to be seeing sales posts on Monday, we're seeing them seven days a week, right? And that gets on my nerves too. I also, in a more practical and less selfish way, noticed that um, the activity on the page was way, way, way down on Mondays. And I had gotten the feedback from quite a few people already that they don't really go to the page on Monday because it's all selling posts. So the whole point with the page, you know, th th Facebook is not monetized, but the whole point with the page is to have activity all the time. If we're having the least activity on Monday, it's got to be because it's Madcap Monday and the content is different than the other days of the week. So I said, you know what, I'm all done. Let's just pull the plug on it. I will figure out more ways to celebrate the other brands that are out there, who I love, right? Who I not, I don't feel I'm in competition with. I just feel that we're all in it, right? If we all are, it, all these different people with brands have to advertise their own brands and, and build, build their own brand, right? Yes, Teddy Bear. Hey, Denise in Maryland, great to see you. Hey, Ted, what's up? Excellent. All right, so I got that cloud in. You might not like that cloud, and if you don't, you could do a white cloud, right? Or you could do a cloud with one of these colors. I really like the cloud. I'm leaving it for the moment. You know what I'm going to do next? Um, I think I'm going to sort out this guy because I've got these two colors for this guy, and I feel like they're pretty close in color, right? It's a little bit dark here. I think I'm going to do this guy the same way that I've done the background, right? With kind of hit or miss mix of colors. I'm going to mix these colors in this guy and I'm going to blend them. And that might mean that with this busyness, oh, thanks. I like, I like the purple too. Um, I'm wondering if I should have put a little bit of pink into it, like more patterned. It might be that I do that in the end. We'll have to see how it goes. 
with this background, the whole background of the green is going to be this hit or miss green, right? Which is unstable because it's a, what the British call mizzy mazzy, right? It's all mixed colors. Mizzy so mizzy mazzy. And the sky is going to be mizzy mazzy too because I'm blending a dark and a light. Now, this, I'm just thinking forward. Mizzy mazzy background and the whole hillside, mizzy mazzy behind the trees in the sky, solid cloud, solid bunny. I might have to rethink, rethink the solidness. It might be, I don't know yet, I don't have enough information, but it might be Mizzy Mazzy's unstable, right? It's very busy and staticky, it's unstable. So an unstable base, an unstable sky, I might need a few points that are fixed points that are a bit more solid, or I might not. I don't have enough information yet. But the one thing I'm worried about so far, I like the purple cloud, but I'm just afraid I'm not going to get enough of this pink into the party. That's what I'm the most afraid of. Because now where do I have to put the pink? I could put it in the border. But I want I want the pink to appear somewhere besides as just the outline. That's what made me think maybe I should have put a little on the inside. But I don't want all of it, I don't think, to be unstable. Let's pull out a few blues and do some filler fillers in of the blues. So if you have a great idea about how I can continue to advertise other brands but not have it be a weekly uh, fiasco, please let me know because I love um, I love promoting other brands, right? I, I really do. I'm just not happy with the way things are going on Mondays. Hey, buddy. Hey, sorry. Third guest appearance. Third guest appearance. Dave said he loves the kilt and he thinks it looks oh, awesome. thank you. There he is. Third guest appearance. Third guest appearance. Looks awesome. Mm -hmm. looks awesome and it's got some okay watch the legs it's got some cargo pockets and such yeah yeah see that's good you can put your phone right in there right yeah nice you know what we have to do because this arrived folded we're, I, I either have to iron it or we have to put it on a hanger put it in the bathroom to steam i like how it's very flat in the front that's kind of handy yep watch it watch it yeah. oh you have your underpants on All of right. course why, why wouldn't i i don't know i don't know i i thought you were maybe more scottish than you are we're not Scottish at all. We're a little bit Irish. Uh, I'm yeah. just I'm making a stupid joke because um, it's typical for guys not to have anything on. on well, let's leave that alone. Let's let's yeah, move on. That's let's weird. let's that's move weird. on. Yeah. All right. So I'm in the sky now. Oh, you're right. You're right. The bunny ears. I could do the bunny ears with the pink after all. You're right. It needs to be some. I feel that it needs to. Be, oh, you know where it could be. Oh, I could put a little bit here and there like dit dots in the grass. Now I've packed so tightly that I don't know if I can, but what if I put a little pink and purple? Let's see if I can fit any in, like little flowers. I wouldn't do, I would just do like, let's see. Let me see. I could even do them. Oh, wait a minute. You're not there with me, are you? Oh, no, you're there with me. Ooh, oh, uh-oh. I could even do them a little bit three-dimensional. Look at that. And then I have the tail sticking up a little bit. Oh, snappers. I don't know, I might I might like that. I have packed viciously though. So I might need to rethink. You, you, met, you saw me doing all these crazy fills, right? This is a maybe. Hang on, this is a maybe. Make the tail a little bit bigger. Oh, snappers. I mean, I just started evolving the idea a little bit, right? There's one kind of ill-placed one here. We don't know if it's ill-placed until the bunny ears are in. And there's one right here with the tails kind of sticking up. That's a maybe. Hmm, that's a maybe. I kind of like that. Honestly, I could prod the tail. Absolutely. I could prod the tail with white. Okay. I just, I almost yelled that, but that was a ve very good. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I got more in me here. I got more in me. All right. Let's see. Because see, I knew this was going to be fun on the Thursday before Easter. Um, I'm in a pretty good place with my orders, right? I knew it was going to be fun to just sit together and work on stuff like this and to brainstorm together. And of course it is. It always is fun when we get together. We should just do this more often. 
when I don't have to do commentary, right? We can just talk and brainstorm ideas like this. Thank you so much for those incredible ideas. I'm definitely prodding the tail and I'm going to prod the tail with the, with this white and I'm going to do some really high um, ends on it too. And you know what, if you've got like roving or whatever, and you'd rather do like, oh, I have it in my head to do like a real cotton tail with like roving or lamb's curls or whatever. Um, yeah, do it. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to do all choppy kind of proddy with these number five strips because that's also possible. You know, you could have a lot of your grass just sticking up some tall pieces sticking up. I didn't, I did like the manicured thing, right? But you don't have to, you do it just the way you want it. I'm working this guy a little bit here. I might bring you back down here. Teddy's upstairs for a minute, so he's not going to give us another fashion show. Um, I'm just thinking now, because this is a very small area in here. I'll try it with the second color. I, I don't want the background to become confusing. It's just debating if I should stick with one color. Then I thought if I stick with one color, I might back myself into a corner where I have to do dark like at the horizon line and then light higher up. Let me see if I can truly keep going with the um, hit or miss blues without having a catastrophe. Let's see. And you know, I'm realizing some of my tails and stuff are a little bit low. So sometimes you see me, for beginners, sometimes you see me with my fingernails digging some pieces out, doing a little bit of excavating. And yeah, that's normal. I think, I think um, a lot of people do that. See it. If the more of a packer you are, the more excavating you end up doing. Oh, here comes Joss. I hear her on the stairs. Uh oh, she's gonna she's gonna try to corral me to get me on her side. Hey Joss. You have to return my body to my thing. I really like it. Yeah, we want a better one. Aww, so comfy. It's better everything. No, let's go get a proper one. Cause that one okay, so Joss got a Oh boy, look who it is. Look who it is. Joss got a, um, okay, wait a minute. Do you have pants on? No. You don't have pants. Get off the camera. You don't have no. any pants on. What is it with these kids, right? You, you do have cute little legs. What was that? What is Ribbon. this? Ribbon. Okay. I love you, honey. Go away for a little while. So can No, we're going to get a nice one. So we've ordered two body pillows, and the first one was a piece of garbage. And the second one's amazing. Yeah. Why? It, it's basically it's basically a sack of cotton balls that are not connected to each other. You can't even call call that thing a pillow, because there's nothing inside of it but a sack of cotton balls that are about to become more and more clumpy and uncomfortable. You can't even put your head on that thing. You're gonna get like dimples. I used it this morning, and it was really. All right, fine, keep it. Yes. I'm not buying another one next month. Okay. It, that's a piece of garbage, and I'm happy to buy you a better one. And I'm not, I'm not buying another one next month when you, when you realize it's a piece of garbage. Uh, where, where is it? I don't know. Ask Papa. I had him pack it up. He probably put it in the car. I was gonna return it. Okay. I'm so sick of conversations about body pillows. Hey, if you like it, just have it. But it is not comfortable, and I don't want to hear about it. I touched it. It was it was like a sack of cotton balls. You should just get a sack of cotton balls from CVS and just put put your head on it. Hmm. It's not amazing. It's a piece of garbage, but whatever. You can tell she's not in the mood, right? She's fighting upstairs. She's gonna fight with me, so just keep the damn thing. All right, there we go. I'm liking the way the. Yep. You see how there's a little bit of two blues in the sky? I think that is. I think that's working great, actually. Ooh, I think it's working great. All right, let's keep going. Gosh, you know, we've only, we haven't done a ton, right? It takes time and my mouth's been running, but I love the way it's coming out, I have to say. All right, let's do a little more blue over here. So now I'm over here and I'm wondering where I can next go um, that makes sense, I think here, where I can fit another tail. Let's go here. I don't want to make it too crowded and packed. Yeah, let's go here. There we go. Yeah, so I'm trying to think about um, a way to celebrate other uh, brands because I do, I do care a lot that everyone's doing well, and I do. I'm not in scarcity mode mentally. I just 
I feel like I've worked really, really hard to build this brand and I've made a lot of sacrifices and it's been expensive and it killed my credit, you know, and it, I'm probably still uh, limping along and I am, I am still limping along, right? I'm, I'm still um, always borderline okay and not okay and it's pretty good to pay the bills or not so good this month to pay the bills and, you know, and I just feel like um, I, I can't, um, I can't have other brands completely, uh, I can't completely carry other brands on my page. I, I feel like it's not fair and um and it'll it'll kill my brand and then there won't be a store or a brand to talk about because i'll be working at you know as a waitress or something so um you know but i did write to a few of the people who reliably post um on mad cat mondays and said you know what if you want so so that it's not confusing to define um, you are welcome to put some stuff, particularly like my friend Colleen with Beach Nut Studio. Um, thank you. Um, and Kelly Smith, right? They have always posted. They've always been there. They've always respected the rules and been respectful um, about like the friendships that we've built as well as the concept of Mad Cat Monday. So, um, you know, I said to both of them and Diane with the velvet, right? I said, if you want to put anything into ribbon candy hooking, you are super, super welcome. Doesn't have to even be a an exclusive contract. If you just want more exposure, you want to put your stuff in ribbon candy hooking too into the store. I'm very happy to do that, right? Like, I, I don't want people to be punished when they've been following the rules all along and everything's worked great. Um, I think that's that's perfect. So um, all of those three people I just mentioned said, yeah, let's do that. That's a good solution. And until I think of a way to have a really formal and official way of celebrating other brands and bringing um, new products, sales, all that stuff, classes, stuff that other brands are doing, until I think of a way to do that in a more contained and tidy manner, I can't just have it blast in on the Facebook page every day. I wake up to that and it just it makes me so depressed because it's like, God, are any of my posts, I'm killing myself over here, are any of my posts um, there? <laughs> So, yeah, so that's going to be a little change that you'll notice, but I don't think it'll be a bad change. And like I said, I really want to see the numbers up on Mondays for people using the page. There's only seven days in a week. If on one day there's like only a very few people using the page, that means something's going wrong. And, you know, I need to I need to think about that. So we'll see if I'm wrong about it. I'll say I'm wrong and I'll reinstate it, you know. But I thought, let's give this a try and let's see if we can get our, our Monday numbers up. So I'm working myself into a little corner here and I'm realizing that with the blues, we only have two blues. Remember with the greens, there was lots of greens. So I had lots to choose from. With the blues, I'm kind of alternating. So while it's still a hit or miss sky, so far this is the light blue here and here, right? It's going to be more patchy in the sky because there's only two blues. So... Uh, and I'm fine with that. I don't need, I don't, this is very busy because there's many. This is going to be less busy in the sky. I think that's probably a good thing. Variety, right? You want some variety. Let's see. I'm just coming over here because I just, I feel like it. I want to contour this side. It's great contrast between this blue and the white. I really like that. Really like that. Yeah, I do, Olivia. I have to prioritize. It's really hard uh, because we are hoping to move and um, partly because of the school system and, you know, with Teddy going into middle school, we are hoping to move. So I've been um, really reluctant to bring, uh, I need, I need help. He, I, I need help with the brand. I need someone to like work with me and I want to hire somebody. And I want, I want that person to stay with me, you know, for as long as possible. I don't want to have any more fooling around with people in and out of the door. So, um, you know, I'm reluctant to do that until I know what we're doing in the near future. But as soon as we do know what we're near, doing in the near future, I want to bring somebody on board who I really trust, who is not going to buffoon it or let me down, um, you know. So, um, and when that happens, I'll be able to focus more on other stuff because I really want, I, I really want to train somebody who I trust to stay, to stay with me, um, to do like the stuff that 
that I don't need to do, right? It's not like, oh, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the queen. But um, I feel like the stuff that at this point with the business that I should be doing is stuff like this, have, being live, teaching, working on book projects, um, doing stuff that, that I uniquely do. And if I could get help with stuff like putting orders together and tracing patterns, dyeing wool, it's still super creative, but I don't necessarily have to do that. Um, if I could, you know, since I have so little time in the day and I'm getting tired, um, if I could just have help with stuff that it's like, okay, here's, here's the color card. Here's the recipes. Can you do this? Can you trace out these, these 12 patterns need to ship today? Can you trace these out for me? It's still super creative work. Um, but I really need somebody who can be with me, like wherever I'm working, whether it's my studio or at home. Cause I had, what was her name? That super, super nice girl. I liked having her for a while. She was with me for a few months, but uh, she was a stay at home mom. Um, and I had to keep running stuff back and forth from the studio to her house, which was over half an hour away. And if I forgot something, I had to go back and get it. Um, and that was hard. So I really felt like I needed somebody with me in the studio. And I still feel like that, but I'm hardly in the studio anymore because now things have gotten busier with Teddy being at the mainstream school instead of at the autism school. Um, you know, I'm picking them up at two different times of the day and doing a lot of shuttling around and driving Miss Daisy and all of that stuff. So um, my schedule has changed a little bit, but I really need somebody in the same room with me so I can say, oh crap, look what I forgot. Can you do this right here? It's in my hand. Can you do it right now? Because describing stuff and shuttling more stuff around and having more driving errands it isn't helping. So I need to do that. And the thing is, once everything is settled, I really want someone with me who might want to do creative work too, right? Like, why not? This is a creative business. I would love to have someone working with me who's like, I love working on your designs, but wait a minute. Um, I have some ideas. What if we did this for next month? And what if I did some designing and got paid accordingly? I would love that. I would absolutely love that. I would love to be with someone who had creative ideas too and wanted to do the creative part of it with me too. Like that would be, you know, bonus. So um, it's not like I just want a drone or something. But um, yeah, so I have to see how that goes. Until I can get that balance in place and find, get settled, find the right person and all that stuff, um, it's hard to prioritize, you know. Um, but right now I feel like things are going pretty well. Things went really well with the first magpie. People are still ordering them like crazy. Um, Judy got a good handle on the electronic part of it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm slotting people into place for features in the second one. I'm getting really good feedback on the way the first issue looked and felt and the content and everything. Proper, proper magazine. Um, yeah, so it's all coming together, but man, I still need some help. Um, um. Madison, um, I was trying to remember, I was trying to remember the name. It's Madison, right? It's like having a brick and mortar store and letting someone post up and not pay rent. Exactly. I think you're more than generous. Oh, thank you so much. I hope I am. I hope I am. I, I always second guess. Is this your fourth, fourth camera? Mm -hmm. fourth camera. Okay. I just came down here cause I, a while back, I want to say two or three, or I want to say one or two months ago in yeah. science class, I learned that if you put a penny in a Ziploc bag, and put something made of steel or cop like if you put something copper like a penny in a ziploc bag yeah. with some with another like material like copper but that's like not like zinc or something yeah or... like steel or something okay yeah then the um or it has to be a really dirty penny but then the uh mo dirty penny there must be a rock band named dirty penny sorry go on but if you put that in a ziploc bag it the little particles of the uh the dirt of the penny actually comes off and goes on to other things but what else do you have to put in the bag with the penny in the metal or you just put two metals no you you just put one uh you just get on camera if you're talking you just put like one or two pennies and something steel and it'll work so i've uh been collecting not like a bag of water we're just talking about metal oh you need a bag of water and oh it's in water bag. it's in water yeah it's in yeah water. you left that part out i think oh yeah i think i okay. did i'm sorry yeah the, uh, so I needed a Ziploc bag. Yeah. All right. You're standing in front of the craft cupboard where nobody ever shuts the door or organizes. Yeah. Whatever. We Whatever. We really need to organize this when we uh, move. Do we? Or do we just need to throw it all in the trash? 
Honestly, when, I mean, really, when was the last time we played a board game? Ugh. Hardly ever. Yeah. I, I mean, we play a few. We have some tried and trues, but, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. We, I should start playing board games with my friends, but the one thing is that they probably won't like it. Yeah, well, I would like to play board mm. games with you. Papa, oh. Papa's a definite board game guy. Sure, why not? All yeah. right. Yeah. Love you, Mom. I love you, too. Let's All right, bye, audience. Last yeah. last yeah. guest appearance. Yeah, unless you change your mind. Yeah, we'll All see. Right. We'll see how it goes. No, you haven't, honey. I love to see you, my son. He's such a good boy. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks, Melissa. Uh, so random, random thoughts. So you notice how I'm hooking here in the sky, and I'm coming right up to my skyline. So let's do what we did down here. I, I, I like doing the echo, and I was trying to get a feel for how it was looking. I love the way it's looking. But now it's dri kind of driving me crazy that I don't have, like, a hard line on the sky. Uh, for me, I need a shape right I, I need a shape and then as long as i have the skeleton of it there i it, like i'm comfortable but i need the shape so i'm at the point where i feel like i really need to zip across this line and get that sky in so you know what i'm going to do i was i was hooking as i pleased and as a result um, i hooked quite high so this is my highest point i don't want to un i don't want to take anything out right that's not like that's not one of my faves so I'm going to I'm going to feel this line with my hook. Remember when I was drawing it across and it shows us a straight line and get this tight and hold on. And I'm going to feel where this is, right? Let me go this way. And I want to let me go in this corner. I want to hook this line. So I'm drawing it across and that ends me right here and I'm kind of digging in here, right? There's my hole. So I know if I come shooting across here, I can do this line just like this, and I won't actually hit this stuff because I came pretty, pretty close to that. Came pretty close. So let's do that. And you know, it was for me a big emphasis on the bottom of having it be darker colors to outline, but on the top, I feel like I'd like to have lighter colors to outline. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go right across the line that I just pulled, and. I love this color. This is another straight, I think this is a straight color, a pretty straight color. This is, it's hard to see on the monitor, but it's a color, another Dharma color. Dharma really is my favorite uh, dye, dye brand. This is ice blue. It's very unusual. It's like a Wedgwood, but it has this, it's very, it's light. It's understated. It has this li l tiny, tiny, tiny amount of kind of lavender glow. It's not purple. It doesn't read as purple. It doesn't read as purplish blue or bluish purple, but it's there. It's kind of a glow, like an aura. It's one of these magic colors of which there's a handful for me. There's not a ton. Dharma does a lot of the magic colors for me. Um, ice blue is one of them. Tobacco brown is another one. There's just something about um, a few, just a few colors that there's nothing like them, and, there, and no other company does anything that's even kind of like them. Um, all companies have a few colors like that, but um, for me, Dharma has the best one. Purple Pop, right? This one is another one. It comes, it's so different the way that it dyes. Um, yeah, I love finding them. In, in um, the Pro Chem line, Imperial Blue is one of those. God, what a color that is. Really strong color. But again, it does it does unexpected stuff. And um, see how perfect that was? It's got me going right across here. And I, I left a long tail under there. I wanted to abort mission before I got into trouble with height. So just making sure, yep, I think this is all good. I continue to kind of cut my tails as I go because they confuse, they confuse my eye. It doesn't take much, apparently. So make sure I got the right tail. Come shooting across. I firmed up that line, right? So now I, I totally get where the sky is. I get it. And that's perfect. I like it. I mean, it's not perfect. Nothing I do is perfect. I kind of feel like with this one, I might want a really crazy border. I might, I'm probably going to want to put this in a picture frame because it's a small piece. And I probably want a crazy border. That's something I'll need to think about later. Now, under here, you can't tell, but I didn't finish this blue strand because I got nervous about the skyline and whether I was overshooting the height of it. And that's why I kind of stopped, dropped, and rolled around and stuck in that line, right? So I could define the shape of the sky and get my border 
secure. So now I'm returning to that little blue piece that I dropped off and I'm going to finish him up and I'm kind of doing an echo fill around here. These are the weird curvy shapes of the cloud. Got one more little tail maybe here. Maybe. Yep, there we go. Trim him a little bit. Yeah, I have to say I'm really I'm really happy with this so far. One of the things I'm happiest with is um well I like the hit or miss stuff but I'm loving I, I, I'm seeing them I think more than you are I've only done these two little flowers but so far I really like the flowers I really like the flowers you think like oh it's adding more busyness to um a background that's already busy but it's kind of not um it's kind of it's in a weird way stabilizing it because all of the colors of the hit or miss fall into the background and just these little guys with some height jump forward it's 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 funny it's having a weird effect on my eye i keep looking at it and every time i look at it i like it you know how sometimes you look at something too many times and you start to hate it it goes for people too it this is working the opposite way so i'm real happy with that i'm real happy with that and i think i want to put more colors into the background i think i want to put colors into the background that are not in this kit like maybe a little bit of yellow or orange or whatever um maybe even like navy or black i don't know but I'll know it. I'll know it when I'm finished. I'm gonna do a little bit more of the sky. Madison, your ten-year-old took over your YouTube account and changed the name. Oh God! Oh Diana, thank you. He is awesome. He is awesome. Yeah, the flowers are just—they came out fun. I mean, I'm gonna do more so you can see more. They—they they only have a little bit of height. They're not crazy. I wonder if I should do some purple, some purple pop flowers. Let's see. Oh, I just punched the camera. Let's do, let me see if I can fit in. See, this is when it's not good to pack because when you're a big packer like I am, um, it's like a do as I say, not as I do, right? Because I'm a big packer. It's hard to squeeze them in. Let me see if I can squeeze in one more. I want to see if I can squeeze in one of these. Of course, you can make your pieces thinner and squeeze them in that way. Let's see if I can put one right here. I don't want them all to go top to bottom either. I want to be thinking about that. Let's see if I can squeeze one here. This is a uh, dental hygienist time right here. I'm going to leave the tail up a little bit more. Yeah. Even though I pack, I'll, I'll show you as soon as my hand is away. Oh, wait, that's too far away. Yeah, I like that. I really like that. I am going to want to put more colors in because I'm not a big fan of matchy match. Oh, sorry, upside down. You see that purple pop one is in there now? Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm really loving it, but I am going to want to put more colors in the grass. You're going to like this better tomorrow. It's getting dark here in Connecticut. You're going to like this better when you see it in the light. And, and I feel like I need yellow. Uh, I don't use yellow is my least favorite color either yellow or orange I feel like I need a little bit in there let's do a little bit more on the sky here loving the flowers oh thank you I feel better hearing you're a packer too I can't help it but pack when I'm hooking maybe I'll get better as I go along ah uh, I think that too uh, um you know it, I don't oh I don't always pack it is a little bit of an OCD thing right it's I'm just that kind of a person. It's I, I always overdo everything. And if I see a little gap, it just, it drives me, it drives me nuts. And if I'm super mindful and tuned in about that one thing, like if I'm hooking away and I'm thinking, don't pack, don't pack, then I don't pack for a little while. But then as soon as I'm thinking like, oh God, is there another crosswords mystery on? And then I'm focused on that. Then I realize that I went back to packing. And I think it's, always going to be that way. I don't think I can like out train my subconscious. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rita and I am a packer. It, packing is one of the most common things that you can do. You know, it really is. Um, it just, and you know, to be fair to packers everywhere, um, when you're packing, right, which means if you're tuning in later, it means putting your loops too close together, right? And getting them really tight, really dense. Um, 
when you do a lot with packing, the loops end up standing up so nice next to each other because they've got so much support, right? This is like, this is, this is my treatise called In Defense of Packing. All the loops stand up so nice because they are supported so well on every side. And sometimes my thought, that's my thought process, whether I'm conscious of it or not. It's like, oh, you're, you're sinking and sagging a little bit. Let me give you some support by hooking, you know, uh, 14 uh, more loops in that square inch right around you, you know, and it's not really a good solution. And it, and you end up sometimes going too far with it. And, and then you really get all warped and um, too dense and all that stuff. But there are, I think the, the idea behind packing is to be thorough. And I think that's a good place to start. Just watch your technique, right? If, if you are packing a little bit and nothing really is happening, nothing is getting warped, nothing is getting literally bent out of shape, then, then I think you're good. I think you can, uh, by all means, carry on kind of thing. But um, if you see that there's like a physical change to the way the piece is looking um, because of your packing, then I think that's when you really have to um, treat it, right? And and rethink uh, your working your working method. And as I pack, right, it's it's probably hard to see me, but as I pack, I kind of push some pieces aside to accommodate one more loop. That's just that is the way of the packer. All right, and one more here. Oh, I'm really liking it. I really like the way the sky is coming out too, I have to say. It's nice and nice and tidy, nice and colorful. Let's do a little bit over here. And then I think I'm going to start thinking, of, let's just fill in this area here. So we do a little bit of everything. And then let's, let's be projecting forward to the trees. Now, I'm remembering you all have a darker green than I have. I didn't give myself that dark green. Um, I could quickly cut some. That might not be a bad idea because, yeah, for those of you who have the kit, you have a different, you have one more color than I have. So um, that dark value would be great in in the, um, whatever they are, bushes or trees, these round guys, right? So I'm kind of focused on that right now because I don't want them to look like a continuation of the grass. I want them to stand out like as their own mo a motif in their own right. Um, so I have to think about how I can make that happen. I also have that reddish, that dusty rose color, this color, and I haven't decided where to use that, but I don't really want to use it in the trees because it's quite like it's similar colors to the outline of the cloud. Uh, it's not the same pink, right? This is that pink. But I feel like it has potential. They look quite different on camera, but I feel like they're all rosy shades. I feel like it has potential to become confusing. I have to think about that. I have to run up again and make another pit stop. I've only had a couple sips of beer, but I'm telling you, it goes right through you. Let's see. Yeah, let me make a quick pit stop. I'm going to put the volume down so I don't have to worry about pe the peeing backstage thing. Let me put the volume down for a second, and I will be right back, everybody. Okay, I'm back. So I was just in the bathroom and I reached into my Nantucket basket to get a roll of toilet paper and guess what I found? 
slime, like seriously, as well, like in this color, as well as the open container of glue. It's a full gallon. It's still there. Oh, that child. Oh, that child's driving me to drink non-alcoholic beer. Um, if you're in Green Bay, oh, that is a good one, Catherine. You can probably be a packer. I know, uh, I know, I know my buddy Robin is right. When I was out um, in Wisconsin, I was staying with Kaz. Remember that trip? We went to the Fiber Festival. God, that was fun. Um, big fan. Packer fans are huge fans. I'm not a sports person at all, right? I, I mean, I'm lucky that I know, um, you know, uh, that the Red Sox play. I almost said basketball, but baseball. I know it's baseball, but um, Packers fans are big fans. You know, and I, that's really fun, too, because it, it seemed like out there, it seemed like it was kind of a family thing um, to be, you know, it was something to do together. I thought, that's really fun. We, I never, I never had that. Um, we moved a lot, so maybe that's why I never had that. But my dad was never a sports person, and he, he, he was definitely a reading his book in the living room with a cocktail person, not, not at all a sports person. But when he decided once in a while that he wanted to be a sports person and his team didn't win... It just wasn't, it wasn't a good atmosphere in the house, to say the least. It's not a good atmosphere. And then he would routinely, like, change teams every year to be, like, he would want to be, he, it makes him sound childish. And he was childish in a lot of ways, but he would want to be on the side of the winners. And so he would keep changing teams, which would be super confusing. And then when those losers, you know, um, would lose, it would be all chaotic and miserable at home again. It was better when he wasn't trying to be a a sports fan. We're just, I don't think we're really cut out in our family to be sports people. Um, maybe Joss, that's it. I see one tiny holiday up here that's driving me crazy, right? You know you're a Packer when there's like one loop missing and you can't move on until it's addressed. Maybe that's it. Yeah, just one, it's two tails in one loop. That's what I can do in here. Now, this piece is so far all wool, right? That might change if I do some more stuff with flowers. But this piece so far is all wool. So if I want to, for beginners, right, this beginner talk, um, if I want to, I'm making my piece as we go along. Some things are good. Some things need improvement, right? Because of course they do. Of course they do. So as I'm going along, I might be saying to myself, you know what? My technique is getting better. My loops are looking a little bit better. Um, you know, it's not going to be the best piece. I might not want to show everybody this first piece. Just remember that you can do um, blocking at the end. So beginners, blocking is when you have got a piece that is all wool, a project that is all wool, right? No synthetics. This is this is all wool. You literally hit it with the steam, like the iron. Uh, you hit it hard. I have videos on blocking. I tend to put it on the ironing board and put like a damp face cloth on it um, so that the heat isn't directly... The iron isn't directly hitting my piece, but I steam it patch by patch for a really long time and then move on. And it really, wool has a fantastic memory, unlike other fabrics. And um, it'll stay like that, like for as long as you can think of, right? It won't be like next week you got to re-steam it. No, it'll be for a long, long, long time, just like hats, right? Wool hats. The crown doesn't suddenly collapse from one season to the next. Um, did you see what I was doing there? I was just measuring where I wanted to be with the corner and dragging my hook down so that I could hook directly to this point. Um, and I'm not going to hook the whole corner. I just, I got to just shore up a little bit more to be content. But um, yeah, if you do some blocking, um, it kind of mellows out your loops, right? They kind of lean into each other. And it makes a slightly more refined and finished look if you want that. If you are wild and crazy in all different heights right now, you might not want that. But if you do want that, um, blocking is going to make a big difference to the way that your piece looks. So that's just good to know. That's good to file in you know the back of your mind that if you're if you're looking at it and you're thinking, "Ooh, I think I am the kind of technical person she was talking about." It I would like it to look a little bit more polished. Uh, a little bit, you know, I would like it to look a little bit better. And I would like it if the loops looked a bit more even. When you block it, like magic, that's going to happen. So just know that, that, that you can do that. And it's going to make the loops look better. 
um, more, I, I hate to use the word manufactured, but just more, more refined, more precise, more um, perfect. So, and if you, if what you don't like about rugs is that they look too perfect and you like them to look wild and crazy, then you should not get into blocking. It's not for you. So it's something to think about. You can block some pieces and not others, right? You don't have to, it doesn't have to be your final answer for all of time that you're a blocker or not. But it's there as one of the tricks in your bag of tricks, right? So I've got this corner. It's so tempting to keep going with it, but we can't be on all night. We've got a bit more to do. So maybe we should move on. I really like the way, sorry, fooling, fooling, fooling. Um, I really like the way it's coming out, I have to say. I really like the way it's coming out. So let me put my blues away because I'm having a stop me before I kill again with the blues. I can't stop. Um, I still love these little flowers here. I'm still, the jury's out with these guys. I could get some darker green. I feel like I need some darker green. I don't really want to take the time to cut it while I'm on camera. And I should have got myself some. But I thought, excuse me, I thought, oh, who cares if mine are different than other people's, right? Like, um, I'll just have less colors. I can make it work. But now I'm kind of longing for a very dark green. Because I feel like if if I could make these trees kind of the same colors as the, as the grass, but with the darker green, that would be for me, perfect. Um, Diana says, uh, Deanna, I finished my candy corner cat. How did it come out? Did it come out great? Make sure, make sure, Diana, make sure you send a photo of it if you do, if you want. Because um, I said earlier, if you're tuning in later, I'm going to run gallery night next Friday, not this coming Friday. Um, I decided I would do, I would just have a full blast Easter weekend uh, with the kids and my mom and everything and my sister and um, the husbands and all that stuff. So I will run gallery night next week because um, the thing about gallery night is not the two hours I run it. It's the whole day it takes me to put the show together uh, additionally. So I run it next week. But if you think of it, send me Candy Corner Cat. I would love to be able to put that in the show. I feel like I might need to make a decision about the trees before I do the rabbit. Um, I'm very happy with this. I'm very happy with, I'm very happy with the white outlining. I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking out loud. I'm thinking about those trees. And I'm thinking about the bunny, about the lines. I'm, I'm happy to be using these two for his body, but I want more white in him too. So now I'm second guessing myself. Huh kind of thinking yeah I'm gonna do it I can always undo it I'm kind of thinking I want to take some of the darks I have left over oh wait a minute I forgot about this we haven't been able to use that I'm gonna do an experiment I don't know if this is gonna work at all I, I, the dusty rose right that I keep saying I don't know where to use this but I love this color um, I'm gonna experiment with this in here for example I didn't want to do the interior, or I didn't initially do the interior lines outlining on the bunny in the darker greens. I wonder how it will look if I do some interior outlining in the dusty rose. I don't know that I'll know after this one line. Let's see. My thing is not super tight. I'm going to get a little bit tighter. There we go. Um, okay, let's see. Where do we end up here? All right, let's see. I'm going to leave that for a second. Bring it a little bit closer. All right, let's hold on that. And I'm going to, I'm thinking about this here too. I'm going to try to do a sweep from here up here with this color. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but let's see if it works. It's not going to take me a long time to experiment with it, so... Solving problems as I go, right? Color planning as I go. I always say, if there's one thing that you want, that you need, right, to be really fast and successful at this craft, it is not technique, it is not talent, it is confidence, right? You just, you've had, this is a thrift craft, right? Nobody 
who made these rugs, who made these rugs first, knew how to do it, right? And none of the people who came for the next 50 years knew how to do it. So it just takes confidence. You have to look at what the, pro these are easy problems to solve. We're just pulling up loops, right? We're just pulling up loops. So you have to look at what you got going and say to yourself, I like it, I don't like it. If I don't like it, what can I do to make it, to make me like it more, right? Um, that's all you need. You need you need to have a little bit of flexibility built in and you need to be able to say to yourself, uh, I'm willing to make changes as I go along. I'm willing to do some troubleshooting and problem solving as I go along. Uh, it is nice to have a roadmap in front of you. It's nice to have everything laid out for you and a guarantee on top of it. But crafts don't work like that, right? And the sooner you get to peace with that, the sooner you start experimenting uh, in different ways. And that's, that's the amount of experimenting that you do and the amount of um, sort of uh, trials, errors, new techniques that you try, the more variety your work will have, the more um, character your work will have, and the more, I think, individual style your work will have. You also work faster when you're confident because you, you're saying to yourself, whoa, there it is. You're saying to you, come on now. You're saying to yourself, um, if this doesn't work, um, I know how to, I'm going to know how to fix it. So I'm doing the same thing. Let me come back over here and give you a different angle. Not of my boobs, but of the thing. There we go. So I'm going to come down. You see how this, no. This is an extreme close up. So you see here how this line is going to continue over here and then it's going to come to his foot. I'm going to pick up where this line left off. I'm not going inside or outside. I'm going with the line. You'll see what I mean as I fill it. I'm kind of liking this so far. Oh, I'm kind of liking this. It's looking a bit like a wood cut. I'm, and I'm right on the line with hooking this part of the leg, right where the legs meet, the sort of shadow to, to, to make the distinction between the front and back leg. And I'm going to want to hook it right up here and connect it right here, right? Where, the, where it's such a small gap right in here but I'm gonna to wanna to connect it to where that green left off. I'm not creating a new line, I'm just, I've only got one loop before I run out. Ah, dang it, it wasn't enough. Let's see, I might need to add one loop. Damn it, you know, there's just that one loop missing right there. Figures, right? All right, I'm gonna to have to fill that in, that's gonna drive me nuts, sorry. All right, let's do, let's do, I'm not going to do a tail because I got like five tails right there. I'm leaving the tail underneath. This is one of those times when I just decide I'm leaving the tail underneath. It's, it's going to look ratty if I keep fooling with tails, right? I got to make a good executive decision. No, 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 thank you, Satan. No more tails. There we go. Oh God, that's perfect. That is, sorry. I shouldn't be saying God, that's perfect. And I just start kissing my biceps, but that's perfect. That's just what I wanted. Okay. Let's look again at with some distance. Oh God. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Yes. Okay. For me, that's a yes. So for you, that might not be your taste, but I like the way that his interior outlining is a little bit different. I really like that. He, it has a real illustration quality to it right now, doesn't it? Oh, Diana, I, I, if Candy Corner Cat is not perfect, you know I'm going to love him because you made him. So that's not going to be a thing. You know what I have to do? And I'm sorry to be such a jerk, but I have to fill in a little bit of the background here because I want to do this tail and I really want the tail to stand out. So... I know I said I wasn't going to do any more of this because we don't want to be on for, you know, um, until the cock crows midnight, but I got to do a little bit more just so I can get a feel for how this is going to look. Let me just do a little bit of filling in over here. It's good. Like I said before, we have to work on stuff like this together more often. It's good to talk it through whether you are a beginner or not, right? It's always nice to know how other people work. Uh, I am not super technical, and I bet you all are, for the most part, almost everybody who's watching is better than I am. 
and that is okay because I you know I love designing I love I love making them and I don't um, I, I don't um, sort of regale myself as like the greatest hooker right that's not how I put myself forward I think I'm um, I'm I'm not inept I think I'm okay I think I have the techniques down whether or not I like to use the right techniques in the right places isn't isn't always um, sort of in accordance with the traditional teaching of the craft. So in other, in, in Frank Sinatra's words, I, I do things my way, right? But, um, and not because I, I'm bucking the system or anything, just because I, I like, I taught myself. And because I taught myself, I figured some stuff out on my own and I still like that stuff. So when I teach, I tend to teach you the way that I do things and yeah, you have to. You always have to go with a teacher who um, you that you who you like their work, right? Because otherwise, what's the point? We're all just pulling up loops. I filled in that little bit there. Let me fill in a little bit more. Let's do some business. No, no pistachio. Let's stay away from. Yeah, let's stay away from pistachio. I'm trying to make strategic decisions because um, I don't want it to get confusing. Do you notice how this area that I'm focused on right here, right? This is busy. This is really busy, right? We've got the, the edge of the um, trees meeting the horizon line, right? And we've got the tail. This is a busy area right here. So I don't want to add it, add, add it <laughs> I don't want to make it more busy by adding a lot of color change. I want to keep that area, I want to keep going with the hit or miss or, or it will be distracting that suddenly it stopped. So I want to keep that going, but I don't want to do really dynamic hit or miss with lots of huge high contrast color changes because there's no reason to and it's gonna further confuse this area. Let's stabilize this area that's already busy by keeping, making color changes but keeping them the same kind of color tones. So I've got two greens that are on pretty equal footing as far as um, the tone, right? They're both like middle tones. There we go. And let's come shooting up here. I feel like I might have to move that light closer. Let's see. I got so many gadgets going on, it's crazy. If you could see this, you'd be like, how is she even how is she even working at this point? Let me change the quality of the light. That might be better actually. That might be a bit more warm. Um, all right, I'm checking out where I am here. Just gonna come along here just a little bit. It's, it's very hard uh, to stop hooking for me once I'm hooking. And the reason is, as I hook, because I'm a person who makes decisions as I go along, um, ooh, that created a weird turn, wait a minute. Because I'm a person who makes decisions as I go along, I keep getting to these parts that are like cliffhangers at the end of a chapter where I'm like, I gotta resolve that or I'm not gonna be able to sleep peacefully. You know what I mean? So that's that's the kind of hooker I am and I know that so I tend to not um, hook stuff that I know is gonna like get me like overstimulated at night because I know I, I'll be up until God knows when um, this has way higher contrast than it should and I don't want to fix it while I'm on camera it I'm sure the green screen is still on um, because this looks really dark and it's not it's like Kelly green so I'll have to show you, <laughs> he does have some attitude. I'll have to show you this on Facebook. I'm sorry about that. I have not figured out, I thought I turned off the green screen, but that looks really dark and it's not. So you'll have to just trust me color wise, maybe if I do. No, it's not showing the true value. That's annoying. Oh, hey, Joss. Hey. I guess Joss's screen name is... Um, like Madison, your screen name changing. Um, she must have changed hers. It's um, Joss Loves Pokemon. Hey, Joss. All right. I just got that little bit done. Let me just do a little bit more right here. Um, choosing my color again. And again, I'm trying to be careful um, with the color choices. I'm going to do one more dark one here. Hi, hi. Was it always Just Loves Pokemon? I don't think I've ever seen that screen name before. Is that a new account, honey? And what's going to happen when you don't love Pokemon anymore? 
Maybe you maybe you can change it to Joss loves Poke Balls. Remember by the maybe by the time you stop loving Pokemon, you'll like that Pokey, which is like the warm sushi, right? Maybe you'll start loving the Poke Balls. You can just change it to Joss loves Poke Balls. All right. You know, once you get going, and for beginners, I bet, I, I hope that you're having this experience. Once you get going, um, you can feel, you know, you can feel the loops twisting in your hand. You feel, once you get some traction, you get some confidence, and you, you're you getting that whole pulling up the loops thing, uh, it feels very good to be hooking, right? Maybe maybe you're not there quite yet if you're if you're a total beginner, but it feels good when you're pulling up loops, you're able to change directions underneath. Um, th as you pull loops to the center, to the uh, forward, you know, to the front, things are happening in an un in an expected way, right? Things are happening the way that you hope that they will and expect them to. Yeah, the colors are way off in this piece. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to spend some time on this stupid uh, green screen but for the moment let's keep going it is way prettier than it looks and I will post some pictures let me just pull with this for a second I'm going to do a little more thinking all right let's have some drink drinking and thinking time all right I like I like the dusty rose I like the dusty rose I'm going to keep going with the dusty rose so hang on. Okay, sweetie, go have fun playing Fortnite. Yeah, it did change. It did change. It's just ya or something. So now you see where I am here in the face. You see how there's this line here? I want to do that line. And this is the pink nose, right? I want to do that line too. You know what I better do right now is put the pink nose in, right? Let me put the pink nose in first. Let's do one of our tricks. This is, I'm going to do extreme close up again. Let's do one of our tricks. Okay, here's the pink nose. Can you see that okay? Now, the pink has a triangle, right? The nose has a little triangle in it. So I'm going to do the trick where I take my strip and I kind of fold it in half, not at the top, right? It's like an extra maybe inch and a half or so right? And I feed it to the tip of the nose where I want that sharp point. And I pull it up. And now I can feel underneath that I have two ends. One is the short end and one is the long end. I'm going to take one, I'm going to take the short end first, right? I'm feeling the short end. And I'm going to hook up this way. This is that great tip for the tips of stars and little acute points. I mean, I hooked that with the short end. Now I'm taking the long end. So I'm changing, I'm changing strips and I'm hooking up this way. And for me, that's exactly what I want. I don't want another single, um, I do not want another single anything. I'm going to trim it right here. That's exactly what I want. And the other tail is still, the other tail is still hanging out under there. Let me just bring that up carefully. And I'm going to trim that too. But you see by working the two tails at once, I was able to get in the tip of the star, this one loop pointed that way to give me a little bit of a sharp, um, a sharp nose, right? If that makes sense. Who wants a sharp nose? Well, he does. Now I'm going to take my dusty rose color again, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, you know what? I'm not going to work the outline. I was just going to, I was going to work the outline across here, this line. I don't want to do that because then it's going to make too much of that dusty rose color. I want to start the actual nose right there, but I do want the line here. I do want this line here. So let's do that. Let's do right in there with that dusty rose. And I'm going to do shooting straight up this eye line here, right up the bridge uh, of the nose. 
Now, again, if you feel like this number five strip is too clunky, you should cut it. You can cut it in half or whatever, or just trim some off. And I don't want to dip into the eye, right? I want the eye to be nice and full. I'm coming around to the top of the eye, and I got a little bit of a little bit higher yet, a little bit higher. Hey, Ted. Hey, mom. I know I said last week would be my last. Uh, why is this here? Oh, because I found it in the bathroom. Mm, how's this roof? Hmm. See what I did there? Hold on one second, Ted. And then I'm going to come shooting down here. I want to outline the eye like Egyptian, Egyptian bu bunny eye here. Here, you go, you go back on camera it's while it's I finish the eye. Okay, you're gonna do the face. Yep, he's doing the face. What do you got to say to us now, Ted? Um, not much. I just came down here to uh, feed the animals. Oh, you're gonna feed the animals? Um, are oh, you no, excited for Easter said. weekend? Oh yeah. Yeah. What do you think we mm. should do? I don't really feel like coloring Easter eggs this year. What? Even with the uh, egg magic machine? Well, things kind of run down and... Oh, come on. That's the most fun thing. Well, you don't have to. I mean, I'll, I'll color the eggs. You going right. to eat some eggs? Sure, sure. All right. You think the Easter Bunny's going to make an appearance? Oh. Mom, you know my thoughts about the Easter Bunny, right? Yeah, if you want to fry them. Oh. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Fry it's going to taste delicious. Yeah. That's going to be our dinner. Only if you can catch them. Only if I could, I could easily catch them. Okay. We'll see about that. Hope he makes an appearance. Mm-hmm. Why are you looking at me like that? What do you mean, hope he makes an appearance? I hope he makes an appearance. That's all I'm saying. Like, you know. All right, Mom. So, by your logic, not only am I being watched by Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and Colonel Sanders. And the Tooth Fairy. And the Tooth Fairy. Mm -hmm. The Tooth Fairy's evil, though. Yeah, well, she's watching. She's watching you with her evil eye. All right, Mom. I know. I all right, Mom. Thanks for scarring me. I'll never have privacy ever again. All right, love you, Mom. Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. Yeah. I'm and back, I hope I'm the Easter the Bunny comes. Oh uh, yeah, so we can start. Yeah. Here we go. All right. So. So I did the eye. I outlined the eye. I think I'll fill in the eye while we're together here. Let's do that. We got a few more things that we got to do. So how can I make it so? There we go. Now I want to do the edges of the eye in white. So I have to turn it a little bit so I can see it. Sorry. Um, if you notice, the eye has the way that it's drawn. Um, the pupil is on top, but there's a little white under, right, showing under and on both sides. So I know it, Olivia, right? Well, he's going to be surprised when the Easter Bunny comes. He's never going to catch the Easter Bunny. Never. I'm going to make sure the Easter Bunny's near the car. Um, we'll see about that. We'll see about all of that. So I'm just coming in here with my whites, and I'm going, oh, Buttons, go get your dinner. I don't think he remembered to feed the dog because the dog's right under my feet. Okay, there we go. So I got the bottom of that. That's good. So far, so good. And sometimes the wool frays. This is all door wool, but sometimes it frays a little bit. Um, if so, just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Anything that confuses my eye, I just get rid of. So I got a little bit of the white under there, but I want a little bit more. You know what I'm going to do first is hook that pupil right there, which means I really need to decide what color it's going to be. And I think we're at the point where I need that buttons. Are you being normal? What do you, do you have your bone down? Let me get, I'll get you a bone in a minute. I really need a dark eye in there. I'm going to put you down for a second while I go and get that dark green. I will be right back. Right. Let's see. I need something really dark. Buttons, where's your bone, honey? Go get your bone.
Yep, whatever it is. All right, I got some of this green and I'm not very well prepared because I don't have, um, I don't have a cut. I just have a piece of it like, like this and hang on. So wait a minute. I'm going to use my little bliss cutter and I don't think it's a number. Oh, it's a number six. All right. Well, that's not bad. I was afraid it was a number eight. Um, I think this is the bliss cutter that has issues. Let's see. I think this is the one where the blade has a ding. Please be wrong. I might be wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, I love to be wrong. The strips are coming out fine. So let's see. Oops, just made a pig's breakfast there. Let's just do a few. It's my little bliss cutter. I usually don't use it. I only take it when I'm like gonna go to a hotel room or something like that. So I can do a little bit of cutting. I'm happy with the six actually, that's fine. That's obviously very close to the seven. And I wanted it smaller, so it's on the right side of an of an eight, right? I was afraid it would be the eight, because I usually have the eight on here. I don't know when I took it off. The eight has a ding in it, I think. It has like a little nick. And it's so um, I have to like uh, use the scissors every time I cut it. That's really annoying. This is just a small piece I got going. All right, let's do this. All right, good problem solving, Mama. Good job. Put it right next to the slime and Let's go. So, yep, let's do this. So, I'm going to take I'm going to do the eye first. And I think we all will have different opinions on this. Move the table a little bit. But I just want one loop for the eye. So I don't want two tails in one loop. No, I just want one loop. But I feel that I need at least one tail to anchor my loop. So I'm going to do one tail. Oops, my mat. I'm trying to make it in a very small space. One tail, one loop, and I'm going to cut the, the other tail underneath. I don't even want two tails. Sonic reference right there. I don't want two tails. Let's see. Fine part. I got to get you in there. All right. So, can you see that? Come on, Mama. All right. Now, remember, I was working with the white, and there's a little white on both sides of the eye. So I'm going to try to get those in and I'm going to do another naughty. I'm going to do another cheaty peedy over here. Get my tail up. I'm going to get, there's definitely a loop that's going to fit here. Now I'm liking the way that's looking. I need to get over here. I'm going to jump underneath. I'm going to carry, right? So I just carried um, the loop in the back over here because I'm not going to make extra tails and cut it just to follow the rules. It doesn't make sense. I just carried it underneath. That's why I wanted to do the pupil first because I knew there was a very good likelihood that I would want to carry. And I'm just kind of filling in the eye. I can see I'd like it if it looked a little, have a little more white in it. So I'm kind of underneath improvising, adding loops. Looks like I'm doing eye surgery, doesn't it? adding loops where I want them because I don't want a big pupil. And I think I'm going to bring up one more tail and then I think I might be done with the eye. I'm only done with the eye if I like the way that the eye looks. I like the way that the eye looks. When I hook around it, oh, you know what? I think he was supposed to be looking down. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm doing it and um, I think he's looking down, but I'm doing it upside down and I had his eye looking up. I think that's okay. I think that's okay, I still like it. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, thank you. 
you know, it has to have the expression you want. It looks like a big eyeball. One of the things you can do, I, I, I kind of want that, but if I want it to be less of a big eyeball, take, take a look at this, right? I'm going to have to do it this way around. I can come into the edge of the loop. Do you see what I'm doing here? And I'm just cutting some white off at an angle. And it makes a big difference. So I'm not cutting down to the base of the loop. I'm being careful not to cut my backing fabric. But if I just cut an angle off, like a little divot, it actually makes a big difference. And I can go back into the eye later if I want to. But I won't really know how it, the eye actually looks until I do some more hookity hookins. Now, I think I'm going to take Rita's advice. And I think I'm going to run a little bit of pink. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I have to, I think the only way I'm going to know is if I start hooking the rabbit. So you know what I want to do? Because I decided to use the two um, skeins. Let me come up again a little bit here. We're going to do some business with two skeins. So yeah, you can do, you can always do a little bit of snippies and carving once you're in there. And if you carve too much, right, and you cut too much of your strip, as long as you don't cut your backing. But if you cut too much of your strip, um, that's okay. Where's my other dang yarn gone? Here it is. Um, if you cut too much of your strip, that's okay. You can always take it out and put another in and hook another strip in. So, but at least, you know, doing a little bit of carving and stuff is how you get super, super, super fine little touches. If there's only one little thing bugging you, right? Now, what I'm gonna do here is you see I've got the two colors I'm gonna use for the rabbit. I'm gonna go to the center and find the center piece. I don't like pulling from the side, right? I tuck the side in and hide it. I like pulling from the center. I'm gonna pull from the center of that one and I'm gonna pull from the center of this one. And you know what I'm gonna do? Because I couldn't really decide where to use what color. I'm gonna put both of these colors together and I'm gonna pull them both. I'm pulling them both like this, right? And I'll put them off to the side and I'm gonna hook with them directly from the skein together. So let's see how that looks. Let's see how that looks. I also don't want to run out. Um, let's see how it looks starting with the ears. Da -da 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 -da. All right, yeah, let's come to the tip of the ears. I'm not going to leave tails. Um, Am I? No, I'm not going to leave tails because I think it's going to look confusing. I'm going to keep the tails underneath and just pull up a loop. I just want to be sure, let me come a little bit closer, just want to be sure that it's light enough, like the color of the rabbit. I like the idea of blending him, but I want to be sure that the color is actually going to work. And it's okay if he's a little bit um, hooked a little bit higher. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do this trick. I wasn't planning on doing this trick. Let's see. I wasn't planning on using this to hook the whole rabbit. I was just planning on outlining with it. I'm trying to think of how many people have the kits. And if you are doing this too, if I have enough dyed to be able to send you some more. I shouldn't be doing something that is going to possibly run out, should I? Particularly when it's not the plan. So I'm hooking with yarn now, and I'm hooking with two pieces. And I'm loving it. Come in here. And just for the sake of uh, simplicity, I am going to keep, for the yarn bits, I'm going to keep the tails under. So I'm trimming them under the surface and bring you a little bit closer to where I'm working. Sorry, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the reverse aspect of this. So this is what I hooked so far. Let me hook this one. The jury's still out, right? I haven't decided yet. Now, when I'm hooking with two pieces, it's not only two different colors. I have to be prepared for the fact that it is coming up side by side. 
right? The loops are coming up side by side like parallel train tracks and in the same order. And do I like that? I gotta say, I kind of like this. I'm just afraid I'm gonna run out. And if I'm gonna run out, I can get more. But if you've got the kit and you're gonna run out, you're gonna need more. And I'm happy to send you more. Just thinking, do I need another project, you know? I'm not doing as much packing with, ooh, I kind of like that. Here, let me show you so far. You know, the only thing is I'm not sure he's standing out enough. You know what I mean? I feel like he might not be standing out enough. Let me do a little more. It's hard to tell because it's this is distracting. Right, because you know what? I think he is standing out enough. He's not with this showing, but if I cover this up, I think he is standing out enough. You're getting a super dark view of this too. Let me, what I wanted to show you here, sorry. Hold on, I'm making sure I'm pulling from my centers here. Um, what am I doing over here? So what I wanted to show you here was you see how, this is where my last ones were. I'm actually going to turn the corner and do, I'm going to do twisties, but I want to, I, I like the way that they're running in twos. Every, every uh, stitch, every time I pull up, it's running in twos. It looks extra cool when I turn the corners and stuff because it stays in twos. You know what I mean? Just concentrating for a second while I shoot down here. Ooh. Oh God, I love this. Oh God, I love this. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this. If you got this as a kit and you want to, and you're doing the same thing, you're not making them white or brown or whatever, and you're like, oh, also love it, need some, just let me know, I'll send you some. See, this is the kind of goofball thing I do. I start working on a project and I deviate from the plan and I create stupid problems for myself. There's a little bit left over, a little holiday, so I'm actually gonna clip at the tip of his toes because it does make sense to me um, literally that there would be like little bits at the tip of his toes, like little nails. Everything has to make sense to me. That's why I'm not a big fan of Prati. Sometimes Prati doesn't make sense to me. I think a little bit of um, little tails hanging at the tip of the toes looks like um, little toenails and there's hardly any there. I clipped pretty low and now I come up this side. It might be that my my dusty rose color that's separating um, come up here to the knee the two legs it might be that that dusty rose color that I hooked in that I really love it might not be enough contrast I won't really know until I'm finished again I was thinking of these the yarns as possible um, they weren't really part of the kit in my mind I was thinking them of them as, I'm going to cut these tails under, as possible outline things and whisker things and stuff like that, but I wasn't thinking of actually using them and leave it to me while I'm live to uh, change it up, right? All right, hang on. I'm pull some more yarn. Oh, I've got to say, I kind of love it. Easter Halloween. <laughs> it is a bit, isn't it? It is a bit. And Madison said, my mother took us to get Easter pictures done with live bunnies one time. Oh, how cute is that? We were wearing white heirloom dresses and they clawed us so bad. There was blood everywhere and we looked terrified. That is awful. Why would anybody, now I don't mean your mom. I mean the person who set the photo shoot up. It seems like a bad idea, doesn't it? It seems like a really bad idea. Because bunnies are pretty unpredictable too, aren't they? I've seen some bunnies do some serious biting on children. Not my children, thank you, but um, I've seen that. I am so sorry. That is not a good memory. You better not look at my Facebook pictures then. There's going to be some um, life-size bunny action happening on Sunday. I don't want to bring back any bad memories. That is such a thing. Yeah, I remember um, years ago when I lived in the Netherlands... Uh, you know, and the kids were both born over there. They had these um, border eyes. I'm sure I told you about these on one coffee time or another. And it's basically like a petting zoo. But there's a lot of animals there that really are not good animals to pet, like llamas 
and um, ostriches and bunnies. And uh, man, I saw this one mother once bring her kid, wheel the stroller over in front of the bunny thing, the enclosure, and she and the kid put his hand in the bunny's cage. And of course, the bunny bit his his fingers and, lo and locked on, not his fingers, the, like the palm of his hand. And uh, she started screaming. And I'm like, um, uh, I mean, I had my two kids and they started crying just because, I mean, they were little and they didn't, it just was, it was such a bad moment. You know what I mean? I, I ran and got the Buddha guy, but he's like, um, he was basically like, well, you shouldn't put your, because by then the kid's hand was out of the bunny's lips. And he was like, well, you shouldn't put your hand in the bunny's cage. It's like, thank you, Captain Obvious. But um, yeah, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a good memory, but it was like, whew, note to self. Uh, never put my children's hands in front of the bunnies' faces, you know. Um, yeah, they are so cute, but they do, they do, they do what they do, don't they? I noticed when I was, when I was younger, and I used to give those tours out west, um, there was quite a few people who had, and I know this isn't a thing, I know this isn't a thing, but there was quite a few people who had raccoons as pets, like on leashes, and I always thought, oh, man, I used to see, like, kids walking up to them and trying to pet them and stuff. And it's like, oh, my God. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how. It might be that I'm completely wrong and that raccoons are lovely pets. But, uh, yeah, I just, I, I guess I didn't grow up in an immediate culture that was like, yes, definitely, definitely handle raccoons, you know. Rabbits are right on the borderline because, you know, the, a lot of people have them for pets and they are lovely. Um they are super lovely. I mean, we had, um, what were their names? I can't even remember our two stupid, Banana and Pickle, our two hamsters. And man, those those hamsters, they were just hamsters, but every time you try to feed them or give them a treat, they'd bite your finger off rather than, like literally bite your finger rather than take the treat. And it would be like, okay, never mind, because it hurt. They had those sh sharp little beaver teeth, you know. Dang things. They were so cute, though tirelessly running in their wheels day and night it was like um it made me a bit um feel panicky just seeing those little animals who never rest you know what i mean like the squirrels and the chippies and all those little forest folk they just never rest birds too they're always alert um yeah it just it makes me feel a bit um nervous you know just the constant state of alertness the constant panic the never relaxing and resting thing. All those little animals kind of have that vibe for me. I love all the animals. Though. I really do. I love all the animals. I almost got a miniature pig a few weeks ago. Probably good that we didn't at this moment, but man, I was right. I was like already, you know, making plans to go over there and stuff. One of my friends uh, had a bunch of the teacup pigs. It's definitely not the right time. You know, we could have, but it's definitely not the right time. And we got to keep cod too um, for like two, over two weeks. You know, that's coming up. Oh, man, they were cute. So you see me kind of zipping along here. I am loving this. I'm going to try to give you a good view of it because I don't know. I think, sorry, I keep coming out of the frame because I'm working pretty fast. Um, I think he's looking amazing. I absolutely love him. I love that dusty rose color, too. Um, he has a bit of an illustration quality, like a sort of Book of Kells quality, right? Like a real frozen in time pose. He's got attitude, right, Dave? He's got the attitude. I'm loving pulling up two um, strands at once. Let's see. I hear some more yelling up there. So my radar just went on. Man, this is great. This is great. You know, it's also kind of nice that he has a different texture than, wait a minute, I'm trying to get you over here to me. Um, he has a slightly different texture than the rest, right, with his double loopies. Dang, it's hard to do this. There we go. Why is it so hard to do this? Let's try that. Let's try that for a minute. No, you can't even see my hand. Sorry. Yeah, I 
can't see, I'm kind of hooking in shadow, but just give me a minute to come around this corner, going around his hind leg here and pulling up the double, the double loopies as I go. And I like those parallel train tracks because one is that fawn color and the other is that dove gray kind of color, you know, that super, super light, that April showers color. I like that. Kind of pulling out as I go, I, I'm committed to the train tracks, like to them being parallel. And since that's the case, I want to see that every time. Pulling him up a little bit higher than the background, um, I think typically when I work with yarn in general, is that Pitter Pat? Yeah, I'm just okay. Um, I thought Pitter Pat was whining. It's the dog. Uh, normally when I work with yarn, I think I do pull it up a little bit higher than um, with strips. Where am I? I'm over here. Yep, I'm over here. Oh, I'm still in his foot. I know my hand's in the way, but just give me one minute. You know, I have to be careful because I, I'm doing my packing thing. And I do not want to pack in the foot because I do not want the foot to be like elephantitis foot, right? Like crazy gouty foot. I want it to be um, still the, along the lines of the drawing because I feel like the drawing proportionately had the right sort of sized feet. If you're wondering what that noise is, that is Buttons the dog whining about food, no doubt. Uh-oh. came around the corner from the foot. I mean, we all like a good rabbit's foot, right? For good luck, but we don't want it to be a huge rabbit's foot. Now remember, if my rabbit's foot is a little bit on the big side, which maybe it is, rather a big rabbit's foot, just a little bit, remember when I hook around it, right? When I've got the green around it, it'll be smaller again. So you gotta, you gotta remember the yin and the yang and the ebb and the flow and all that stuff. Um, it does go back to being skinnier when you hook around it and those loops are pressing in on it from the sides. Oh, I'm really enjoying this um, two loop thing. To loop la trek. I'm going to just concentrate for a second. Oh, wait a minute. I feel something. Oh, there's a join in my yarn. Okay. Yeah, I feel a join. All right. So I'm going to cut them evenly underneath. Let's see. Don't cut your finger off, Mama. Let's see. Yeah, see, there was a join in the yarn. Um, so good. Got rid of that. And I'll start again in a second. Aha. Yeah, so let me just continue this. There's a few more tails in here. Nope, too far over. I like to hook just a little bit higher, right? Because it's not as substantial as the yarn. So I don't want it to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, you see how the face is coming out and all that? I mean, I'm really, I'm really happy with him. <laughs> Denise Fry, the Easter Bunny. I know, I don't know where Teddy gets this from. Oh, good, Diana. I'm glad it's helpful. You know, I make decisions as I go. For example, I can see that there's not high contrast in the nose. There's more contrast than it looks like on my screen right now. I'm looking at my monitor. There's more contrast than I see on my monitor. So I'm thinking um, the reality is a little bit different than what you're seeing. But who knew there was a trauma around? I know, right, Madison? There's, but like, all, I think all animals, right? Um, it makes me the most sad. I'm just getting the centers of these guys again so I can keep going a little bit with these have I got two of this I got two of the same got one dark and one light and I'm going to do a little more hooking with yeah one of each so I've got my two strands going again try to even them out yeah so again if you got this kit from me and you see me doing this and you're doing it too and you need more of these two colors just let me know I'll get them to you I'll figure it out it's my problem it looks great it looks great and if it looks great for me, um, I want it to look great for you too, right? So just let me know. I'll send I'll send a couple more balls. Um, yeah, I think this is working out really good. I really like this. Now, where should we go next? Let's fill out his little leg a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, animals. And that's, that's one of those confidence things too, isn't it? Because it always makes me feel sad when we encounter kids. Because we have a Yorkie, right? 
and Buttons is okay. He's better now than he used to be. He used to be way more fresh, but now he's kind of chilled out a bit and he's way, uh, he's way better. He was more aggressive toward adults who came near us before, particularly in our yard or around our house, but now he's just kind of chilled out, right? So, so that's a relief. Um, he was always gentle with kids, so he never was aggressive toward kids. Like he got that they were kids. It was just uh, adults. And weirdly, like most dogs, the people who he didn't like, they're, they weren't really nice people. It never fails. It just never fails. It's like it, it's like it can't be true, but it, it is true. They just know. But it does make me sad um, when I see kids, which I occasionally do, who are super, super terrified of, of a dog, like even a small dog like a Yorkie, and like hysterical crying type thing. I mean, I don't see it often, but when I do see it, it makes me feel bad because I'm like, you know, having fun with animals and stuff is 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 part of life you know like the kids are oh i just pulled out some by accident um yeah i have to rehook a couple of them because i just pulled them out when i was readjusting myself yeah i just feel like it's a bit of a loss when kids aren't having any experience with being around animals i know some kids have allergies and deadly fears and god teddy did too right teddy had deadly fears when he was younger about animals that's why we got a dog in the first place but, um, yeah, I tried to correct it because I thought, I don't want him to grow up not having any experience of having relationships with animals and, um, you know, not wanting to pet animals when we pass people on the street and stuff. It's That's part of life. You know, I, I always stop and pet, or I always ask, but I love to pet other people's dogs and stuff. And, yeah, it always, I always, it always puts me back a little bit when I see that because I'm just like, Gosh, you you know, ideally, ideally, everybody's different, but ideally you want your kids to be able to enjoy animals, you know, and Joss is the opposite. Teddy was scared to death of dogs, so we got the, we got buttons because he was a Yorkie. Now that completely worked. Teddy's not scared of dogs at all. Even, you know, much, much bigger dogs, Huskies and German Shepherds and stuff. He asks to pet them on the street, right, just like Joss, and, and he does, and he enjoys that, and that's great just coming up to the bottom of that foot there. So you can see, I'm not going to go over there. That's, that's not where I want to be. I want to go down this way now. I think I might, I think maybe that was too big of a stitch. I think I'm going to do tails right here, right? I'm just thinking about the elephantitis of the foot again. I don't want to do that. So I'm making good decisions as I go. Um, but now Teddy pets absolutely everything. So I feel like that was a good, smart, smart move. It worked. All right, let's see. So where am I? Let's come around here. Let's come around his little body over here. I'm going to do a little bit more with this because I'm going to have that. The smell of food cooking is like tantalizing. I'm going to do the tail after this and I'm going to do one of the trees and then I'll, then I'll stop. Cause, cause I think you're getting the gist of all of the hard parts. Hey, remember the belly at the beginning, how I wasn't happy with the line of the belly. Look at how good it worked out. Right. Once I, once I get going, right, it's, it's fine. It all works out fine. Really. I always, you know, I second guess myself too. Although I do this all the time. I second guess myself that I screwed. I always think I screwed something up. That's just the way I, I live. But um, it usually turns out I didn't, right? Thank, thank goodness. And it's usually okay in the end, just like most of the things I worry about. Hopefully also the stupid freckle. Um, you always worry, 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 and it's such a relief when you realize it was all for naught. It's like, have you ever seen that movie Enchanted April? It's, um, who wrote that? Elizabeth von Arman, right? Elizabeth von Arman. Um, God, what a great writer she was. But Enchanted April is one of the great, great movies of all time. If you haven't seen it, you, you must, must, must see it. You'll recognize some of the cast. I, I never know the names of um, actors, but you'll recognize some of them from like BBC stuff and whatever. But there's this great scene. It's the premise is that um, all of these different people in London is this dreary, particularly rainy spring. And um, there's this advertisement that hits the London paper that says, villa you know in tuscany or wherever it is uh, somewhere in italy for rent and you know and and it can accommodate this many people so it's going to be like a shared living space and at the beginning of the movie you see all the different people who 
um, are reading the ad at breakfast and some of them like woman with a marriage that's just not going well, um, single woman, young woman, like a famous um, kind of celebrity model. It's 1920s era, this story in the book. And um, different people reading the ad and going, ooh, that sounds like that sounds like something I need. And then, of course, you see them again arriving at the villa and, and interacting with each other because they're all very different people. It's like it's like the way reality shows now are, right? When everybody turns up and it's like, you know, you trade moms for a week or whatever. It's that kind of thing. But the book was written in the 1920s and the movie set in the 20s. So a little bit of a historic angle. But it's so nice because, you know, you see everybody turn up and you know where they're coming from. And because of the backstories the movie gives you or the book gives you, the book is excellent too. Um, you know, you have, you know, a little bit about them. So you see them meeting each other and interacting and it's interesting. And, um, and it's such an unlikely group of people to come together. And that's what's, it, it's just, oh, it's just one of these beautiful books. Um, it's it, a movie. The movie's excellent, but it's like a merchant ivory, except I don't think it is a merchant ivory. But anyway, there's this one scene where the young woman who's like a flapper uh, is interacting with the older woman who's a very famous actress, but I'll never think of her name. And um, and she doesn't turn up for dinner because she's outside. She's had it with her celebrity. She's had it with a, uh, her, her working life, the busyness. And she wanted to come alone to the villa where no men were chasing her. No one was bothering her and she could just be anonymous. And it's time to go into dinner and she doesn't show up for dinner. And so the very old lady who's very stodgy and uh, all about rules uh, and, and appearances um, takes, takes offense, right, and assumes that she's hurt or something or at least wants to scold her. So she sets out in the grounds of the villa looking for her and she finds the young woman like on a, on a sun chair, like sunning herself, you know. She's got her beautiful hat on and her beautiful 1920s costume. And, you know, she does like, how dare you? We're all waiting for you for dinner. We thought something must have happened to you because you didn't come to dinner. We thought you must be sick or hurt. And the girl just was sitting there in the sun and she kind of tipped her hat and she was like, well, wouldn't you rather, you know, waste your time searching for me and finding me okay and sitting in the sun as opposed to sick and hurt? <laughs> and the old woman just kind of laughed, you know, because she was just like, it was a good point. It was a solid point. It was so, um, it was such, such a well done movie. Highly recommend. It's not one of those movies that um, got a lot of big billing or anything like that. But God, it was so good. It had so many beautiful moments in it. It's a great kind of storytelling um, piece. And it was all about how people's, you know, how this experience of being in this place changed um, all of their lives. And um, yeah, and things happened, you know, that, that needed to happen during that time. And they found themselves and um, found their way back to relationships or out of, you know, it's just a beautiful movie, Enchanted April. If you prefer books, read the book instead. But yeah, I forget what her other great classic was, something like, was about like a May uh, or May, what was it? Like May, what, what's the expression? May, December romance, something like that. It was about one of those, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was her more famous book. Enchanted April was not her most famous. Coming up to some stupid knots with this and I'm debating. <sighs> Wait a minute, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut. I, I don't fight with knots. Um, I don't have the under, I don't have it in me on my best day to fight with knots. Let me wind this one up. Yeah, see, they were doing like a little bit too much pairing up. They were actually turning into a hornet's nest. All right, so that's one and that's the other. I'll make a decision about that in a minute. I still have some tails to go. God, I love the way that this bunny is evolving. You know, we were talking about this earlier, the yarn versus uh, Dawn said, oh, I might try the yarn it's it's completely different hooking with yarn and I'm doing two at a time right now because I wanted to blend these two colors but also um, I often hook with two strands of yarn because I often hook with uh, fingerling yarn and um, uh, fingering yarn and um, what is it sock yarn or lace yarn or mohair or any of those really thin yarns 
Um, I double them up, at least. Sometimes I quadruple them up. I see a holiday in here. I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to cut it underneath. It's really tempting. I think i got to do a little bit more. Sorry. For those of you who are waiting for me to push on, I just can't. i got to do a little bit more. Because look at this little gap right here. As soon as I fill this little gap, he's going to be complete. Oh. Don't we want him to be complete? I know there's a holiday on that side. I see that, but I can't get over there yet. Let's just get him a little more done. You know, something about this yarn, um, all these little, all these little like dit dots, right? The little pitons at the top, they, they look like texture for fur, don't they? It, it looks like little bunny curls. It actually looks like a great, um, you know what I mean? It's a great kind of finish to him, and it's very different than the strips. Hmm. Let me just do a little more, just a little bit more, and then I swear I'm going to do a bush and the tail, and then I'm going to go get some dinner. I just got to do a little bit more. Let's see. Let me match these up again, right, because I want to pair them up again. I think instead of them, I don't want them to um, not again, so I'm just going to pre-cut them. I'll just pre-cut them even. And let me come back under here. And what if you're, th are you thinking to yourself, what if she did it? Wait a minute, let me find the holiday and concentrate and then I'll come back. Hold on. I don't want to miss this. And I am for the most part keeping my tails under because I don't want too much variety in the surface of him. He's already different. You know what I mean? One more. I think one more. I'm, f I'm feeling mostly with my, because the light's not so good for me either. I'm feeling mostly with my hook um, for those cavities, you know what I mean, for those holidays. And that's how I'm finding them. And if I find some more in better light, um, that's fine. Sorry, that sound is the combs crunching against the table. Let me make that stop. Um, if you're wondering to yourself why she's doing, she's doing well and she's going fast hooking with the two strands at once, what if she did four strands of this yarn? Yeah, you could totally do that. Um, this is this is two ply Briggs and Little, so this is a fairly thin yarn. Two of them together for me is perfect for hooking. You could do four ply, but you have to remember, um, the more the more loops you're pulling up in one hole, the more of a sort of flower bouquet. You know what I mean? Like it's got a stem center, like one point is the center, and then everything kind of flows up around it. While I'm pulling up two at a time, I think I'm still making pretty good time. And I'm able to control uh, the twist, right? Because now I do have twist because I'm pulling up something that isn't uh, one little piton. It's actually uh, has a direction, right? They're going like a train track. So I'm able to control all that better than I would if I had four. I often do pull up four, but, um, and you could try. You'd probably do less loops with four, but hold on, let me figure this out. Yep, I want to come over here. Um, you would do less loops, but um, they'd be fuller loops, right? You'd have to be extra careful to check for holidays and stuff because when you're pulling up four at once, it looks like you're doing these massive fill spots, but you might surprisingly have more holidays than you think with the four because you're really not seeing the backing that well. That's a lot to pull up at once. I pull up four of sock yarn, easy, but this... I'm gonna, um, no, you know what? I'm not going to cut it under. I'm going to jump. Sometimes I just jump behind because I've already hooked the area. I know it's not going to cause problems underneath because it's already hooked. And sometimes it makes more sense to jump over loops um, than it does to cut because it would actually use more wool to cut and start again. You know what I mean? Just jumping over one or two loops behind um, sometimes is more economical in terms of wool. You know, it's not going to be a problem at all to finish this with these two balls of wool. So if you're if you're hanging with me here and you did this decision too to do the body, oops, I missed a big spot. To do the body with the wool, you are you should be fine. If you're not fine, let me know. But I have a I'm gonna I think have a lot left over. I'm just gonna finish them up so we know how much I have left over. Just gonna concentrate for a second while I do this trying to hit all the crucial spots without packing it. 
and I'm being conscious of pulling up two at a time, which is a little bit different. Remember, if you are hooking this with the yarn and you are making it into a long hair rabbit, long haired rabbit, longer than this, you will run out of the yarn, right? Because this wasn't what I intended for this. And um, if you're making the pile much higher, that will be a thing. So, and I do have more, so don't worry about it. I'll send you some more, but um, yeah, just know. I'm going to pull up one here and I think I'm going to cut underneath. Let's do that. And cutting under. Now let's come back over here. Oop, I found a little hollow. See, I, your eye can just tell when there's a little gap, like a little shadow, and like the loops aren't supporting each other well. That's a there's a holiday in there, and then you you hit it with your hook, and you realize, oh yeah, there there it is. So I'm kind of making my way across here, filling some areas that look a little bit weak in terms of. Uh, density and I'm, I'm working on evenly because one of my strands ran out and the other one didn't there we go now I've got a very little bit to do left I'll bring it over him a little bit better again he's getting there let me try to make him face you better again so he can be better. it's better if you have a better view so I'm just filling in yep I'm just filling in these two little areas look at this is how much I have left which is I mean I was really thinking no way but it might still be a no way but let's see let's see how far we get I think I'm gonna work off the floor now let them just fall and even them out I would switch to doing a quadru like doubling uh, quadrupling it up for you just to show you what it looks like but I don't want to because um, I don't want my loops to come out differently I really like this rabbit Sorry, I have to do it this way. I really like the rabbit and I don't want to screw him up. You know what I mean? So let's just keep going here. I'll catch up with the comments in a minute. It's going well. And I'm still doing a little bit of mining. And sometimes, yeah, see there's a holiday down here. Um, you probably can't see, but I can see. Sometimes it looks like there's a dip and uh, not a dip, but sometimes it looks like one of the yarns is too um, low, and it's not that it's too low, it's that it's not being supported, and you got a holiday. So just be careful about that. If you're, if you're not OCD slash technical, right? I'm not technical, but stuff like that drives me crazy. Maybe I'm more technical than I think. That is possible. Um, but yeah, be thinking about that. And if that doesn't, like this is low. Yep, there's a hole right there. If that doesn't bother you, then that doesn't bother you, right? So that's good news. You know, I might not make it after all. Let's see. I feel like I have been doing some packing and I said I wasn't going to, but hello, my name is Deanna. There. Let's come over here. This is our fill area wonder what you're all working on. I know most of you are not working on bunny. I bet you're all working on some good stuff. I know Olivia's knitting. I like to think of you all sitting there working on your projects to feel so companionable. We've been on for a long time today, but as I get into something, it's like I'm, a, I'm an animal, a dog with a bone. All right, let's come over here now. Getting right to the end. And I have those dark green strips cut. So I'm curious about putting some of those into the bushes. I'm going to do one. That I'm calling them bushes. They're supposed to be trees. They could be bushes, but they really are trees on the horizon. Um, I'm really anxious to put those in because I think that's going to be such a nice effect. Yeah, I love this. I really love, um, I love his body being the yarn. And I know it's hard to tell because it's now full blast night. And um, I'm going to do his little cottontail too. But um, when I take pictures of it and show you in the light, you'll see what I mean. Um, the, the texture in the body looks so nice. It's different, you know. It really stands out differently than the grass. The grass, even though it's not a wide cut, it's a number five, 
it looks so different texture wise than his little body it makes a nice um it, a nice uh, treat for the eye having that kind of variety all right that's my last one there i got some hollowness i don't know if you can see it i think you probably can in here right um yep so i'm gonna fill that yeah i got plenty plenty of yarn how great is that i try to like pack the kits that i send so that it's not possible to run out um because i know it's like disappointing when people run out and you know it's always possible to run out because like i said we all hook differently but um this is one of the benefits of doing overkill with the with the kits is that we turn on a dime like this and start doing something completely different and there's still enough material to do it so that that makes me feel happy and pleased and there are uh, more of these kits there's a few more of these kits and they come with a pipe frame they come with the hook that i am using which is the media mashimer hook uh, they come with all the supplies that i've been using so you could in theory do exactly what i've been doing here now i have extra so i'm kind of going through with my hook and looking for trouble i'm looking for holidays because now i know i have enough fabric so this is full blast aggressively packing stop me before i kill again packing but sometimes i feel with my fingers yep i feel i'm going to trim it here i'm going to trim it behind again um, sometimes you can't tell other than using your fingers um, where the holidays are see when i feel here it feels soft and it feels soft there so i know those are two areas that are danger areas so then i start mining yep there's a huge holiday right there so let me fill that since i can since i know i have plenty because visually it's not reading as a holiday it's not until i touch it that it really um gives itself away but now that i know i'm good for yarn kind of mining away here making my way down to the other holiday via the packing route i'm really packing now all right here we go yep making our way over here because i can see there's some more softness not not good softness like it's soft like it's hollow yeah right here this was the main area of craziness right here all right yeah i think that's all i can do without being ridiculous now i'm actually pulling up other pieces so i am stopping right there and i have quite a bit of yarn left right so um of both colors the other one just rolled away so we are good for that thank you lord that worked all right now he's actually a bit a bit buckled because i packed him that much well, I gotta be me. I love the way he looks. Let's do his tail together. So I'm gonna use the weight for his tail. I'm gonna do it a bit proddy. Proddy means you got some three-dimensional effects happening on the tail. So I'm gonna I'm gonna handle it like I'm hooking it um, as a regular tail. I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna bring the tail up. The tail of the wool strip. I'm gonna bring it up. I'm going to do, I, I don't think I want to clip. I think I want to do just really high hooking. You could go in lots of different directions with this, but you know, I could do a clipped tail, right? That would be more, more sort of proddy with the, with the clippy tails, but I think I'm just going to do a really high hooked cotton tail. Let me see how that looks. I might change my mind if I don't like the way that looks. Let's see. here I'm gonna look I'm looking at it dead on so I'm making good decisions I'm not a huge for myself I'm not a huge proddy person because um, I'm not a big fan of stuff that's gimmicky but this is the right place uh, to have proddy this and the flowers to me make sense yet yeah, his tails coming up like little curls I like that that's what I want okay that's one of the little edges that came up I'm just gonna trim that down some decorative trimming happening here let me get another piece oh that's really pretty 
you see how the, uh, see how that's looking it's can you tell it looks wait a minute sorry sorry can you tell it looks different than the rest it's hooked a bit higher i could do higher yet but it's like a bunch of little marshmallows sticking up on the surface i think i'll do some taller ones right near his bum let's see and then i will do a bush and then i'm gonna go have dinner and I might, I, I wasn't planning on working on this tonight and I didn't think I'd finish it, but I have to say, I like it enough that I think I'm going to keep going on it. You know, I think I might do a little bit of lower hooking near his bum because I don't want those. Remember how we hooked that, um, this line here, this kind of dusty rose line. I kind of still want that to show. Um, cause I really like that line. I think that really furthers, um, this, this line drawing, the strength of the line drawing here. So let me just hook a little bit along here and then I'm going to do more proddy a little bit higher up I want to emphasize uh, that the continuity of that line to my eye anyway is fairly important and, and if it's not to yours then go for it go full blast with the proddy so I'm do a few more of these guys make them even taller oops And I think this kit was, um, I think this was 85 and come on, that included the hook and the pipe frame. I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty good. I won't be doing a lot of stuff at that price point. Cause that's, um, that made sense. That made sense for me this time, but it's, um, you know, it's not, um, it's not a hugely profitable kit. I would like to sell out of them all the same because I don't want to, it's not something I would restock. It was just for this event. I'm kind of doing a weird kind of variety of packing here because I just want to use up this strip and I want to get some more long ones in, but I'm trying to stay away from that butt line. Let's do one more tall one. There we go. That's what I want. Now, I'm a big one for tidying stuff up like this. I might just do a few tidy ups. Oh yeah. Rita, that was a great idea. I know you were probably thinking much wilder than that, but I really like that. Let me see if I can show you sideways. It's a big glare because it's dark now, but um, it really stands up quite high against the rest of it. Oh, I super love that. I really do. I super love that. I super love this piece. Okay. I'm going to stop congratulating myself. Let's work on one of these trees, right? And remember, this is not finished. So this is more like what we're looking at as like a finished background. If you can picture that all around, right? It is. It's sweet. I, I love this. I must said a bad word. I love this piece. All right. Oh, okay. Dave said he's working on the scarecrow. Oh, Dave, I love the scarecrow. I remember the scarecrow in the cornfield with all of the different techniques. I remember the scarecrow well. Oh, I love that piece. Olivia says, I started a big pattern using yarn because we don't have a wool supply shop there. No, uh, when moving on my frame, no matter how careful I was, the loops kept getting caught. So frustrating. Yep, I know. I totally agree. It is super frustrating. Uh, happens happens to me too. Um Olivia says, so, um, so it's been put away till I can find the patience to go back to it again. Yeah, totally get that. Totally get that. Um, you know, and the thing about that is like, ideally, like you're working on a big piece. I work on smaller pieces and I work on frames like this that are just a little bit bigger so that the combs are not, I'm not working on yarn and I'm not punching. So it's less of a thing, but the combs are less, um, able to play me you know what I mean it's like less Murphy's Law is not so much uh happening here because my frames are a little bit bigger but when you're working on a big piece it's like how you would need a huge frame right so it's kind of different rules apply kind of thing uh I get the frustration with that um I'm starting to dance because I'm I need to pee again let me take one quick break and I will be right back and let's come back to um let's come back to this bush and I'm gonna put this down I'll be right oh I gotta go I'll be right back.
moisture on my hands. Ha, ah, there we go. All right. Oh, I so love this. All right, let's see. You know, I'm going to have to work on this some more tonight. I really am because I'm dying to do this patch. I'm dying to do that patch. I'll see if I can resist doing that patch while we're on camera because it's it's really creating an interruption to the way it looks. This is giving me a good clue, isn't it? And then the cloud up here and we're going to fill in this, but that's really killing me. What do you got? What is it? Oh, yeah. Give me some apple. Thank you. Oh, that looks good. Let me get have some apples and grapes real quick. Hang on. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm? I'm all good. All right. Sorry, I'm chewing on an apple. I'm going to do an experiment with this darkest green. I'm going to experiment with outlining. Oh, you know what? No, I shouldn't. I've got to think about this now. Because if I'm going to do, mm, I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's improvise. We've improvised so far. Let's keep improvising. I'm not sure if I want to outline all the way around or if I just um, want to have some in it. I feel like we need to firm up um, the edges sh shape-wise. But then again, we already dropped in the white, so I'm not sure that we need to firm up the edges. Hey, Buttons. Look at that little face. What's that little face doing? Oh my gosh, honey. You don't like grapes. You got something in your hair. Oh, that's wool. No. Dogs cannot have grapes. <coughs> They're poisonous. Grapes and raisins are poisonous to dogs. That's a big no. Sorry, baby. He's like, what else you got in there, mama? What is wrong? I'm having an intellectual problem here with this. Here we go. I forgot. Oh, I have apples. You want a little bit of apple? Nope. All right. Hmm. I'm just thinking this through. I'm just looking at these again. No, I don't think I will. The dusty rose. Sorry, I got I got sucked into the dusty rose thoughts again. I don't think I will. I think it's too confusing. Let me fill it in. Let me fill in this part with mixed greens, just like we said. And see how that looks. It's hard. It's, you know, it's going to be hard to tell until it's in there. Right now we made the decision to outline with white. I stand by the decision. I think it looks good outlined with white. So I'm going to assume that my original instinct was correct and that that white is strong enough to hold that shape. So whether it's dark or it changes to green, I just wanted a little dark, uh, present up above because it's not present in the grass. So I wanted to create a little bit of variety up here. Oh, that looks good. So far, I like that. One of the things I like about this small frame, particularly for a small piece, is that I you can see I constantly turn it, right? I'm like a, sh a captain captain at the ship, uh, up the wheel of the ship, right? Just constantly turning. That's the reason I also like um, my lap frames, particularly my octagon one that is um, adjustable. I tend to keep my frames that are adjustable on a very light loose sort of setting so that I can just turn them without unscrewing because it's it's constant I turn constantly not everybody does and not everybody wants to turn constantly but it seems that I do so since I know that I work like that I try to grab um, you know tools like different size frames that are on the smaller side particularly with a small piece because I know I'm going to be constantly turning and I know I don't like working upside down. I know I, I like to see exactly what I'm doing. So the more, you know, for beginners, the more um, you work, the more you practice, the more you realize 
that you like some stuff and you don't like other stuff. And that all is good. Like that's all smart. That's working smart is when you learn as you go. You have to just constantly remind yourself that you might like you, your um, your experience with different tools, different hooks, different frames, different materials to hook with might be different than mine. I might feel way, you might be like pantyhose, no thanks. Stretch velvet, no thanks. I love to hook with both of those things. So we might differ in terms of what we like, tool tools and materials wise, uh, and that is absolutely okay. Neither of us is wrong, right? We have different preferences. So um, this is one of those crafts that there has historically been this weird attitude of like, oh, you need to get a better hook or you need to get a better frame. Well, I think better is the wrong word. If, you, if what you have is working great and you love it, then you don't need to get, you don't need to change anything. If it ain't broke, you don't fix it, right? We, we ought to know that. But this is one of these crafts that people tend to say, oh, you know, once you're not a beginner anymore, you should get a expensive this and a better that. And I totally disagree with that. I feel like only, only if what you have is not making you happy. Is it good to try other people's stuff, you know, at hook-ins or at a, a shop or something? Is it good to try something else? Yeah, it's, it's totally good to try something else. But don't pre-program yourself to believe that, um, you know, that you're, you're saving up for um, ex the next step, right? It, there is no next step. If this equipment, if this pipe frame and this hook is working great for you, then you might be using this 50 years from now, God willing, right? And, you know, if you want to try other stuff just for the sake of the experience or, or you don't like the hook or you're struggling with the frame, then, you know, you try something different. Don't give up the craft. Just try something different. Um, but, yeah, we all like different things. It brings me always back to the conversation of Claire Mari. God, I have got to get in touch with her. I've got to get in touch with her. I'm so overdue. It's crazy with the phone call. Um, but she always hooks on her lap. She's never hooked any other way but on her lap. That is her preference. God knows she can afford any frame on earth. Uh, and she likes to hook on her lap. So, you know, we all like to work differently. And, uh, and nobody's way is wrong. I just came to kind of that end of that right there. Let me see. Maybe I'll come out here and do some of this. Yeah, let's do that. I'm just going to hit or miss this bush up and see how it goes. Oh, good. I can send that bunny kit right away. Oh, thank you, Diana. That's really great. Yeah, I had a few left over. <laughs> I'm debating if I should tell you all the story of the genesis of this class. I might as well now that I've said that, right? So I wasn't, I, I wasn't thinking about doing another hook along. So maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Not because I don't like it. I just hadn't thought about it for so long because it's been so busy. So remember how I had, I kept saying I had on the calendar, um, somebody called and said, can you teach at Mount Sinai? And my first rug hooking, oh, police cars. Um, and my first instinct was, uh, I'd rather not, I don't like, you know, every experience that I've had paid doing paid work in public places like libraries and stuff like that is, has always been disastrous doing free stuff and free talks. Great. But when there's the expectation that I'm teaching and there's supplies and there's expense, um, it's never gone according to plan in my experience. So my instinct was to say no. But um, I was thinking, ooh, that's the hospital where my dad died. So why don't we try, why don't we bend over backwards to make this work? So um, you know, it has been a busy time because this coincides with um, the whole magpie thing, you know, magpie coming out the first issue and, and just general busyness, um, all of that. So I ended up, you know, this isn't going to be a good story, right? I ended up putting the, the kits together, the bunny, right? And I was meant to go teach at Sinai. And I have to admit, it there were a lot of misunderstandings and um, frustrations in the communication that led to it. There was about a 50 to 60 email trail of confusion and I thought this and that in note check again it's on my calendar you know I was really getting nervous about the whole thing and I made the kits these kits and got to be the morning of the thing and I had gotten the email um, and everything like oh you should park 
at this address or whatever. So I had everything saved. I hadn't really looked at anything yet, foreshadowing, but I had everything saved. So um, I got all my stuff together. I was I was up insanely late, finishing dyeing, finishing stuff, right, making it work, uh, getting all the, oh, wait, there's a tiny holiday right there. I think I'm going to have to fix that. Getting everything done. And um, I'm just going to use the one I used to tie it. You've got these little ties on your yarn. So I'm just going to actually fold that in half, right? Looks like a little latch hook tie. So um, I was up late and then I was up early finishing these kits, the bunny. And, and then it was time to go. And I thought, you know what, let me just get there early. I, I had mixed feelings about going because I, you know, I can remember. It was a long time ago when my dad died there in hospice. But um yeah, I remember the cafeteria and everything. I thought, well, you know, if you get there early, it might be weirdly, I don't know, cathartic or something to have a coffee. You know, if you're there early, you can set up, make sure you're all set, everything. Got set, got going early. And um, I pulled up the email that, you know, had the um, specific info, like the floor to walk to and everything else. And it was like, oh, you have to park in the parking garage and you have to pay for that. And I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. I've, I, I know parking garages cost a fortune. No problem. I got it. So I got myself all going, car packed, right? Like it, beyond packed. It looked like I was uh, running away from home. Car packed. I opened the GPS, put in the, I look at the address for the, par for the parking garage first. And I thought, oh, that's weird. I don't know that street, you know, because um, I know Hartford pretty well. More foreshadowing. So I opened the email and it says, I forget what street it said, but I thought, yeah, I don't know that street. And I thought, um, okay, wait a minute, before I put in the wrong address or, or really screw myself up, let me just call this woman and um, get some clarity. Cause I know I, it's been a long time, but I used to be there like multiple times a day. Like I used to go see my dad multiple times a day. Um, so I figured, whoa, wait a minute. So. I called her and I said, so-and-so, um, I'm just looking at the email that tells me where to park. And I said, um, I'm confused. Is this street off of like Blue Hills Highway, which is where the hospital is? And, and she said, no, I don't know Blue Hills. And I said, my heart sank. And I said, okay, because um, that's the road that the hospital's on. So my brain immediately went, oh my God, you are at the Mount Sinai in New York. And I know where that is too, so that's okay. And I looked at my, uh, I looked at the clock, and I immediately thought, okay, that's okay. Like I can absolutely get there. It'll it'll be another half hour, but I had tons of extra time because I was early. So I thought, oh, and I said, oh my God, you are at the Mount Sinai in New York, not Hartford. And here it comes. Ready for the punchline? She said, no, I'm at the Mount Sinai in Baltimore. And I said. Baltimore, Maryland. And she was like, yeah, you need to be here in like two, two and a half hours. And I said, so-and-so I am in Connecticut. I know I told you that from our emails. And, and she immediately lost her mind and said, um, well, um, I knew you were in Connecticut, but I thought you were traveling. And I said, for the amount of money that she's paying me, which was honestly practically nothing. It was basically people were paying for their kits. And then I was basically being paid $50 to teach two hours once a month for four months, right? So this is a massive loss for me, money-wise. But I thought my dad died in that hospital, right? So that's a thing. So um, I said, how could this possibly, how could this misunderstanding have possibly happened? You contacted me. Like, did you just randomly pick somebody who does rug cooking on the computer and not check where they were from. I said, I know that we specifically had conversation. You asked where I was from. And I said, Hamden. And she said, um, she, she was like off, off the chain at this point. She said, uh, well, there's a Hamden in Maryland too. And I, I'm not usually edgy with people. Honestly, I'm not, but I said, so-and-so is the Hamden in Maryland followed by a comma and a capital C and a capital T. And I mean, it was getting like um, unraveling quickly, right? And and she was like, well, I don't know what to say, but you need to be here in whatever. And I said, I don't know what to say, but you never once said in the 50 emails that we exchanged that you were in Maryland. And I said, I assumed we were talking about a Mount Sinai that was near me because you 
sought me out. And we went back and forth on this many times and uh, we ended the phone call on uh, bad terms. And I said, so-and-so, um, I have made so many kits in the last X amount of days. This has cost a fortune. Like I've gone through a crazy amount of wool backing fabric. I've been dying for days. Like this is insane, right? This is, this is these bunny kits. So um, she said, I don't know what to tell you and blah, blah, blah. And I said, all right, I'm just going to, I need to go because we're not going to get anywhere with this conversation. I said, did you seriously think I was driving? Honestly, how many states is it? Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland. Did you seriously think I was driving six states away for $50 four times over the course of four months? Like, does that seem like something somebody would do, you know? Oh, I don't know. I blah, blah, and whatever. So um, I checked back on all our emails, right, to be sure I wasn't crazy. She never once said Maryland, but my address was in there multiple times in Connecticut, whatever. So um, she ended up writing back. Um, I couldn't respond to this message, um, but she wrote back to justify, like, whatever. And it's like, if you if you have to be right, be right, whatever. But um, she wrote back and said, well, just so you make button stop barking. Just so you know, the reason uh, I thought you were from Baltimore was because I pulled up a pattern on your website called Baltimore Album Quilt. Um, and I said to my husband, uh, I'm afraid you're going to have to answer. Uh, you're going to have to respond to that one because I can't I can't respond to that in a normal way um, because I had a pattern on my site that had the word Baltimore in it. You assumed I was from Baltimore even though I wrote to you with an address from Connect, we're just going to have to leave that alone, right? That doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. We're just going to have to leave it alone. So to make a long story short, too late, that's why I have these kits. And maybe it's a blessing in disguise because obviously I did not end up doing that. Um, and I was really disappointed because I was, once I committed to doing it and in my head, you know, being there four times with the same group, I was kind of excited. And I thought, oh, building relationships you know, I love teaching in person. Um, I was pretty excited. And this was all like really disappointing. But um, it is what it is, you know. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. And it, it meant that I had these kits, right? Like I had these kits done and ready to ship. And it meant that we could do this hook in. Because if it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't have thought to do a hook in anytime soon. Just because it's been so busy. And it seems to be getting busier too with the health stuff. So it's interesting how things work out, isn't it? Um, Diana, I got my octagon frame on Etsy. Um, I don't remember who the seller was, but um, I think it's the, the seller's probably still there. Maybe somebody else knows, but I definitely got it on Etsy. Um, sometimes they're on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I often see them on Facebook Marketplace. I often see a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace, uh, red cooking stuff in frames. But I got mine on Etsy and it was probably about, I don't know, I think they're less expensive than when I bought them. It was probably about $150, um, something like that. Um, I think they're less expensive now. But um, yeah, I, I really like the octagon frame. I do have to say, I know a lot of people who don't like the octagon frame. So... It's a, it's a, it's, I, I, I recommend it to the extent that like, it's one of my faves. Um, but I also know people who it drives them crazy. And I think one of the, I think one of the reasons it drives people crazy. Um, so think about, think about this. If this is something that might drive you crazy, is that the fact that it's shaped like an octagon and you're always putting pieces on it that are shaped like squares or rectangles. You know what I mean? Um, for some people that kind of messes with your mind and it's like, um, no, I want a square on a square or a rectangle on a rectangle kind of thing. So, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a viable um, thought. It, it's, it's a well-articulated criticism of the shape. Um, I don't have that with it. But if other people do, I totally get that. That's how I hooked up the bush. And I have to say, I don't know. It's still busy. I'm going to spend another couple minutes, even though it's ridiculously late, and I've got to fill this in because I don't feel like I'm going to know about the bush until I have a little more filled in here. So I'm just going to fill this in really fast. 
it might be that I end up putting a little of this dark in this corner. That would probably work good, wouldn't it? Right, a little bit, because I do like the busyness. I'm not sure that the cloud is doing me any favors at this point, but it might be when these trees are filled in the same that this creates a pattern across, right? Like a, like a ruffle or a trim on the top of the hill. It's really supposed to function like a ruffle or a trim, isn't it? Like boop, 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 right? That is its own kind of a pattern, right? So if these are unified and they're all the same, I think that's going to be great. But I feel like I'm going to need some of this dark down here. You know what I mean? Let's see how it goes. I, I, I can't function until a little more of this is done. I wish I could read the comments while I work. Oh, I love it too. I super love it. I'm the, Dave says, I'm the beguiver of raw cooking. I love that. And Deanna, do you remember? Okay, good. I'm pretty caught up. I'm sorry if I've missed comments while I've been looking down. Um, Teddy hasn't photobombed us yet. He hasn't done a cameo yet. Otherwise, I'd say to him, hey, read some comments over my shoulder. Just keep me updated. I think we're, I think we're pretty good, though. I hope that if you're a beginner, you might not still be with me because this is an epic hook along. It's like a, it's like a dance a thon, right? We're like in it, in it to win it. Um, kind of open ended these events, you know. But if you're a beginner and you are still hooking, or um, you just coming up here are watching later, I'm so curious to know if you're doing well with this pattern. This the good thing about this pattern the um i think the big plus is that there's a lot of hit or miss fill areas uh, it's basically most of the pattern and i think that is a good thing because it doesn't put a lot of pressure on you to do really great things with color if you're going for the green earth and the blue sky you pretty much know what colors to grab for so in that regard i think it's a good beginner pattern at the same time the hardest thing about this pattern is the bunny but we did that together right we did the bunny the bunny's eye together uh the contour lines of the bunny if you want more contrast than my bunny has i mean i can perfectly see the divide between his little legs the divide on his back leg i can still see the little bum i, I like the bum you maybe you don't care about that but that is helping my eye read it um the pink here could could use a little popping but like i said in person there's much more contrast between the pink nose and the body. And on my monitor, it's not showing up as good contrast, but in person, it for me, it's showing up as perfect. I, it's not something I'm going to change because I'm liking the way that it looks. Um, so all of these things, you know, I think are um, manageable for a beginner. And particularly, you know, with, even with the beginner pattern, it's good to do something that's a little bit trickier, like the bunny. Um, and I feel like this is a good situation to do it in because I did the hard parts already. I'm just kind of fooling now with details, right? Because either I'm going to hook it here with you and figure it out as I go along, or I'm going to go hook it on the couch. And I know I'm not going to want to eat until I figure out what this looks like. So might as well do it. Might as well get her done. I think the reason that Teddy hasn't come back is that he's on the phone because I just heard him make one of his crazy Viking type noises. Maybe that's maybe that explains the kilt. He gets playing his video games and stuff. But, you know, the video games that they play now, you log on with other people who, you know, like he's able to log on with his friends and stuff from his old school. And, you know, it's time they spend together. They they join up on teams and they attack other people. And it's, you know, it's other kinds of games and stuff. But they're actually able to talk in the game to each other um and you don't hear other voices it's just their voices so you know it's like cooperative game playing um i i kind of like it i don't have a lot of bad stuff to say about the kinds of games these kids are playing or the way that they're playing he's they're, both my kids are excellent at technology and um they seem to have a lot of fun while they're up there doing this stuff so you know i feel like He's already been to school today. They've had testing. They have eight days of testing in a row, right? Who needs that? Um, our town doesn't do a an Easter break. So other kids just had like last week or the week before off. Well, we didn't. So, you know, I feel like he's in there all the time. 
and he works hard and um, you know, it's extra hard for him being autistic in the regular classroom and he's got all this testing and um, yeah he comes home he wants to play his game with his friend it's like all right well that makes sense just choosing my colors here I am still trying to adhere to the idea that this is a hit or miss background and I am trying to be um, thoughtful about being random but at the same time if I randomly choose a color that is right next to the color I'm on um, let's see then I switch it so it's not as random as maybe a traditional hit or miss but I have to be careful not to create huge legions of color you know what I mean because that could be distracting. Oh, so at the beginning of the episode, I was saying um, that I think one of our new traditions in our family, not for Easter, but just in general, we already talked about Easter, is uh, just hitting the different cities. And so I said to the kids, what do you think about going to Philadelphia next? Because Philadelphia is a great city, isn't it? I don't know that they're of an age, I think more Teddy than Joss. I don't know if they're, you know, if they're at that kind of Liberty Bell uh, age, that kind of thing. But I think it could be super fun. I'm going to go to my pistachio again. I think it could be super fun. It has a good vibe, the city. You know, it's got that uh, Mutter Museum, that Museum of Medical Oddities. I don't know if anybody's been there. It's a little over the top, but it's a bit, you know, it's a bit gruesome. It's, it's, it's a science museum, um, but that's an excellent kind of quirky museum for the kids. Uh, medical oddities, right? Very strange. Lots of curiosities. That's there. And of course, the um, Philadelphia Museum of Art is over the top. Fantastic. Um, I don't know if it's still there. I remember years ago, I went to house, the house that Edgar Allan Poe had lived in. And um, this was maybe 10, more than 10 years ago. And I feel like um, they were hanging on by a thread. Like I was the only guest who'd come that week. I don't know if they're still, um, you know, if they gave up the ghost or if they're still hanging, hanging on there. But it was basically an empty shell of a house. Uh, but it was just interesting to be within the same walls and all that. And the people who were running it were extremely knowledgeable about Poe. And uh, so that made it interesting. But I do remember, and, and you tell me if you think of some cool stuff. I do remember there was a, a bunch of cool things to do there. The Franklin, what was it called? Franklin Fountain or something. There's like a, this old time soda fountain that sold not just like shakes and cool flavors of ice cream, like licorice and stuff like that. But, um, you know, phosphates. Remember phosphates? I mean, they're not that different than shakes, but it just... Diff different, different names, sounds so cool, sounds so old fashioned. I remember, and also the Reading Market, the Amish Market right there in the center of the city. I remember there were a bunch of things about Philadelphia that were just fantastic. Oh, Diane, I'm so glad that you logged on. That is so good. That is so good. See, that's the thing about being on a lot. I feel like I am on a lot. I try to be on a lot because I feel like different people at different times, not everybody can log on every time, right? That That's like so unlikely. But for if you are around and you can, that's great. We get to spend more time together. I'm there for people at night who wake up in the middle of the night, right? I hear that a lot. I woke up in the middle of the night. Things aren't going that well. Uh, I'm really glad to be able to binge watch your videos. You know, I hear that quite a bit and that makes me really happy. It's good to be on a lot. The more I'm on, the more people, you know, we, we catch with the craft, the more people we get involved, the more people who are doing it. And then pretty soon rug cooking stores could be like knitting stores, right? There's so many people who do it that there have to be stores everywhere to support the craft, right? That's the thing about sharing. And that's why I have mixed feelings about Madcap Monday, because it's like the more people who do the craft and the more successful businesses there are, um, you know, the more we all thrive. Uh, I got to think about that. I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. I've, I get so many complaints, not complaints, but I get so much negative stuff too about uh, Magpie. Like, oh, uh, you know, it's no fun on Mondays because I can't find any posts of people working on their rugs and stuff. All I see is like stuff for sale. And, you know, when I started Mag Madcap Monday, it was like, 
um, there was just the, the buy and sell group. And I don't like the buy and sell group. I had a major run in with the woman that runs it. And I'll never interact. I'll never interact with her again. But, um, you know, I was like, wow, if this is the only place that you can go to get like used stuff, you know, from about rug hooking. And if she's this obnoxious with me, I'm guessing she's it's just pretty across the board. It's not like I'm not special. Right. She's just difficult. So I thought, well, if that's the case, I ought to be doing something like this in my group because I already had a bigger group. So I set it up. But in the meantime, I feel like um, there are more buy and sell groups around. And I feel like, um, you know, in Canada, too, there's the buy and sell group that's really excellent, the rug cooking buy and sell that's specifically Canada. I feel like there are op more options now than there were when I instituted Madcap Monday. And and that changed, you know what I mean? What color should I? Oh, I'm going to have to do pistachio, aren't I? have to do it. <laughs> you have your electric blanket on tucked in. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, I'll definitely post a picture of it. Definitely. Definitely will. I promise. Yeah, electric blanket sounds good. I have one of those things. I call it the beans. It's like one of those sewn things. It's like a little um, square, like an oversized sachet. And it's loaded with some kind of beans. And you put them in the microwave. And you can put them in the, you know, um, when, when Joss got her eye hit in gym class, you can put it in the freezer too, and it makes the beans cold. But at night, you can microwave the beans and put them in the foot of the bed. And it's like having a little... Um, what were those things called? Bed. Oh, what are they called? You know those things that you heated up back in the day? They had them like the like the trays that went in that were, looked like, like on a pizza handle. Gosh, I can't think of what the name of those are, but you know what I mean. People have always liked having um, the bed be warm when you get in there. That is the height of luxury and comfort, isn't it? When you get into the sack and it's nice and warm and oh. I love that. Comfort, creature comforts. Buttons, the dog likes it too. He likes to sit on the beans. Between the kids, you know, cuddling and the dog, I'm lucky if the beans get anywhere near my feet, but can't complain. It's, ni it's nice to have them and I'm always comfy anyway. So a little bit of a holiday over here. Let's fix this and then let's assess what we got going. Oh yeah. coming up a treat right that's oh lord christy great to see you super welcome bed warmer that's it <laughs> it's right there bed warmer you both got it gosh i have to say i am loving this now that made it oh god i love this for me that made a big difference if you don't like hit or miss this isn't for you right you don't like the way i'm doing it you could do it in a different way if you remember at the beginning where I said you could do just straight across like this, right? If you don't like hit or miss, maybe that's your way to just go straight across. But I like hit or miss. And I have to say, it's just a coincidence that this tree has this kind of slope and that this happens to go down like this into it. You see what I mean? Like, and then it's going to come back up here, right? Once I fill this one and it's going to do one of these. Ah, oh, that's going to be so good. You know, all right, one more minute. One more minute. I'm just going to, I'm going to have to put a little bit into, oh, did I have, oh, look at, I had some, oh no, I just said, right? I just said, Olivia, I don't usually worry about the tails and look at my comb ripped part of my tail out. Ah, dang you. All right. Not you, Olivia. I'll fix that later. Stupid thing. I guess I need a bigger frame. Yeah. I wasn't being super careful. All right, I can fix that. I can fix that, no problem. But I just want to do one more little bit in the corner and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to eat and I'll work on this while I'm watching whatever's on the Hallmark chan channel. For for you Hallmark watchers out there, did you notice that the Hallmark Mystery Channel, which used to be like, every time I turned it on, it's like, wait a minute, aren't these supposed to be mysteries? And it was always like Reba McIntyre or so. Well, now it's mysteries all the time. You know, it's all of the cozy mysteries. It's excellent, excellent I'm so loving it. They're doing a lot of repeats because they're getting into their stride with getting their series going. But a lot of some of the mystery series are a little bit on the corny side, but some of them are so good. It's insane. I've really been enjoying watching it at this time of night. It's the one with that. What's her name? She's so, 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 so pretty. It used to be on that um, uh, uh, something. Um, uh, Renee, no. 
uh, married to uh, John Stamos for a while. She was on the show, maybe three men and a, or Full House. It was Full House. I think it was Full House. You know who I mean? Not Jessica. What was her name? Anyway, she's got a, um, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of this corner in the dark. Um, she's got a mystery show on the Hallmark Channel. I forget what the name of it is even, but it is fantastic. It's got to be based on a series of books, and I don't know who wrote the series, but, um, wait a minute, little holiday, hold on, let me just concentrate. Yeah. Um, it's based on a book, a series of books, and the premise is, um, she's, she's an, she has an antique shop, and, um, I think, oh, oh, I think it's called, like, the Garage Sale Mystery, something like that. Um, they are really good. I'm really enjoying them. Those in the Crossword Puzzle Mysteries are my favorite series on that channel. I also like the Hannah the Baker ones, that Hannah something, Hannah Swanson or something. Uh, those are all, she has, a ba she has a bakery. Those are really good mysteries too. Um, oh, and the, um, what's it called? The girl's not there anymore. They changed the main character. Oh, uh, Aurora Tea Garden. I've been loving those too. I guess I, I guess I might like all of them. But, um, you know, sometimes the Hallmark movies are uh, on the corny side, to put it mildly. But I have to say the mysteries are less on the corny side. I've even been watching the series that's called, well, I love The Way Home. That's not a mystery series, but that is, it, it's incredible. Um, I've been watching that series called Sign Seal Delivered. And it's about the, this, the lost um, letter office, the lost letter branch of the post office. And they get these lost letters that were never delivered. And this one group of people um, try to deliver them no matter how old they are. And, you know, they're a little, they're not really mysteries. Like they're not murder mysteries, but it's always like they're trying to find a person and they have very little to go on. And they really want to deliver that last night it was a wedding dress, you know, it's from two decades ago. But they're always kind of family dramas and they're always kind of tearjerkers. And, oh, they're so good. They're really so good. They're they're the most corny of the ones I just mentioned. If your threshold for corn isn't high, then those are not the ones for you. But yeah, that Hallmark Mystery Channel, I have to say, it's got some great stuff happening on it. I'm really excited. It's ba basically like, you know, it's not like the BBC in that they're, they're like super highbrow kind of shows, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, they're they're very cozy and, and they have a lot of atmosphere and, um, you know, they're good whodunit type mysteries, and there's lots of them. It's a lot of fun watching it. I have to say, I've been looking forward to that. It's better than watching the news. We won't start that. So I put one little dark corner in. Um, Candace Cameron. Candace Cameron. No. Um, oh, yes. She's the one who left, isn't she? She was like the queen, the queen of Christmas, and she ended up leaving. Um, and they switched her Aurora Tea Garden. I liked her very much, but, um, you know, I'm torn right now. I just have to do a little bit more. I'm torn about whether I like the dark, right? I feel like it's balancing things out really nice. Lift you up a little bit. Lift you up Josh Groban style, right? Like that. I like that corner. I like that a lot. I'm just debating if I should do a dark line under the body. Let's just see. And then I'm going to stop. Yeah, I liked um, I liked that actress. I like most of the actresses and the actors. I, I think it's just a nice stable of people. It annoyed me when I first started watching Hallmark that all the actors are the same, male and female, like from and it's like, can't you find a different man to play the part? But now that I'm I'm used to it, I think of it more like a repertory theater where you see the same actors over and over. And there is something kind of familiar and nice and interesting about seeing the same person in a different role. They're not that different, right? Because they're still all kind of romantic mysteries and stuff. But um, I really like it now. I do. I like seeing the same people again and again. And if I don't see a specific actor for like a season, I think, oh, I wonder what's going on there. And sometimes I even am insane enough to like pull up the, you know, info and say like, oh, not doing, you know, signed a contract to do something different or not working with the channel anymore or whatever, or whatever, you know, I got to know. Inquiring minds got to know. I think I like that with a little bit of a shadow under him. It might be too dark. I don't know. I won't know till I finish it. I'm too hungry to finish it right now. But I think I'll just do one more. Let me just do one more. And then I'll pull back. Oh, I forgot I had this dark brown too. Don't forget, don't forget about all your good colors here. 
Oh, that looks so good. Let me do my next, I think this is the next darkest. Let me do another one here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. No, that's the same color as that. Let's go to the country green. No, let's go to the army green. Let's go to the army green. Let's do that. Bunch of greens to choose from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave says, we all need some happy fluff to watch while crafting. That's so true. That's so true. I love watching stuff. And when I don't watch stuff, I put on my um, audiobooks, you know, and that's fun too. Oh, by the way, I recorded a, I got to get that multi-strand braided thing up. I had to solve the problem of making space on my phone, which meant I had to delete the sort of cache. I needed my husband to do this for me. I couldn't do it. Um, in my phone, there was like super crazy amount of storage thing on my phone because like my Audible account and everything had like every book I've ever listened to saved. And so what I needed to do, as stupid as this is, is delete a bunch of stuff. And that meant that it deleted my passwords. And now I don't remember my password. So I tried to listen to Audible today and I couldn't log on because I couldn't get my password. And then I did log on and it said zero books in your library. So now I'm going to have to call Audible and figure that out because it shouldn't be that you log out of it once and you lose everything you've ever bought. Like that wouldn't be fair. So we'll have to see how that goes. But man, it's so frustrating, right? I just did a little bit with that green and I'm just going to come over here. And I have a feeling like it's just a feeling, right? When you're doing when you're doing your project, let me just move this again carefully. Don't want to have to rehook. When you're doing your project, you have to go with what your gut feeling is for color. Now that I have it in my head that I want to do a little bit of um, dark green in the corner, that's all my brain can think about right now. And not only that, but I'm starting to think as I look at it more as a composition that, yeah, I want to do a little bit of dark green here to balance this. But I think maybe this tree has the most of the dark green and a little less than this one and even less than these two. You know what I mean? So that the dark is in this corner and in this corner. It brings your eye diagonally right through the composition. These are things you can only figure out once you get going. And now that I started fooling around with putting a dark line under him, my eye can't can't help but ask, well, what if the dark line was here and then under some of part of his foot, right? That would help pop his feet too. So these are things that you figure out as you go along. It's impossible to plan for these things. And um, yeah, even if you do, even if you are someone who, who does a watercolor, colors the pattern in first and tries to color plan, you might still find yourself, um, depending on how creative a worker you are, right? And depending on how confident you are about, about what's, what's going on, Aryan? Okay, no one's answering me, but I hear insanity upstairs. Oh, man, I'm telling you, these children. Jocelyn is just, she's got to be full blast puberty at this point. She is off the hook. Um, these are things that you can't figure out until really you get into it, where you start thinking, yeah, my heart is longing for some more dark near the rabbit's foot. You just can't account for that the night before, right? For what your heart is longing for. I think I'm going to like that. And I actually like the interruption here too. I might even do that. See, I can't stop. I just can't stop. I might even do that in pistachio to really shake it up. Now, I got to remind myself not to pack because I want to add some flowers under his belly. Oh, yeah, I do. Yep, I want to get some pistachio in here too. And because because my dark line has an interruption to it, and I did that on purpose to be a bit artsy fartsy, that means that with this pistachio line, I really want some continuity. I want this one to run across both and bridge that break in the dark color uh, for continuity. You'll see what I mean. Let me come right up to that dark line. And I have, oh, my stomach's growling like crazy. After this, I swear I'm going to stop. I am going to stop. I need to eat some food, man. I need to eat. Do I need to eat? Oh, I need to eat. There we go. All right. Let me stop. Let's see. Let's assess. Let's take stock. Well, the color is awful on this monitor, but I have to say, um, I 
super, I super love this. I love the way it's coming out. You won't know until you get going with yours and, or until you make some more progress. Maybe you're working, maybe you're working as fast as me or faster than me. Doesn't, speed doesn't matter, right? What matters is that you like the way that it's evolving. Um, I love the way that it's evolving. I really, really do. I, I feel like I love the color palette, but I do feel like I need some more colors in this part. I feel like I need a bunch of yellow, like dandelion yellow on the hill. I do. I feel that strongly. And once you get to this part in the composition, it's starting to resemble uh, like expressionism, right? This is how expressionism works. Expressionism it literally, um, its main function is to express my taste, right, as the artist. So it's going to work the same way for you. Olivia says good contrast, right? The dark is good contrast. It is really good contrast. Oh, I missed something. I missed something. Hang on. I got to catch up. Um, I love the Hallmark Mysteries. Me too. Hold on just a second. Candice, Candice Bure. Yeah, I think we're talking about, I think we're talking about the same person. I think, I think we all like her, right? She was a lot of fun. Lori uh, Laughlin, Garage Sales. Science Hill Delivered has two new movies soon. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'll have to check. I didn't I didn't know that. Oh, I just got back into it again. I didn't watch them for a while because I watched an extra corny one and it got me. But um, I'm, I'm ready to get back into them, I think. The only part of the composition I'm not sure about is the cloud. It's it, There's one and it's a big lump. Um, so I might have to do something with that. I don't have any ideas off the top of my head. Um... I'm not going to do anything to it until I have everything else in place. And at that point, I'll make an assessment um, whether I do want to have that shape right there and whether that is the right color. It might be that I love it and I keep it. And uh, it's only merit is I love the color. That might, that might happen. And that'll be a choice. The thing is to make choices, right? But what I'm loving about this piece is the sweet texture of... The bunny, right? The yarn in the bunny, I think, is a great texture. I'm loving that tail, that little fluffed up tail. It could be even more crazy. I'm loving the little bits of flowers in the background. I really love the flowers sticking up. I'm, I'm loving the outline on him. It is just a little bit darker than his body. I think it really works. I love the hit or miss in the back. I really love the hit or miss in the sky and in the grass and in the tree. The only thing I'm not sure about is the cloud. Now, if I could only make that make sense. And now that I accidentally put the pupil up, looking up rather than looking down, uh, that was an accident, but maybe that was like fate pushing me forward to make that accident because now it looks like it's looking at the cloud and it makes me think, what could I do with the cloud that would be a piece of storytelling why would why would the rabbit be looking at the cloud? Do you know what I mean? Like I was thinking, oh, my go to is like, oh, put the year on it, but maybe not. Maybe not the year. Um, you love the cloud, Melissa. I love the color of the cloud for sure. It makes me want to keep it. I'm thinking, should I put a face on the cloud? But then it's like, what story would that be? That wouldn't really be telling a story. Um, I'm just thinking, maybe. Maybe the story is that the rabbit's just running because the it's it's getting cloudy or it's going to rain or something like I don't know, I don't know. But I'll have to decide later. Compositionally, um, I liked having one cloud in it. One thing that I could do is put a second cloud cut off on the side, but I don't think I will, right? Because I'm loving having my borders all shored up, so I don't think I will. But I could. I could change the color of the cloud if it's bothering me. I also don't think I will. Sleep on it. Yep, you're right. I'm going to sleep on it. I think I will. And I'm going to work on this uh, right after I eat dinner, and I'll post a picture for as far as I got. Really like it. If you all have suggestions, and you know, you can always give me critiques and suggestions. You always can. Um, I don't I don't come out swinging, right? I always love to... Let me see if I come back to you for a second. Ooh, oh gosh, oh gosh, what if I shut that off? Two, well, it's dark. It's better. Uh, gosh, we were together for a long time, huh? I got all my wires wrapped up and stuff. Um, yeah, you can always you can always write to me and say, um, I like this or I didn't like that or whatever. Um, I'm always happy to get 
those ideas because sometimes I'm just out of ideas, you know. I really didn't think I was going to like this piece because um, I'm just working on my roses and I wasn't uh, feeling like making a departure from the roses. But I should have known that as soon as I sat down, we've been on for almost six hours. Is that crazy? Is there something wrong with us? Buttons is like, uh-huh. Come here, Buttons. You want to say goodbye? You want to sign off? Come here. Come here. There we go. Here we go. There he goes. Oh, there's my boy. Oh, there's my boy. Oh, there he goes. Well, it was super fun being together. I think I really needed this. Um, and it was good to kind of pull away from the roses for a little while because I'm going a little bit rose rose crazy. So, yeah, this was a good this was a good exercise for me. I hope, beginners, that you've got some good traction going on this piece. Honestly, I think I probably have another um, maybe hour and a half in this piece. So this is been going at a pretty good clip. But even with all the talking, this is maybe a seven to eight hour piece to hook. If you're fast and you're not talking at all, you're just watching your Hallmark movies, it's maybe, a, I would say, six hour piece, right? If you were just gunning it the whole way through and not drinking beers and going to the bathroom. Um, but yeah, I'm loving this piece. I hope you love it too. Um, what I started to say was Jocelyn and I recorded a video that I will put out on um, that I'll put out on Easter, maybe on Saturday. Uh, we were we were using the Easter pellets from the pause boxes, you know, to color Easter eggs. We were using them to color wool. So I'll put that out for you probably on Saturday. That's a long video because we were fooling around in the kitchen and stuff. We tried a whole bunch of different techniques that include like immersion dyeing, mason jar dyeing, uh, squirting with the hairdresser bottles. We did a lot of different techniques. We filled up a pepper shaker with a crushed pause pellet and we were sprinkling the wool with that. So we got lots of good effects. And um, oh my God, how cute is he? Um, yeah, so that'll be there for you this weekend. Uh, huge happy Easter, wh however you're celebrating, right? We're celebrating by putting on a crazy costume and, and frightening the kids and doing our hunts and everything. I hope you're all going to have a great weekend celebrating uh, however you do in your family. So be looking for that video. Be looking for the multi-strand video. And um, and I'm sorry to be pulling the plug on gallery night for Friday, but gallery night will be next Friday. And I will look forward to that. It'll give me plenty of time to put together a great show um, it is relaxing. Just It's very relaxing for me too, um, sitting and um, working on stuff together, you know, very relaxing. There he is. He's a hot mess. He needs, he needs another haircut. Maybe a touch of orange here and there around the cloud as orange is the opposite of purple. Olivia, that's a good one. That's a good idea. Yeah, I really need some orange and or yellow in this. So I, I need to think about that for sure. I like that. Um, or make the cloud into a tree. You know what? That's not a bad idea either. That's not a bad idea. That's actually a great idea. Rita, that's a great idea. I'm going to think on it. I know not everybody's going to be into that cloud, into one purple cloud. I know not everybody's going to be into that. Uh, maybe just like me, Melissa, and uh, Willy Wonka. Um, but that is an option also that you could just make it into another tree. That would work great. Or just eliminate it. And have a break in the have a break in the sky. Also possible. Um, that's a great idea. Let's see. Um, oh, good. I'm glad y'all had fun. Oh, uh, thank you all so much. Happy Easter to everybody. Look for those new videos. I wanted to put out some content there for you. Happy Easter, and I'll be back with you on Monday for coffee time at ten. Uh, no, I'm sorry, noon Eastern Standard Time. We will see you then. And in the meantime, have a happy weekend and a happy Easter, everybody. Take care. Have a good night.